All right, let's go. Seven minutes, almost eight minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rick and Bubba Show, the number 866-WE-BE-BIG. we got a busy show today. We've got golden ticket seats uh, coming into the studio. If you are one of those t- uh, golden ticket seats, uh, uh, folks that are going to be traveling in today, they be safe. We look forward to seeing you in a couple of hours. Uh, and remember, you get what you paid for. Seats are free. Uh, but anyway, um, we'll have a good time today, and we look forward to a uh, fun day with y'all. We'll try to make it as a fun zone Friday as possible, uh, but that means we can't talk about any news out there. But we'll have a good time. The Good Time Gang is here. I'm Speedy. To my left is Greg Burgess, and to the right, it is Michael Helms. What's up, boys? How is hello. everybody doing? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Fired up. Um, this coming weekend, it's the NFL divisional round weekend. Uh, we got games Saturday and Sunday, if you care about anything like that. Uh, so that's there for you. Uh, NFL action, uh, dead ahead, uh, this coming weekend. Um, we, uh, I don't know that I'll be able to see any Saturday for sure. I might be able to see some after church, you know, half, half, half awake football. I don't know. Sundays afternoons used to be pretty relaxing for me. They're not. I mean, we're pretty busy now, going to yeah. different places. But we'll see how that plays out. Do y'all care anything about it, or will it be one of those things where, oh, I'm here, let me turn it on? That's what it'll be I, with me. I yeah. might yeah. check the scores, but I, I, I probably won't watch it. We actually have uh, a big tennis weekend. <clears throat> we actually play our first match. Let's go. So we got to go to Alabama and play in Tuscaloosa, mm. play the Tide. How about oh. that? That's just weird, even saying. Um. Blazers, 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 Blazers. So I think oh, the plan is yep, yep. Saturday we're actually going to go and practice Ooh. there, practice. have practice. a team dinner, practice. come back, and then go play them on Sunday. Come on so with it. Big, busy weekend for, for Helmsy. Um, well, if uh, you care anything about it or you have the time, uh, the Jaguars are at Kansas City at 3.30 p.m. Central Time on NBC. And then the night game, it's New York at – Philadelphia, um, and they know each other extremely well at 7 15 p.m. Central Time on Fox. For some reason, I feel like the Giants are clicking. I think they might upset Philadelphia. I, I don't Possible. know, but we'll see. Uh, be, be, it de- depends on if Jalen's shoulder's okay and all that. And then Sunday at 2 p.m., uh, not right at 12, but at 2 p.m., it's the big rematch of the game that was stopped. Uh, it's Cincinnati at Buffalo. And then at 5.30, and that's on CBS, and then at 5.30 p.m., all-time central again on Fox, it's Dallas at San Francisco. Uh, and San Francisco has almost two days' uh, advantage on them of recovery yeah. uh, because they played or two days or a yeah. day and a half uh, prior to uh, the Cowboys in the wild card weekend. So there's that for you. Um, there's uh, all kinds of stories out uh, today. But yesterday, I did something kind of handy around the house. Uh-oh. I, I Here was he having, goes. Well, I, I found it. Did change the light bulb? <laughs> Terry actually looked at me and she said, what's your deal? Uh, how, you, you're normally not like this. Uh, because you know how we've always talked about how we get different personality traits from each staff yeah. member, and we're like, we mold them into yeah, one. Yeah. And so I get a little bit of everything from each any, everybody. Um, I get the uh, low-hassle uh, turnkey from Rick yeah. where I, I don't I, – I, it's like – I really don't want to mess with this. Let's I just know. get a new one. Yeah. Um, but then there's times where you go, well, now that's ridiculous. Why, why are you doing that? And uh, I had a, uh, an old uh, deer feeder that just has been sitting in our backyard literally forever. And when I say sitting in the backyard, it's kind of covered, but it, and it's out of the way. Uh, but since we moved, I haven't really needed it. Uh, and so down at the Lenore Farms, we're going to start using it. Uh, okay. And so I was, I was just seeing if it would work. Well, the... Um, the uh, six volt motor is all gooed up and 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 it just it won't spin corn and so I started taking it apart and said and, and it was like hey for an eleven dollar part it, this thing's fixed because the actual feeder is okay it's not like it has a hole in it or yeah. or something like that you know the digital uh, timer and all that everything's good there I got a six volt battery and all that but the actual motor that spins the corn out is broke it won't work. And so I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to look into this. <laughs> well, the replacements for these things, um, they they work, but they're not true to size of the original. And so the new motor was about a quarter inch longer than the existing motor that came with the feeder originally. And so the bottom cap that goes back onto the, the feeder 
it won't go back on because now the motor's too long. Yeah. So I started yeah. I started looking online and everybody's like, well, what you got to do is you got to cut a hole out and then you got to find a oh, cap no. and glue it on there and oh, do all this my. kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, well, let's just see if the motor works. Well, I, I put the motor on before I put the bottom on and that thing, I mean, it's, it's working. Really? I'm like, That's all right, awesome. we got to figure this one out. And so I heard a lot of people say they took a uh, medicine bottle cap uh, and 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 glued it onto the bottom, and and it worked. Well, I, we didn't really have one big enough, so I found myself at the home improvement store, <laughs> at looking for maybe a PVC pipe cap that would go on the end of the po- uh, pipe, maybe a one inch or one uh, one and a quarter yeah. cap that I could just pop on the bottom. And so, uh, you know, get your Gorilla Glue ready, and here we go. Uh, so I did the Gorilla Glue. I, I actually cut out a, bo- a, a, a hole at the bottom, about big enough for a one-inch uh, um, PVC cap. Yeah. And glued it on, let it sit for about 24 hours so, so, it, so it would cure. Then I put— um, You're even using the proper terms. And then I put the caulking around it and sealed it up from the inside and out and then spray-painted it black. <laughs> Not a lot, and um, and then and then put the bottom back on, and that puppy is running like there ain't no tomorrow. He and I'm just he like accidentally fix something, and, and and I'm like, <clears throat> hey honey, she's you know she was making dinner. Honey, you come out here for a second, garage, and it's like I made her stand back and watch it. Yeah, you know like how you man fix something. Watch him get out there. And, and really, for out. most guys and and most farmers and. And urban guys, I mean, you know, the rural guys that are yeah. just out there, and that's what they do. They can't just run to the store. They got to fix something, and it's like important stuff, like tractors and things sure. that yeah. farm yeah. and all that. And over here, I'm fixing a little six volt battery motor, or uh, six volt motor, and um, I think I'm done something. But <clears throat> it's working. Mm. So you can have a feeder out in your neighborhood. No, you didn't hear it. Was, See, you he wasn't paying attention. Yeah, this is it. Fell asleep for just a second, Sorry, Greg. That's why yeah. people can't. Well, that stop was about a minute that, that I yeah. felt like I was talking to myself. But um, <laughs> <laughs> y'all were both off doing something. Um, I had to but, close some matter, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I, I'm there. I, I get that. I, I really I, do. Seriously, I, even this is just waiting. going. It's going down a little noise. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and we they need they they're in need so of one. So you got one in the yard. That's good. Yeah, feeding them. It's right there. That's good. Um, Bring it in for the neighbors to look. I at. did catch. <laughs> I did catch, and I might still have it on my um, little camera roll. That uh, simply safe called a uh, little doe walking through my front yard. Oh, and if you everywhere. if you look off uh, the, the the cove where I live, the little well, cul de sac. If you had that feeder out, uh, if you walk off the back, there's there's a real pretty hardwood yeah, so, ridge. And kinda, nowadays, you see them everywhere, and oh, they're yeah. just walking around. There's a clump of woods; they'll be in it. Hey, let me tell you something. Speaking of seeing something, so today, about two miles from the house. I saw the biggest, healthiest coyote. Oh, I'm, oh I mean, big, that. big old salty dog. So he's been eating well. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, it was, um, I could kind of pinpoint it. it. There wasn't really a whole lot of houses around. It was a wooded area. So yeah. he's got it like he likes it. But he crossed the street. Uh, you know, I could see it. and he, some, I, I could see something cross the street. And so as I was easing along, I, I looked over to the right as I was passing. And there he was standing there looking around. Big old thing. <laughs> Well, we need to shoot him and put him in here. We got enough, don't we? It was you know, bigger. I've, it was, by the way, bigger than anything we got in here. Bigger than that one. I've noticed, and I discussed this the other day, it, at an alarming rate, the carcasses on the interstate. Oh, it's unbelievable. Deer are getting almost as common as possum. Yeah. Laying on, it's un, I just, I'm, I'm going to start counting them all the way here. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anything like it. It's uh, it really is up. something else. The time of day uh, that we uh, are coming here to for the live show, it's uh, – you know, it's a kind of a lonely uh, road. You got you got a lot of uh, haulers and and folks that are out there trying to get product where they where it needs to go. Uh, working men and women, and that's about it. Uh, and then you got a couple of stragglers and like us trying to get to work. Uh, so the things that we see and experience yeah. are something else. Oh. We could write a book on just getting to work. Yeah. Let me tell you, the concrete wall in the middle of the interstate. Yeah, is just they just mashed up. All right, so I got to ask you a question. I got to ask you a question: Is it the wall that's getting them, or are they getting hit and slung over towards the wall? Yeah, because you think they could jump the wall. I think so too. They're probably getting hit yeah. as they I jump think they're the getting wall. hit. Yeah, they hung out. Some of them may run out there and panic <clears> and try to run back. I, it, but they're it's unbelievable. I don't know whose job it is to go around and pick all that up, or they right. just let it happen. Yeah. It looks like they're just letting it happen. Yeah. I, yeah, I see the same ones every day. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they can get to all of them. Yeah, yeah I, don't I don't think so either. But it's, seriously, you know, we always see possums and, yeah. and armadillos. Well, sure. deer are right there with them. 
So anyway, you know, I, I know I'm not a true handyman, but can I celebrate small victories? I fix something. You I will see if it how long it runs. It probably won't run okay, very long. So, or yeah. will it actually sling the coin? Yeah, we'll see. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I'll second guest dinners with friends because they can be interrupted by diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or oily stools. It turns out I have EPI, or exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, which means I'm missing the enzymes needed to digest food. My doctor prescribed Creon Pancrelipase, an oral prescription medication that replaces pancreatic digestive enzymes. Creon treats EPI due to cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, pancreatectomy, or other conditions. Creon may increase your chance of fibrosing colonopathy, a rare bowel disorder. Tell your doctor if you have a history of intestinal blockage or scarring or thickening of your bowel wall, if you're allergic to pork, or if you have gout, kidney problems, or worsening of painful swollen joints. Call your doctor if you have any any unusual or severe gastrointestinal symptoms or allergic reactions. Take Creon as directed by your doctor and always with food. Do not chew capsules as this may cause mouth irritation. Other side effects may include blood sugar changes, gas, dizziness, sore throat, and cough. These are not all the side effects of Creon. Creon is the number one prescribed EPI treatment. Ask your doctor about Creon for EPI and visit creoninfo.com or call 800-633-9110 to learn more. That's C-R-E-O-N info.com. As a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 is going to depend on the team members that you surround yourself with that's why you got to check out linkedin jobs with linkedin jobs you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently they make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on job qualifications all on one platform they'll help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash bubba that's linkedin.com slash bubba terms and conditions apply looking to save time and money in the new year get hello fresh and take control of the clock and your budget with delicious recipes delivered right Right to the door. Spend less time in the kitchen with new, fast, and fresh recipes packed with flavor and ready in 15 minutes. And at 25% cheaper than takeout, HelloFresh is the most delicious way to save. Save up today for 22 free meals plus free shipping with the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. The code Bubba, HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. A good pair of wireless earbuds is indispensable in 2023. And for premium audio at the perfect price point, you got to go with Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. They offer optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit and a 32-hour battery life. Raycons are priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of the other premium audio brands. Get 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash bubba. That's buyraycon.com slash bubba. Our friends at TheraBreath have some good news if you have bad breath. Try TheraBreath Fresh Breath Oral Rinse. TheraBreath is dentist form Formulated by Dr. Katz himself, TheraBreath doesn't mask bad breath like those burning alcohol mouthwashes that can actually irritate sensitive mouths. It's alcohol-free and free of gluten with no added dyes or colors. Find TheraBreath in all your favorite retail and drug stores. Look for the bright orange cap or online at TheraBreath.com. You can find a direct link at RickandBubba.com under the sponsors. TheraBreath, confidence in every capful. All right, folks, you've heard us talking about what Relief Factor can do for your pain for several years now. If you struggle with occasional aches, and pains due to aging exercise everyday living consider this relief factor is 100 percent drug free it's made up of ingredients that simply help your own body deal with its natural inflammatory response and we kid you not relief factor is for real and the majority of people who order the three-week quick start for just 19.95 go on to order more Try it at relieffactor.com or rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Helix Sleep mattresses are made right here in the USA, and folks, they ship right to your door for free. If you don't love it after 100 days of sleeping on it, they'll pick it up for a full refund. But based on how we feel about our mattress and what the 12,000 five-star reviews say on Helix Sleep mattresses, we know you'll love yours too. Head to helixsleep.com slash bubba for $350 off all mattress orders. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. That's helixsleep.com slash bubba for $350. $150 off or visit rickandbubba.com under sponsors. Today on Hey Culligan, smooth skin and soft hair comes from where? Here's Mike. Hey Culligan, I've tried every conditioner, lotion, and body wash known to man, and my skin still feels like sandpaper. It could be your water, Mike. Oh, that's harsh. More like hard water. Are you interested in smart, high-efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? Huh? Want baby smooth skin and soft, luxurious hair? <laughs> yeah, can you hurry? I have a date tonight. We're already on the way, Mike. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com.
Having trouble picking a New Year's resolution? Car Shield has you covered. This year, we don't have to worry about how much it's going to cost to fix our cars when they break down. Prices on just about everything are still rising, but we've locked in our price and it will never go up. This year, choose coverage through Car Shield, a resolution you can easily keep with protection plans for around 100 bucks a month that cover more parts than ever before. Go to carshield.com slash Bubba or call 800-465-6550 or go to rickandbubba.com. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, it's 23 minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rick and Bubba Show. If you're listening live, it's Friday the 20th. That's right, the 20th of January. Can you believe it's so already towards the end of the month? Um, this one here, I know we've probably done it before, but how our memory is, it is National Disc Jockey Day today. National Disc Did you know the first disc jockey was an experiment on the airwaves when, in 1909, a 16-year-old Ray Newby, a student at Harold Ray. College of Engineering and Wireless in San Jose, California, was the first to play records over the airwaves. It was soon being replicated by radio broadcasters across DJ. the country, and then 25 years later, radio commentator Walter Winchell coined the term disc jockey. And it stuck. Yes. National DJ Day. DJ. DJ. And and uh, <laughs> I really, really, really. You need to do this segment honor. as Calvin Calloway in honor of that national yeah, DJ. Yeah, yeah. When then, you were a DJ. Yeah, and you remember then I was, then you made me go to Kevin Calloway. Kevin, that's that right. flowed better. That was. But I did both. In honor of that, I wish we could play. Coming. Coming. Coming to the playhouse. Hi. Oh, my God. DJ yes, Bubba. Good that's night, good DJ one. Bubba. Um, so. National, See, but, I mean, national I think disc, we discussed this before too. Disc jockey. What well, we call DJs now, these mix people mm-hmm. and all this. That, that some people pay money to go sit and watch yeah. them play stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, this is talking about DJ spinning record DJs. Mm-hmm. The correct. Yeah. So first disc jockey, nineteen oh nine. So like, how about a sixteen year old boy? 16. This ain't about marshmallow head and all them or whatever that guy's called. The guy's right? No. Be. Yeah. 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 They mix and Skrillex. In, yeah. They're doing all that. Yeah. This is this is this just is DJ stuff. Wolfman Jack yeah. type DJ. So if you tell if if somebody was say, oh, you're a DJ, do you go, no, not really? I mean, or do you consider yourself one? I don't know. I always say no when they because I've had that happen. What before. do you What do you we say? We don't play music, so I don't know. I tell my IT guy. No, but that, you, <laughs> That just happens to say a few words over here, and you know, yeah. I've never thought about the title. Yeah. I, I had neither, to be honest. Completely made that last part up, but I have, I have told people that I'm not a DJ. Mm-hmm. I was listening to the because I'm not. It was I a different you. show, you know. Oh, we're not DJ. They were talking about the disc jockeys back in mm-hmm. like '70s, '60s, '70s and '80s and '60s. And right. 90s. Anyway. And they were playing some of the examples, and the guy, and everything they said would rhyme. They would come. You got to go to the low, and it's, and, it's, and they, now, it was unreal how good. <coughs> Look, Frank Jardine. Very creative. I, he, let me ask you this: Do you consider us DJs doing best ofs? I don't. Know. You know, <clears throat> if if we were doing a day part and walking songs, and I, which by yeah, the way, the reason we why we have that. to use the bed a lot and and everything is because. Um, uh, is really because of, of YouTube, and, yeah. and we'd get pulled off and be in YouTube jail if we play some of this music that's copyrighted, even though we've begged to find out what what licensee agreement we need to purchase and, and that nobody can tell us. Because, But if we could do that right now, we would be playing some songs and seeing if we, oh, could, yeah. we're seeing if we could I'll, walk them yeah. right now and be DJs. Um, no, I, 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 you know, I don't know. Maybe are we... Um, are we entertainers? That announcers. sounds weird, isn't it? I don't know. <clears throat> announcers? Not really. Talk show, uh, um, we're not hosts, but we're well, not we, co-hosts. But we, we're, we're, we're co-hosts. I guess so. Right now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and that's another thing. Like, I've, I've talk people show, have asked talk about host? co-hosting the Rick and Bubba <clears throat> show. I don't even consider that. No, no. Yeah, we just that's part, Rick and well, Bubba. Definitely not, what I consider what a DJ does, mm-hmm. the class, you know, like you're talking about walking it and all yeah. and just it, amazing it. to watch them do it. Mm-hmm. Nah, definitely not that. So, so you are either. you are at... Uh, the convenience store. Yeah. And you bump into somebody that you hadn't seen since high school. Yeah. They don't even know what you do because yeah. they live in Wyoming. I don't <laughs> know why I got them there. And they're headed to the beach, and y'all just bump into each other. Oh, my gosh, Michael, what are you doing? I work and in then, uh, Hey, man, what are you doing right now? Um, I work in radio and television and coach tennis. Really? What do you do? 
I'd say I just work for the Rick and Bubba show. Leave it at that. Well, uh, what's the Rick and Bubba <clears throat> show? Well, that's a radio show. So that's going to be the follow-up question. I work, I work with know. a nationally syndicated uh, show that's on TV and okay. radio. There you go. That works. That's why I just I start radio and television. Mm-hmm. I work in radio and television. Uh, you asked if we were DJs on, uh, in the on IT replays. World. Somebody, uh, uh, Jonathan, for a good friend of mine, said on best of days, y'all are replay J's. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's done a deep. We're not spinning the disc. But that's today, sure. National Disc Jockey Day. All righty. What's your best radio voice if you no, had to if you had one. to fake one? I really don't have one. Well, but you, when you last hey, week. Hey, hey. Oh, I like that. Uh last week. Twenty when, minutes after the hour. Okay. Well that's <laughs> what you like, do during best of. That's like, exactly hey, what last is. week when your so voice you was down a, voice. a little bit, you kinda had a cool one. Yeah, like, hey, if man. I can have a good head cold. Like yeah. Wolfman Jack. I like to have a head cold during best of mm-hmm. in case I have to talk. Right. Do them yeah. brought to you by us. Right. What if they, what if you were known as Pipes and that was your nickname? Pipes. I, here's yeah. my challenge to you and don't be <laughs> hey! don't be crappy about it. Oh, good luck. I'm with that. about to play the go to break bed and I want you to in your DJ voice no, say we'll be right back. I'm not doing that. Huh? I'm not doing that. You won't do that. No, Are you just I don't sit have a down? DJ voice. I don't have a DJ voice. Well, that, I want you to fake one. And I can't time it you out right. You have to fake one. Greg. Can't time it out right. You got to puke, man. <laughs> I want you to be one of them. Did, when you were DJing, did you do that rhyming thing I was talking about? No, they get I didn't a big voice. Hey, it's a man up in the top. I did. You're on the top, and that's what and they, yeah, and they, and yeah, they go. It's yeah. unbelievable. Frank Jardinia, uh, who we worked him. with and, and a great engineer, uh, he uh, he's back in those days. And we pulled him in. It's actually a best of that we saved. He can he can walk a song and, and rhyme it and all that kind of stuff. It, was, it just flows. It was awesome. Walk all right. it. Talk it. Walk all right, it. Go ahead. I'm take, not, take, I, I don't have a DJ voice. Try it. I don't have one. Hey, this is <laughs> Craig. <laughs> he tried it. Come on. Nah, we got out. 15 seconds. That's all right, buddy. Uh, Helmsy, you try it. I don't have it. here. I tell you what, y'all both just. I, well, I, 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 I was. Just, I thought he was. I thought he was going to continue to go. Yeah, I tell you what, y'all are. And, and let me tell you what you. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Whether you're making big changes this new year or you're just settling back into a consistent routine, chances are you could use some audio accompaniment. Uh, on this journey, I know that for me, I, 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 that's crucial. Uh, a good pair of wireless earbuds is indispensable in 2023. For premium audio at the perfect price point, you got to go with Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds, they look, they feel, and they sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for that perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me, Raycon's give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life, and they're priced just right. With Raycon's, you get quality audio at half the price of the other audio brands and it's no wonder their everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five star reviews. Now's the time for you to check them out for yourself. Go to buyraycon.com slash Bubba today. We'll get you an additional 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash Bubba to score 15% off. Sure, we'd love to drop those leftover pandemic pounds, but how sick are all of you, like me, seeing these ads for weight loss pills and fad diets? I've been there. I've done that. They don't work. I'll tell you what works. Eating five healthy servings of fruits and vegetables a day. You do that and the weight can fall off. But A, vegetables, not a huge fan. Or maybe B, who has time to prepare for that every day? legitimate concerns. Let's talk Field of Greens. Field of Greens is a science-backed formula of specific fruits and vegetables you're not going to find in any other product. Proper nutrition reboots your metabolism so you burn calories faster and you lose weight a healthier way. And Field of Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. Yes, you'll look and feel healthier fast, but the greater proof comes at the next checkup when your doctor says, wow, you've lost weight, whatever you're doing, keep it up. Let's get you started. 15% off your first order. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba. Fieldofgreens.com, promo code Bubba. Have you tried an American-made Helix sleep mattress yet? Unlike a lot of other mattress companies, Helix owns its own manufacturing facility right here in the States. You order, they ship your mattress directly from their facility right to your front door for free. And if you don't love it after 100 days of sleeping on it, they'll come pick it up for a full refund. But based on how we feel about our mattress, which we we love, by the way, and the 12,000 five-star reviews, 
what they're saying about Helix Sleep mattresses, we know you'll love yours too. Nervous about buying a mattress online? Don't be. The Helix Sleep Quiz takes into account your individual sleep preferences to match you and your partner with a perfect mattress just for you. Plus, you've got that 100-day risk-free trial. They also have plus-size mattresses and kids' mattresses ranked best mattress winner by Parents Magazine. Head to helixsleep.com slash Bubba. We'll get you $350 off all mattress orders. That's the best offer yet. Helixsleep.com slash Bubba for $350 off your mattress. Folks, we've been talking about Relief Factor on our show for quite some time now. Do we guarantee Relief Factor is going to lower or eliminate your occasional aches and pains? No, we never make a claim like that. But what I can tell you is that the majority of folks who ordered the three-week quick start pack for only $19.95 go on to order more. Now, what we really like about Relief Factor is it's 100% drug-free. It's a supplement that's made up of ingredients that simply help your own body deal with its natural inflammatory response. For a lot of us, that's very important. Getting older, working outside in the warm weather, even exercising can cause frustrating aches and pains, or maybe it's the occasional back, shoulder, or hip pain that's bothering you. Relief Factor has helped us and so many of our friends. So when you think of it this way, is a dollar a day too much to see if you can get out of some of that frustrating pain? To order this three-week quick start pack for $19.95 plus shipping and handling, just go to relieffactor.com. That's relieffactor.com. Let's see if we can get you out of some of that pain. Also, you can go to rickandbubba.com. Look under the sponsors button for a link. Folks, do you need to hire new people? Well, as a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. And they go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates and they make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. And that's just part of why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the other leading competitors. They'll help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. And right now you can post your job for free at LinkedInBubba.com. That's LinkedInBubba.com. Terms and conditions apply. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. It's 25 minutes until top of the hour. I've told the guys off for being. We're uh, back. I mean, they, 21 they, minutes after the hour. Okay. There we go. Kevin Galloway. <laughs> I'm white. <laughs> oh, wow. I threw that in there. Okay. <laughs> I thought when you were Kevin Galloway, I thought, when I heard you, I thought you were black. You, Greg, you knew me. <laughs> Which is so uncomfortable. Um, <sighs> all right, so as we roll on back, I've got I've got a little story here. You know, and, my cricket, cricket, and cricket. I, I think I might want to play a little bit of this song. And you heard me right. Don't freak out, Adler, if you're coming in. I don't think this is going to get us in trouble, but it's important for me to play this. It's important. So I agree. so so y'all can tell me what you think's going on. Okay. All right, here we go. Let it play. <clears throat> Who? Did he say I'm going to get loopy off my poopy? Yeah, yeah. What do y'all think is going on there? Uh, <laughs> well, somebody's, I, I think somebody's got some poopy involved. to deal with. Oh, what's that? You want some more? My hump, my hump. Okay. Oh, wow. Well. <clears throat> what do y'all think is going on? Uh, uh, there's some little cartoon pooping. Okay. It's pretty Sounds good. Sounds like a cartoon to me. Well, I healthy? know what it is, so I can't. I, Tell you what you want. I can't so, guess. All right. I, I, well, I the Black what, Eyed Peas. That's okay, the, the black, group. That's the, the black group. Eyed peas no, group. no, okay. the group <laughs> is <laughs> is suing the makers of Poopsie Slime Surprise, a now, line of toy unicorns that poop slime. I out. didn't know it was time unicorns, out. but I. So we have toy unicorns, and mm-hmm. the thing they do is poop. You would squeeze them. And Correct. They, Correct. And they're and, and what they're, you got? And that's something you want, right? I uh-huh. get it. And it's different colors. So you got, said? yeah, you got a company called MGA Entertainment. They created a popular line of toys, wow. dancing unicorns that poop have sparkling slime called Poopsie Slime Surprise. 
God. And what they've done is they've put out ads for the toys using the song called My Poops that sounds like my humps well, yeah. from it Black sure Eyed does. Peas. Yeah, it does. The Black Eyed Peas are suing MGA so Entertainment gonna, for $10 million. Or mm. they just, yeah, they want some revenue off of it. If you're going to use my tune. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, your subject's a little weird. Right, gotcha. So, back to that. All that poop up in your poop. It is catchy. I, I mean, <laughs> you is. must admit right. it. Is. Picture a dancing unicorn singing. My looping poop. But don't understand the unicorn. I but, don't understand why but, we mm. say, hey, I'm a toy maker. I got an idea, guys. Let me run this by you. Mm. They're unicorns. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, kids love unicorns. No, but these poop different colors. Yes. <laughs> they, they do what? They poop them right out. They right. Poop just, them just right, right out. Right. They're no. glittery. Yeah. And we're going to write a cool little song also to promote it. Mm-hmm. So and, now, now, somebody had to pitch that in front of the creative staff, and they said, hey, I think we have a winner. So in order to promote Pooping the Little unicorns. Poopers, MGA ran a bunch of ads with animated unicorns singing and dancing to a song called My Poops featuring a catchy hook that well, we just played it's called gonna My be Poops. Hard to deny my it. Poops, My Poops, My Sparkling Glittering Poops. Uh, <laughs> and, Something about um, you doing that. Yeah, you're ready no, your voice. I, and... Um, and, and so my they're, poop, they're, my poops. They're, they're, they're in trouble, and they're getting sued for $10 million. My loopy. That's a lot Gonna of money. Going to get loopy off my poopy. That's a lot That's of money a line for some poop, the song. pooping unicorns. Mm-hmm. That is a lot. I mean, how yeah. much? A, first of all, that means that they must have sold a lot of them if they think this product is, you know, the Black Eyed Peas are going, well, y'all mm-hmm. are making all this money. Where's our cut? And they're right. asking for that. We must. Mm. People must like pooping unicorns. Right. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Like you need to worry about these kids that are into that, but right? Whatever, right? The whole unicorn thing, anyways, is a lie. But you had sparkly poop and getting loopy with your poopy. How about that? So, um, I am kind of curious to see how it works. Huh? So here's what's so weird. He said, if um, he said they in the story, and TMZ has a story on it today. Um, so the my humps. Uh, that's the song by uh, Will I Am and and uh, Black Eyed Peas. And this is called um, My Poops. Yeah, <laughs> so there, there's similarity. And right that's there. led to the lawsuit because of my humps and all that. Will I Am and co record label and music publishing company uh, BMG owns the majority of the copyright of the 2005 smash hit, and it claims My Poops clearly rips off the melody tempo. And chord progression, and they go on and go on and, and list a bunch of different things like you know Fergie singing uh, yeah. and all that. So that's that's what they're saying, they say uh, they and they want at cut. least ten million in damages. Wow, wonder how it says, that, that. It says if that sounds a bit high, it's worth remembering that my humps was a huge hit, uh, garnering more than seven hundred million views on YouTube alone, and taking home an award for best hip hop video in two thousand and six MTV Music uh, Awards. Uh, video music awards. So, so they're saying well, you can use the song, but, mm-hmm. we can, but we're going to sell it to you. Yep. And this is a very yeah. expensive song because it um, was so successful. If you want this one, you're going to pay ten million dollars. Right. And so if and they hope if, you sell enough pooping uh, unicorns, right, to cover it. right. And if they end up winning even a fraction of the ten million, it yeah. will be the most expensive poop ever. Yes, it would be. <laughs> and there's been some expensive poops out there. Yeah. Right. So sorry, right sorry now. for you know that discussion, but that's actually a sto- an entertainment story. Today. Well, again, also the fact there's a toy and that's what it does is weird, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Well, the, and the catchy tune is what drives it this product, and it, so it if it's gone, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. I caught myself singing it. Yeah, there's no too. TT in the body. Dance, but the minute it starts, my body starts moving. It does. Yeah, I know. I mean, it can't. just does. <laughs> I can't help it. And then you start. Can't resist my, the movement. You mm-hmm. loopy from my poopy. Do you want me to yeah. mix it real quick? Let me see if I sure, can mix ahead. it. Real quick. <clears throat> see, I just started jerking. All right, let me see. I'm gonna get 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 you drunk. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Did you like that? Did you like that quick mix on DJ that was Day? Pretty good, DJ. Yeah. DJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Calloway. If you weren't, if DJ you weren't a part Bubba. of this show, do you think that's what you would be doing? I don't know. Because you were kind of going down that path. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you were going down well, that path. Well, you know what I was doing is I was making side money because yeah, I yeah. wasn't making enough money at my real job. Uh, and so, just as you grow, as you grow, <laughs> and and you 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 know you start adding different expenses, and you start making a little extra money, or the lifestyle you are wanting to achieve, yeah. you start trying to get a little side sure, gig yeah. and and some things, and then. Um, I don't think I'd be doing that now, no, because no. I, 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 I gave it up when I, and it was funny because Rick, <laughs> Rick was telling me about because I asked him, I'm like, hey, when did 
when did you give up, you know, going yeah. to the clubs and, and all that? He goes, oh, you'll know. Yeah. He goes, one day you'll walk in and you'll start seeing things that you've never seen you'll before. You'll feel very uncomfortable. And I'm like, really? And I, I remember the day I walked in and mm. I just started. I'm not going to ask you what you saw. I just started looking around and, and I was like, wow. Well, I don't need to be here. Yeah. And then cigarette smoke. I hated it. Hated it. God, Still remember do. when you could they would smoke in places yeah. like that? It was it was it's like, awful. You go to a concert and like when they turn the lights on between bands, the yeah. whole place have a giant yeah. cloud. Yeah. And you and you come home and your clothes smell so awful from just going out. The whole society smoked when I was growing up, when I'm yeah. talking about like in the seventies. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. And I never even noticed the smoke. Mm-hmm. Now, if somebody was in this room right now smoking, I I would have to get out. Oh, so. oh for sure. Yeah, um, it, it's weird because back I think then we didn't notice it because I mean in every building, <clears throat> doctor's yeah. office, oh everywhere, everywhere. Um, right. And I'll tell you this too: back at the old plaza, uh, where we were at the West Davie City Center, and we had folks that would smoke out and out oh, out in public, yeah. but outside, if they were down it's, and around the corner, we could go somebody smoking. Oh, yeah. It's like it, it, it found us. But you know, yeah, we lived in it in, in the old days. Oh never, yeah, it's, just, it's funny it's, how it's, you it's get nose blind to stuff. Yeah. I mean, in, uh, in people's homes, <laughs> and there would just be smoke everywhere. Yeah, and there was more to it, guys, than what I'm saying, but that was one of the factors is that I, I, and yeah. I came back to him. I said, I got you. I know what you're talking about. All right, so I got a question for you. We'll just do a would you rather right here in the moment. Would right. you rather mm-hmm. be around someone for one hour that's constantly chain smoking? Mm. Ooh. Or, no. or, or sit in a room full of kids – Mm-hmm. With a room full of kids mm-hmm. and play with the pooping unicorns for three hours. Uh, that one. Three hours. I get through for three. Three hours. three hours. I get through three. I'm hours. going. Th- I'm I'd getting three hours. Fun. I'm gonna have a good time with the kids. We're gonna dance. We're gonna have fun. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna have a good old now, time. Now about about hour two, and I got one uh, more hour to go. Yeah, it's you're gonna, gonna be hard. You're gonna wish you. I'd be like, like all right, everybody up, everybody up, let's go. Come on, come on, go, Greg, go, Greg. What? What? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I can't come be around night. smokers, man. I'm sorry, I just can't do it. About that's hour, a deal breaker. Minutes of that, I'd be excited. Then yeah. I'd struggle the rest yeah. of the way. But that's, yeah. you know. I encounter a smoker <laughs> every <laughs> single day. Really? I'll tell you about it in the break, mm. and uh, and it's interesting. And it's to y'all's point. I can't be around very long because mm-hmm. it just oof, it's rough. I'm mm. telling you. I feel like I need to start puffing on my inhaler. I know we sound like a bunch it. of old men, but I just can't deal with that. <clears throat> I can't deal with the smoke. No. And but 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 what's weird is it back in the day, it, I don't think it bothered me it that much. It's not you, like no. it bothered. It's just uh, I didn't smoke, but I was around it mm-hmm. constantly. Everybody's parents smoked. Yeah. Everybody in public smoked. Mm-hmm. People sit beside you at the bo- anywhere. Movies. Yeah. yeah. Tearing it down. <laughs> Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Paid for by Christian Care Ministry. If you are 65 or older, you know this. Watching your hard-earned dollars fly out the window on health care costs is so frustrating. But here's some great news. If you miss the December 7th deadline for open enrollment, it's not too late. Here's something that can really help. It's MediShare 65+. plus. MediShare is a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills. It's people who encourage and pray for each other, too. MediShare 65 Plus is a low-cost option for those with Medicare Parts A and B, and it fills in the gaps where Medicare stops. It's a great way to fight inflation, too. You can lock in one low monthly price for up to 10 years. Plus, it's easy. You can use any Medicare-approved doctor or get 24-7 telehealth access from the comfort of your home. So worth looking into. MediShare 65 Plus is open for enrollment. And if you join right now, before January 31st, your second month will be free. So don't miss this chance. Call 844-SHARE-65. That's 844-SHARE-65. 844-SHARE-65. They say they'll get your biggest tax refund. Jackson Hewitt says your biggest tax refund guaranteed and a chance to double your tax refund. Thousands in weekly prizes during the Double Your Refund sweepstakes. Your biggest refund times two, twice the money. So forget about them. File your taxes on the double at Jackson Hewitt today. No purchase necessary to enter or win. Open to U.S. residents 18 or older who file a 2022 federal tax return. Promotion ends 4 Visit jacksonhewitt.com for rules. Today on Hey Culligan, smooth skin and soft hair comes from where? Here's Mike. Hey Culligan, I've tried every conditioner, lotion, and body wash known to man, and my skin still feels like sandpaper. It could be your water, Mike. Oh. 
That's harsh. More like hard water. Are you interested in smart, high-efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? Huh? Want baby smooth skin and soft, luxurious hair? <laughs> yeah, can you hurry? I have a date tonight. We're already on the way, Mike. Let us help you out with the free in-home water test from a local Culligan Water expert at Culligan.com. Hey, Dag Prescott here. Why do I choose proven quality sleep from Sleep Number? Because better sleep elevates my game. Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed helps me fall asleep faster, keeps me cool, and effortlessly adjusts for my best sleep. That's more focus, more edge, and more highlights. And that means more wins for all of us. And now save $1,000 on the Sleep Number 360 Special Edition Smart Bed Queen, only $19.99, plus special financing, only for a limited time. Sleep Number, the official sleep and wellness partner of the NFL. Special financing subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See store for details. When you're an innovative business, every blinking cursor, every blank page is an opportunity. What will you do with it? Will you make something better or create something new? Our Dell Technologies advisors provide you with tools and expertise to do incredible things. Because we believe there's an innovator in all of us. For advice on smart PCs powered by Intel vPro that's built for business, call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. Folks, do you need to hire new people? Well, as a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. And they go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million members profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates and they make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. And that's just part of why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the other leading competitors. They'll help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. And right now you can post your job for free at LinkedInBubba.com. That's LinkedInBubba.com. Terms and conditions apply. Looking to save time and money in the new year? Get HelloFresh and take control of the clock and your budget with delicious recipes delivered right to the door. Spend less time in the kitchen with new fast and fresh recipes like Falafel Power Bowls or Southwest Pork and Bean Burritos, each packed with flavor and ready in just 15 minutes. Over 35 weekly recipes and 70 seasonal and convenient items, there's always something new to try. And pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step instructions make it easy to whoop up a tasty meal right at home. This year, skip that extra trip to the market, cut back on takeout, and get HelloFresh delivered instead. At 25% cheaper than takeout, HelloFresh is the easiest and most delicious way to save. Start the year off right with a great deal on America's number one meal kit. Sign up today for 22 free meals plus free shipping with the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. That's the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba or RickandBubba.com under the sponsors for a link. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. day without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, there is no other. It's uh, 10 minutes until top of the hour. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rick and Bubba show, the number 866 We Be Big. All right, so let me ask you a question. Do you walk around kind of aching and paining all the time? And you're like, golly, uh, I mean, I'm trying to do better. Uh, or maybe you got out and did something, and you're like, oh, boy, I'm sore. Or you're just getting older like like us. Oh, yeah. um, let us suggest relieffactor.com. Uh, if you suffer from those aches, pains, or inflammation from time to time, some of us more seriously than others, uh, maybe uh, it's just something you've put off and you're living with, well, relieffactor.com is where you need to head uh, because it's 100% natural research-based formula that was created to help combat the root causes of inflammation, the pain from exercise, overexertion, aging, everyday living. Uh, So go to relieffactor.com. What you're doing is you're looking for that three-week trial pack. It's just nineteen ninety five, and you know the popular over the uh, counter painkillers. They can help from time to time, but they don't need to be taken every day, multiple times no. a day. It could be harming your body. Instead, get Relief Factor. It contains just four simple ingredients, and it works. For less than uh, you'd spend on a cup of coffee a day, uh, you can now get a three week supply. 
So try it out for $19.95. If you suffer from those aches, pains, or inflammation, again, check them out at relieffactor.com today. And to learn more about Relief Factor, uh, look at that 1995 Quick Start Pack and, and visit their website and look around. Uh, they've got lots of information on there. That's relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com, or rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. Um, I know we have discussions with our wives. We're married men all yep. the time. And sometimes we have discussions that can elevate, and you have a decision to make. Do I continue to let it elevate, or is it really worth it? No, yeah. And uh, it could be a disagreement. It could be a, no, I said this, you said that, uh, that kind of thing. Um, And and, you know uh, you're 100% right. Right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And uh, and so the other night, um, I mean, in 2023, Terry Wilburn is wanting to walk every day, and I'm talking about up hills, and we're walking. At one point I asked her, should we just jog? Uh, Because you're walking so fast. Yeah. Uh, But from time to time, we'll stroll. Hey, look, let's not get after it too much. Let's just kind of walk, and then we normally pick up the pace. But for a period of time, we can actually talk because <laughs> the other time we're I'm, I'm chasing her. And so we're talking about something, and um, and I asked her if she had done something, and she said, no, I didn't think about it. I said, oh, you forgot? And she said, no, I didn't forget. I just didn't think about it. I'm like, well, time honey, out. isn't that forgetting? Let, let me, all right, so well, let's break And, and she said, no, I just didn't think about it. It's so, not that I forgot. I'm like, no, that's forgetting. It is. And she said, no. Just forgot. Is she saying forgot is something I acknowledge I know, mm-hmm. and then I forgot about it. Not thinking about it is something I never really thought of. I yeah. She's like, no, I, I know I need to do it. I just I just didn't think about it. It's not that I forgot about it. I think that and partially like, well, the definition of forgetting <laughs> something would be not thinking well, about it. Maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. After did, about, she say, did she say she was going to take care of this at, at previously? Yeah, she, she, it's just something that she so had she, to do that day. And I was like, hey, and, did you do and it? And so she, was, she had said, I'll handle that. Yeah, and the day wasn't over, so technically. Uh, technically, you, know, you reminded her. R- r- right. <laughs> forgot. What, right, let me get an <laughs> and, and, and so we were talking about it, and then I'm like, I think we're getting to a point now where I just need to pull back, you know? Yeah. Because Maybe. it wasn't like we were being hateful to each other. Oh, it was sure, just yeah. like, no, it's just, yeah. I didn't it forget about now. it. I just hadn't thought, I, I just didn't think about it. I'm like, well, so, that's forgetting. That is, for, that well, is forgetting. If, if, or if, is it's it on your, if it's on your plate to do, okay, uh, and you have confirmed with that's, everyone that's what I'm you're saying. going to take care of that, yeah. and you don't, you did. it's not that you didn't think about it, you forgot. Now, if a situation changed or that would cause you to have to do a certain thing that you hadn't really planned on doing and you didn't do it and you go, and oh, you, yeah, I should have done that. Well, I just didn't here, think about it. No, here's the thing. I'm going to be – I'm going to – I had to really step lightly. Yeah. Um, I, I know. I had to. I had to if, pull back. Gosh, how do I say this without sounding mean? Mm. Um, if If you have to be reminded, you forgot about it. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess if so. you don't go the rest of the day and don't say a word, <laughs> does she does she end up doing it? I, I don't know. So Probably, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know because but it was just and it wasn't you know me going hey did you do it was just our discussion about something that that she was going to do and I just asked her about it and I was like oh you forgot well, no I didn't forget I just didn't think about it that's forgetting honey you that forgot it, that it, it, no I just didn't think about it it really really we we can't rule on this and here's why because if you would have waited to the rest of the day mm-hmm. and and when no time was left to tackle this particular task and you would have said hey what about this then it wouldn't have been it would have been I forgot again but, I think if it's something you had planned and you didn't do then you forgot I, if a situation I, as came as up that. and you looked yeah. at me and said why didn't you uh, do whatever when that happened? I go, you know, I didn't think about that because I didn't have a plan. I just didn't right. react. I didn't yeah. think. I said, ooh, I should have done that, but I didn't think about it. Mm-hmm. But it was one of those right. really silly, uh, this, it, this, doesn't, I, this doesn't warrant a, a, an argument of any kind. Oh, sure. So yeah. it was Learn like these words. we just You're changed right. the subject kept on going. Learn these words. You're right, honey. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Life's a lot simpler. It don't matter about being right. Being mm-hmm. right doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And honestly, they're going to forget about it in like five minutes. That's right. right. And then bring it up 10 years from now. Right. And because sometimes we'll come home. <laughs> and then you'll forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I know. <laughs> well, I forgot about that. Um, now, Terry has, <laughs> Terry has developed a little bit of Rick and Bubba, uh, you know, um, sayings and quotes into her everyday uh, vocabulary, you know, yeah. she'll she'll ooh me every now and then, mm-hmm. uh, or something like that. Uh, and so sometimes though, I am reminded that I'm not here because I'll bring that aggression home. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that yeah. locker, yeah. that you know, kind of oh, I'm on you. 
you know, I'm getting on you right now because you're doing something, whatever. She, hey, 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 I, you're not at work. Yeah. Just pull pull back a little yeah. bit. And I think I, I think I was having that fun like we would have with each other. And because realized, we had that situation here, they, yeah. that conversation would have went on for an hour. Yeah, right. And I realized it, it's just ridiculous. Let's move on. Yeah, it's a different world. So I just said, different, okay. Different ball field. Okay. You got to know where you're at. Okay, that's what know I said. where you're at. Okay. So got it. There's that. You just didn't think about it. Got it. <laughs> right, right. You didn't forget. You just didn't think about it. Now, the next time you forget something, go, I'm sorry, I just didn't think about it. <laughs> Don't know. You Greg. could use it. <laughs> yeah, you I could. Mean, just in case you need it, it it's there. Work. It does right. work both ways. <laughs> just throw it right back. Of course, they don't see it that way. No, no they, they don't. don't. They don't. Makes bless no them. sense. Bless them, bless them, bless them. But, no, she is all about – now, she has been for years been gluten-free, so I've lived that life. She forgot about gluten. For years. Uh, you know, back when gluten wasn't thought of, she was gluten-free yeah. and – uh, and um, <laughs> with that something a phrase, uh, and but hey, twenty twenty three, she doesn't. We we don't sit down and write down New Year's resolutions or anything. But she's like, hey, because I think, <laughs> I think during the holidays we, uh, we, she claims we didn't do as bad as in years past. But there was there was no gauge well, at all on on that. eating. It was we're spending time with family and, and yeah. we're having fun. And, and if we eat, if holiday. we eat that, we just eat that. But it became to where. Uh, the cheat days were pretty pretty multiple uh, there. We wrap, yeah. wrapped them up into about every day. And so in 2023, it's it's been about we're walking, we're running, we're working out, we're eating better. Getting and, stuff. Um, and last, getting stuff. Yeah, last night uh, she made um, another healthy meal. Uh, and because mm-hmm. and, I told her this, I was like, there, I don't want you making meals and then you can't eat it because you're gluten-free because she's done that before. Well, you know, she's made she's made a really great meal, and then she's over there eating cereal or something. I'm like, no, 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 we're not doing that. Uh, I mean, if you ma- if you right, if you make something, <laughs> let's make it to where you can eat it. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, and so she has started that, and so that means I'm on I'm on her eating. Oh boy, and um, that, that you know, it's, my, it's, it means you're on my eating. Yeah, yeah, and, and I've dabbled in that, yeah. but not consistently. Where it's like I'm all in, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Hungry a lot. It's not. It's not as 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 bad. No, it's not. Thing. It's not. It's something you can sustain because it's a lifestyle, you know, uh, change and and stuff. It's just eating. It's eating what what she says you can and can't. You know. <laughs> well, enjoy. Yeah. Almost forgot, but then she said, "No, you just didn't remember." <laughs> you didn't think about it. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Prepare too. See, that's why. No, I'm... no, you got to be prepared. Because <laughs> last weekend in Chattanooga, this lady said, uh, "You see a lot of Bama fans here in Tennessee. Do you see Tennessee fans in Alabama?" I said, "Yeah, all of our prisoners wear orange." Oh, okay. No, no, the, even the Tennessee fans were laughing. They we're know. like an hour oh, away they from know. Knoxville. They yeah. know. Well, they yeah. got to have a sense of humor right now. They're no good. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I mean, absolutely. That's they developed one over the last 10 well, years. Well, no, ago. when you're good, you, you get you get mad about people talking about your team. When it get, when you're not doing well, you got to start laughing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? people, but that's the funny thing with Bama fans right now. People think that we don't get nervous, we don't get scared. No, we absolutely, we're nervous until that clock says zero, bro. It's a lot of pressure being a Bama fan right now. Because <laughs> every loss, it hurts worse than it hurt, like, during the Mike years. Like, <laughs> you got like used Shula to it. The Bose yeah. <laughs> the Mike years. Right. Mike, the Bose. They didn't hurt that much then. Yeah, right. They hurt well, the the it. Yeah. 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 Now it, really well, you get used to it. Now it really stings for a long time. Well, that's great to meet you. Uh, awesome. If, go see Jermaine, Funny Mane Johnson. You'll love it. Uh, his website, start following him on all the different social medias. You can see that, too. But catch him at the Start On this weekend. Start On, Birmingham. Let's go. <laughs> Startom.com. Grab a ticket right now. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Little Mike on the Jackson 5. No. So uh, I'll be there. A classic. Uh, much to do going forward. Um, we'll look at the headlines today. Uh, Bubba and I, of course, are operating on as much sleep as possible. It's all good, and I certainly understand the strategy, and it 
in some areas it can be good that the high school that our kids attend, they do the junior senior prom on a Thursday night, which is bad for uh, two big papas here. So that's work night for us. So everybody else has to day off and they get a three day weekend. They get the place where they go cheaper because it's a week night and it's just them there. All that works great. Unless you're one of the parents that has to work the next day. <laughs> yeah, that's a – Boy, because – well, you talk about trying to get by to wind it down. <laughs> mm. oh. So well, it was one of those things last night. You know how you look at something and you go, okay, this is a great memory. It's wonderful, a wonderful time, and you certainly want to be the, the Mr. Joyful. and As and, best as humanly possible. So right? what I did – and, and this, was, this was my mindset. Of course, you know, there's nothing better than what, boys? Hey, I've been there. You know, I've, I've done it before. That, that always helps. And so what I got, this was my mindset. It was the only thing that would really work. Really, if I can I can meet every requirement of Dadville and Husbandville and still really go to bed at uh, close to the same time. So you can't let the other stuff get you that you're never really home. But really, I mean, once this thing is, once we've gone done pictures, which was, my gosh, this picture thing. Hmm. Once we did pictures, and then once you take a picture of your senior on lead out, you're really done because the rest of it is going to be after the prom, and I'm not involved in that. So really, now Sherry, you boy, you talk about a blue day for one Sherry Burgess. <laughs> when the reality hit her at about 9.30 when I was going to bed, when the reality hit her that she had volunteered to make pancakes Uh-oh. At, the, at the after party down, at what the, time? down the street. Oh, Bubba. At that, what time? She was supposed to be there at 11. To start, to start, getting, to start getting ready, yeah. yeah. Okay. And when, but, but I and I kept raising on her about it. I said, "Hey," because I said, "Look at me over here." When I got in the in the Redland cotton <laughs> sheets, I said, "Look at me over here." I said, "I'm done." And she was, I was like, "You want to get your coffee? You want to put some coffee on for you?" Like, and she was just like, "Why did I volunteer for this?" <laughs> and I, and I, I'm like, "I don't know. I guess I guess you're gonna be making pancakes." Oh, no. and, and look, and there I was going to bed, and there she was changing clothes, but not done. Yeah, and oh, I was yeah. just like, and so really. That you know, that's what got me through it. Really, if you look at it, I had to treat it like it was a day. Maybe we had a ball game, yeah. or something like yeah. that, and you just went kind of hard. But really, going to bed was not that far off of the norm, so that helped. Yeah, that's good. Now, now that picture thing, that 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 picture. Well, thing. Rick, on my end, I'm I'm a little behind the curve this week, so I was trying to catch a nap yesterday before this event, and that did not go well. Uh, due to numerous interruptions. So I'm really behind the eight ball at that point, and then we we go. Our plan is always to go a little bit early, try to beat the crowd. Absolutely. If you can do that, that's the way to go. uh, Get set up, and and we took pictures. Of course, as you said, there's a lot of people there. A lot of moving parts. It's not your normal, hey, let's take take pictures at the botanical garden type thing. So, Mm -hmm. uh, And then uh, we, we went up, and we had to walk through, and, and all of that, and then we had to get something to eat on the way out, of course. And uh, uh, while always fun, it pushes time back again. And you know, so I I, I hit the bed very late for me. Well, see, that's and, another uh, strategic move where I was more strategic than you. If if, it, it, if it's a Friday night, we'll go with the group to eat, right? But right. if it if it's work night, you and I are just going to grab something to eat not far from where we yeah. just took the last picture. Well, it, you know, so yeah. so it was just the two of it, us, and it, and yeah, I was you know, smart because you get in that group, it takes forever to get the food, it takes mm-hmm. forever to get seated, uh, and and then it, it, and, it was it was great fun, and we we hardly ever get to eat with uh, the couple we went to eat with, but it uh, how's old Funville feel right now? Yeah, it's uh you know it's it's a little tough right now. Mm, the band's giving the invoice now, aren't they? Party man. The, uh, uh, mm-hmm. And my, my bud last night, he, he's going. So, uh, six minutes now past the hour. Rick and Bubba, Friday edition. This hour starts with a national anthem.
Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba, Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy. They've already given you a kickoff hour on all the different Rick and Bubba formats. Eddie Van Adler settles in. He's ready to give you the YouTube experience live archived. He's got it all. And we'll, we got the Elite Eight coming in today in the golden ticket seats, welcoming our guest. If you're in route from all over the country, are you from your hotel room or just down the street? Uh, we're glad you're here. Looking forward to spending some time with you today. We unpack another, uh, another day. We get you ready for another weekend. But in order to do that, we need the whole team. So let's get the silver tongue one. The man with a golden voice, professional lunch eaters, man of the year. The inventor of pizza in a cup, Shakespeare's worst nightmare, and the master of the Kang's English. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bill Bubba Bussy! Howdy, Bubba! How about it, Rick Burgess? Friends, neighbors, associates everywhere, welcome. Rick and Bubba. That's the same way you love me. That's the same way you do. Journey early days. Steve Perry working his way in right there. there he, didn't get, he didn't get any big parts, but he gets to work his way in there. Before you know it, you big hand, voice. Yep, his big hand, parts. You hand, you hand it over to him, and, and you say, uh, "I'm going to the house." Yep. <laughs> uh, but as we said before, I still own the band, so I still get checks. Yes, that's, a, that's the best arrangement. Uh, that's the same. Come on, Steve. Where you love me, sing something. <laughs> hey, and good Let luck. Let me sing kind of good. <laughs> And good luck to y'all on the road. I'll be here hugging my mailbox. I'm not booking any hotel. Think I'll go home, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You can uh, go home. Uh, all right, so we do have some things to unpack today. Um, from the bottom of my heart, uh, this audience, and you know, we we've been through this last year, Bubba. You know, I mean, look, we've had so many difficult things over the last 29 years. You know, we had to deal with you last year, and Every time the audience is just, they're just so, 99% of y'all are just the kindest, uh, caring, uh, prayer warriors, encouraging, and uh, just just the gift. When we say that God has given all of you to us as a gift, it, it's not false humility. It, we, we really, honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we see it, it matters, and we certainly experience that God listens to a lot of you. So thank you for yesterday. It was a powerful day. Uh, and uh, and Sherry and I and the family had a day of, of reflection, gratitude, peace. Um, it was uh, it was a powerful day, and and we could sense all of your kindness and prayers and and God's uh, comfort uh, all around us. So it, it was just great. So thank y'all for that, for very very much, uh, very very much. So uh, we also Bubba will um, uh, got a lot of stories in front of us today. Uh, we did do a, another Rick and Bubba University the podcast. You're gonna, I think you're gonna enjoy that uh, th this one. Uh, some of you, it may bother, or upset, but I think you're gonna like it. Um, we we bring in, and you know, Bubba, the thing that that Kirkwood brought to the table over uh, there's some things he brought that that though I didn't really think about on how we'd gotten here, but he made some great points. I won't get into it today because that's why you need to listen to the podcast. But <laughs> Kirkwood uh, Bullis, a worship leader who is kind of on the, the front edge of what he says is new, and, and that is the way that worship music finds its way into the church. It, it's not the way it once was done. Uh, things have changed, which makes their job a little more difficult, uh, but he kind of talks about uh, the state of uh, theology when it comes to worship songs. Now, he did inform us this is not a new problem. He just said uh, trying to police it is new because of the way it gets to you now, but... 
so he uh, he talked about that. I, I thought it was. Uh, I hope you liked meeting Kirkwood, Bubba. He's a he he's is, a funny he, guy. Yeah, he is funny. He, he uh, is he's funny. got our sense of humor, which very I very dry. Yeah, sense of humor, right. which is great. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> so uh, so anyway, uh, he and I have had a great time uh, working together, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that. And it's a topic that. Um, uh, you know, people have done YouTube videos about it. I get emailed about it. People ask us about it. Uh, you know, some of these modern worship songs, they've got some theology that, that feels a little questionable. Some of the churches that crank them out, uh, their doctrine is concerning sometimes. Uh, how do we how do we kind of maneuver through all this? Um, and uh, and we asked him about it, and he he was very frank, wasn't he? He answered the questions, and, and he also told us uh, when he thought that some of the concern was maybe not uh, warranted. But he, he certainly pointed to where it is warranted. And if you object to any of his opinions, go ahead and just email him yes, directly. Yes, absolutely. Because so, I'm not going to forward it. No. So anyway, so it, <laughs> um, I, but, but it, it really is important because uh, this is a problem that began with the church not long after it was established. You know, you had the persecution, oh, from, yeah. you had the yeah. persecution from outside the church, and they focused on that, and then became the concern. You see this in... Second Peter, you see this in First John, you see Paul talking about this to the letters to the churches, that it didn't take long for bad theology to try to creep its way into the church. And so that was the two warnings. You got persecution from outside the church, and then you got false doctrine uh, that rises up within the church, and you got to be aware of both. Yeah, we, uh, we've been having a discussion off air about the canonization of the Bible mm-hmm. itself, and yep. uh, and I, I thought it was interesting that actually came yeah. from the word Cain, yeah. which was used as a measuring stick, mm-hmm. not just something you walk through the woods. So everything right. had to measure up to a certain degree before it was allowed to be mm-hmm. canonized into what we now call the Holy Bible. So, And that's what Kirkwood brought that I did not know. I mean, I knew we had hymns, but right. I didn't know how we got them. Yeah. He basically but, said, and that's the way we used to handle worship yeah. songs as well. Yeah, how about that? And we don't do that anymore. So uh, so we'll uh, uh, so enjoy that uh, this weekend. I think you'll find it very very interesting. And again, Kirkwood, it, it's kind of like when people say, um, I, "I I love my church. I love everything." But sometimes I like when Rick and Bubba, when it comes to history, when it comes to the Bible, to to hear them explain it because sometimes that sounds more like the way we all talk around right, the office. Right. Kirkwood is a little bit of, you know, he's a cut up like us. Mm-hmm. So, so he, he kind of breaks it down to where Bubba and I can understand it. Uh, <laughs> so you, uh, you, but he's got incredible depth. I mean, he's, you know, uh, he's seminary trained and, you know, I, I always, uh, I love to hear him talk about what, what it was like to learn Greek and, and all he had to go through. And, and, uh, and of course he, he works alongside a pastor that is a, seminary teacher himself and a pastor's pastor so he is uh he's definitely got depth so you, you um, know I, I love being able to go and you know we have so much ability now to look and cross-reference words with greek mm, and oh yeah. latin and all that but i you know i don't think i'd want to learn it you know that's, mm. that'd be a toughie wouldn't it well, it's I mean, all, I, it's I all greek ma- to me yeah i haven't <laughs> mastered english yet so, no uh, no i'm, I'm you, real still working on it every time somebody asks me if i've mastered you know spanish I've mastered French, Greek, Hebrew. I say, well, as soon as I master English, I'll, yeah, I might try yeah, one of those. We'll move on. Yeah. Got another email from someone. It says, I listened to your show as an English teacher, and I just, t- you know what I emailed back? I'm sorry. I wish one would just come and sit in here one oh, day you don't and want tell that. us when we, you know, just hold up they a couldn't sign. Do it, Bubba. They couldn't when do it. We made a mistake. Be like Bubba, us watching Rick soccer. Bubba. Turkey hunting this morning, so he's he's headed up to Etowah County as we speak, probably out ready to go. Of course, now that's different for some reason for all of us. If you're yeah. going, if you're going hunting, if you, you don't have you, to talk, it's yeah. different. Well, I don't know why that's different, but, <laughs> but it's almost like see, you don't have to use brain cells. If you're if you're there watching the dinner click by and you've got to go to work, watching it click by and you're going hunting, it's different. Yeah, and he, he probably slept less than you did, but it's still Rick different. And Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Today, so anyway. Looking back at, at uh, the prom last night, and I know that this was our second weekend of a prom, um, and this one is the one for our actual school. And I know, Bubba, you've got another one today. So uh, there's, the only thing that's more chaotic than one prom are multiple proms. So, uh, so well, anyway, back to back. Back so, to back. So anyway, so we, um, the, the school we go to, and, and this is the operation, is they decide, and this is, it's good in one way that, we're, like I said, we're doing it on a weeknight. Not good for people who have to work, but great for the students and great for the school, and they get a better deal and all that. 
So, you know, I don't, wherever you live, whatever your school does or whatever you're doing that requires pictures, you have your standard picture places that everybody goes. Mm-hmm. Ours is a botanical garden, okay? Well, the only problem is, as the botanical garden and the zoo and all that in its area in our city is, rightfully so, when you build things like this, hotels and stuff want to start building around it. Mm-hmm. And there's a new hotel, so that now the limited parking that it already has has now become even more limited. Because you now have a big hotel and then a little shops and apartments and all that that come around it where you can go live in some of these condos and all that. Well, now what do they say? You can only park here if you're one of us. Right. So now the parking has been reduced even more. This year, we did have a group that decided to have a tour bus, mm-hmm. which also took up tons of room and eventually got stuck and, all, and ran everybody late on, on the seniors walking out because they couldn't get out of there. Nice. But anyway, all that's fun zone. We got it. But it's now become... You know, it's, it's very congested. Now, here's the problem you have. Now, think about it. I want you to put, everybody put on a parent hat right now. First of all, you've got to get your wife and her camera and the pictures to the location in a timely fashion. So that's husband job number one. Over here, you also have, in my case, two sons that are now driving to go pick up dates Get them to the picture place so they've got to find a place to park. You got to find a place to park, and then not one, but two others have to find a place to park too. They're teenage drivers. They've got females with them that are in dresses that, you know, if anything happens to them, and of course they're not in walking shoes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all the thing. Not every, it's just potential for just everywhere. Here a quag, there a quag, everywhere a quag, quag, quag. quag. Right. And so you've got all that on you. So I'm sitting there. And, and I do this every single day. Some days, it, apparently, I do it for no apparent reason. But every single day, because this is how I operate, and certainly we don't think that our family have to be like us, but I'm a planner. I want to know what the plan is. I want to execute the plan. I don't like to waste time. I don't like to be a bad manager of time. So every day, I, I, as soon as this show is over today, I will text to my wife, here's my day. And I do that for a reason. One, if she needs me, she knows what I'm doing. If, if I'm anywhere near something she needs, she can say, oh, by the way, would you go by and do that? I get nothing. I think, okay, well, I guess as my day winds down, I'll just meander on home and we'll start getting ready to go. So I get there, and we even get in a conversation. It's very lighthearted. The boys got everything, got the tux, got all that. Cherry's got the car washed, and one of them's taking her car, which I don't know what she's thinking there. But uh, And so, <laughs> so anyway, so all that's going on, and we're sitting there, and we need to leave at 4. Okay, um, Bubba was probably already there at four, but uh, so I, four is about you know that'll get us there about an hour before everybody else is supposed to be there by the time we arrive and park and everything. Uh, Twenty till four. Oh my gosh, I forgot to go get the flowers. Now keep in mind I've driven past where the flowers are on mm-hmm. the way home. Mm-hmm. Okay, which is why I put the text out. Here's what I'm doing today. Please add to this anything you need. And I can say I can do that or I can't. You know what I mean? Nothing. So, uh, I, and, and, this, and this is the thing we love about, about our wives and really females in general. They have no concept of time. To drive to where the flowers are with everything going perfect for you is 15 minutes. Okay? I mean, that's, but, that's, 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 that's if everything's perfect. But after 20 till drive, 4. 20 till mm. 4. You know what she says? Well, they need to leave by 4. And I said, well, then they won't have the flowers. Mm-mm. Well, you don't think you can get them back? Um, mm. nah. I said. I said unless there's some time warp that that mm-hmm. that I'm not aware of that I could take my truck and. Sh- it is 21 minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show. Thank you for being with us today. So, Rick and Bubba University, a new podcast comes out tomorrow. Wherever you get podcasts, so grab that. Also, uh, Adler. As, uh, he always does a great job of this. Uh, some of you asked for the uh, two segments we did yesterday looking back over the last 15 years on January the 19th. Uh, he did put those out for you yesterday on our YouTube channel, and uh, Helmsy even put them out on all of our social media uh, channels. So those of you that wanted those or want to share that with somebody, that is all available to you now. Bubba, I didn't realize, you know, we normally don't do the it's, you know, National Pizza Day. 
you know, or well, Hams is going to be in charge of that. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was. was yeah, yeah, we normally don't do that because we they're bippage. So, but you said today was one that means a lot to well, me. Well, uh, according to the kickoff hour, it's National DJ Day. Is it National it is. DJ yep. Day? So, have it you is. hugged your uh, DJ today? DJ. Uh, hug a DJ today. You know, Bubba and I spent a little time just jogging. <laughs> so, the first uh, DJ first DJ was an experiment on the airwaves in 1909. Sixteen-year-old Ray Newby, which that was Greg's last name. A student at uh, Harold College of Engineering and Wireless in San Jose, California, was the first to play records over the airwaves. And then uh, it was replicated by radio broadcasters across the country. Then 25 years later, a radio commentator by the name of Walter Winchell uh, coined the term disc jockey. I'm just going to tell you something. And I know this is bad, bad form. Because, first of all, I guess it's better to do it this way. I'm thankful that the form of radio that we are now doing became, uh, you know, a legitimate way to do this medium and, and how it's even expanded into, you know, other platforms and talk radio. And I enjoy talk radio and, uh, it certainly has been good to us, but I'm just, I, I miss the classic DJs, man. I, I I remember listening to that when I was growing up. Personality. I I thought to myself, I'm going to explode if I don't become one. <laughs> I mean, I, I am absolutely going to explode. I mean, I was I loved hearing maybe how, one that, that's on later in the day. I loved hearing. Well, I didn't even know. I, y'all, this is not a joke. You know, sometimes we say things and it's clear that we're we're just kind of pulling some material we think is funny. Then there's things we say that are there's no embellishment Mm-mm. or comedic license whatsoever. This is absolutely the truth. Are y'all ready for this? Because Greg, you know, we were never big get up early people no. as kids or no. anything. So the DJs I loved were the afternoon drive nighttime guys. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And and uh, and so I remember when when I was supposedly Moving up in the industry, when the station I worked for said, you're going to be our morning guy, I thought, oh, no, what have I done? Yeah, <laughs> what, 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 hey, thanks. I, I'm the afternoon guy. I'm the hot rocking <laughs> afternoon DJ. Don't take this from me. Right. And they were like, no. And, I was, and you know what I thought? My audience is going down. Yeah. Who listens to this? <laughs> I'm like, who's going to be up this time of day? Who is up at this time of the day? People are waiting on three o'clock <laughs> yeah. for me to start the afternoon extravaganza. Speedy, <laughs> you know what, what year did you say that took place? Uh, the first uh, it says the the first disc jockey was an experiment on the airwaves in 1909. Because they I, there must have been a lot of experimenting going on because I know the first commercial station didn't sign on until yeah. uh, 20. Um, well, it would it would have been 1920, KDKA in Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah. 25 uh, years after that. Uh, so do you math? Hearing them walk, uh, the man, radio walk. commentator coined the. The, the term disc jockey, Walter Winchell. Oh, everything sounds so bland now. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, the the personality you find now is is in talk radio. I mean, I remember, man, when you turn them loose and every every shift they had their own personality on yep. it, and they'd walk songs and 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 just have a man. It was their personality just just oozed from the radio, mm-hmm. and you thought these are the coolest people ever. And and they made you feel you you kind of had that like I don't know how you're real sensitive to everything was kind of upbeat and yeah you, yeah. you well, move, toe you're, tap I gotta yeah, have toe yeah. tap and, and, and it was yeah. just I I miss it I miss that that kind mm-hmm. of radio so very much you have to go back and listen to old stuff I literally Greg is my witness no exaggeration and I've told you this on the show before and in books where people have talked to us plastic a blue plastic baseball bat for wiffle ball I found electric tape. Or athletic tape from Dad, one of the two. I think it was electric tape because it hold better. I took that old black microphone that yeah, came with a push button mm-hmm. recorder, and I I plugged it in, and then I wrapped it on the 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 plastic baseball bat and stuck it in the cushion on a chair so it would stick up like a microphone in front of me like this one, and then I would get the 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 record player, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I would literally do a a DJ show and put it on cassette tape to try to listen mm-hmm. to how to mix the music and yeah. and how to do it. And I created this pretend 
radio station oh, yeah. WXYZ, WXYZ. Yeah. and uh, and I and I would even try to get Greg and people to do shifts. It was you hard did. to get everybody to come into work. <laughs> Rick was yeah. scheduling shifts. Right. Hard, hard to get people and, in. And I thought to myself, please, I mean, I have to do this. If I don't do this, I don't know what I'm going to do. Rick, then the movie so, FM came out, and you were. Uh, I didn't yeah. know what to do with that. I thought that's even cooler. I can actually see it. <laughs> Yeah. I think I just saw Rob Street doing pigskin roundup. <laughs> How can life be this good? Yeah. That's funny. Uh, so, I, so I, I when they believe it. when KDKA in Pittsburgh started, they were what was recognized as the first commercial radio station, first you know regular broadcast. Mm-hmm. They said within four years there were six hundred new stations in the U.S. And by nineteen thirty four, the FCC had to be uh, commissioned to uh, to regulate and keep. Keep mm. everything evolving and not mm. becoming mass confusion. Mm. Uh, how about the? Um, this oh. is kind of neat. Just looking back at some of the history, the most influential DJs: um, Albert, Allen, James, Freed. Do you want to? Oh yeah, Alan Freed. Yeah, yeah. Freed. yeah. yeah. Moon Dog. He Freed. was influential DJ in the 1950s. Alan Freed. They claim, and I love how they say polarizing. He created the polarizing term rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Alan Freed, what a legend. And then he when he one that would put on them shows with oh, all yeah. the acts. He bring them to theaters. town. He bring them to local theater. Yeah. What no, about he was he was making Jack? Yeah, too. he was. Yeah. You give out Alan a, hey, you give out on the skin. He put your record on there. What was the there was a movie about <laughs> him? What was that movie? Uh, I know he came out and he was introducing the acts. American uh, Hot Wax. Probably. Yeah. Oh. I think you're right. By the way, Greg. Y'all uh, know who Robert Weston Smith is? No. Nah. Wolfman Jack. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was first Wolfman saying. Jack. 28 minutes past WRAB. <laughs> uh, look at it. James Spann today says partly sunny. High today around 68. Looks like rain comes in over the weekend. Uh, don't mess up the weekend, James Spann. The Bee Gees. Extending time with us. Let me hear from you, Boogie Child on RAB. There it is. There it is. I beg, I beg Greg to do that to kick off Arnie. Wouldn't do it. I can't do it. I don't know. I love it. Man, oh, no. see how much fun that is. That see how much good. fun that is. Well, it, you know, it paved the way art. the whole the technical aspect of it for TV and cell phones and everything mm-hmm. else that came after it. So, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of history there in the. When you, you look at radio. Oh that's for yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know where uh, even some stuff and, not, and this all that influence everything you're hearing right now. Mm-hmm. That's why we still, you know, our bed music has us talking over and all that. That's still us clinging to it a little bit. It is, <laughs> you know, because you don't hear other talk shows talk over the bed. Rush would do it from time to time because he was a former DJ yeah, too. Right, right. But most of the new guys, you know, Buck and Clay, they don't know how to talk over music, <laughs> huh? <laughs> we'll be back. Bottom of the hour. <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Get it through. You know what I mean? And I and I, and I said, uh, and then, hey, hey, everything's all right. I mean, all you're really missing is the picking them up there. Right. I said, we'll just, we'll just bring those to where yeah. we're having the picture. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. So what was funny about that is when we got there, it was Brooks, Brooks' date's mom came up all apologetic. <sighs> I forgot about the flower. I just now went and picked it up. And I, of course, I, I I wanted to first tell her. I said, "Are you kidding me? So y'all, you, you, you didn't get the boot near picture? I didn't. Can we get it out here? Well, I guess. So because and I said, "No, we're in the same boat." I said, I, "I'm holding your daughter's flower right here," and she was like, "Oh gosh, thank God." So anyway, so uh, so then all worked out. Right. So first of all, what do you do about parking? Never fails. My wife always believes in some, the same fantasy world that would have got me on a fifty on a thirty minute total drive with no interruptions. Could get me back in 20 minutes. You know what I mean? In that same world, there's going to be parking right next to the garden. No, there's not. <laughs> that, that, there's going to be no parking in that parking lot that all would like to have. There'll be none there, honey. Mm-mm. Let's go ahead and park over here where I, I'd rather not give away my parking thing. Let's mm-hmm. go do what what what, what is going where I'm going to end up anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, drive in there and see, Mm-mm. honey. There's no way that there's a parking spot in there. That's a parking spot that's only available in the heavenly realm. Okay? <laughs> I said in the real world, in this falling creation of too many people in one place, it's not there. That that window closed because of the running to get the flower. And, and so I said, so I'm just going to do what we always – What I'm, I'm, I said, I, I tell you what, so I can live with myself, I'm going to drop you off. So then I don't think I wasted a trip. <clears throat> right. 
Because right. if I go in there and waste this trip like I know I'm going to, mm-hmm. it might make me. I might get ill. Yeah. So I'm just going to drop you off. So then I'm I'm, I'm doing something functional. Yeah. Because see, I can't take time and blow it. That's just not I, that drives me up the wall to have bad time management. Mm-hmm. So I dropped her off, and of course we all know was there a parking spot in there? No. No. <laughs> of course not. No. And 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 so I go and you do, see me right by the door. I go. I, I went in there and parked. <laughs> And went and did my thing, which, by the way, my move is brilliant, but I'm not going to give my move away. Mm-hmm. Because if I do, I'm not sure I'm supposed to be doing it, and other people start trying to do it. Oh, okay. So I can't give my move away. I'll tell you in the break. But anyway, <laughs> so um, so then the pictures start like this. If it was just go and get a picture of your kid and their date, if that's all there was to it, it wouldn't be that big a deal. That doesn't take that long because mm-hmm. they're easy to corral. Yeah. Here they are. Here's some here's some scenes. We're done. But oh, no. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> I got to have pictures with various groups of people I go to school with. And my date wants pictures with various groups of people that are her friends. Sometimes that's both of us. Sometimes it's not. Then, then I want to find out who their date is and get their picture with their date that's over picturing with their group, with my group, and my date, and the date's friends. So now it starts all these different combinations, but everybody's running everywhere, and you can't get all these people together. Bubba and I do not have a picture of our kids together because of this mania. We couldn't find each other. It was, it, it, and it is. Think of a picture of the New York Stock Exchange yes. when there's a 500-point fall on a Friday. Yes. And That's the mania it. going on and people holding their hands up. Yeah. At one point, picture people in beautiful tux and, and, and dresses screaming, sell, sell, sell. <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, that's really what it looks spot on. That's exactly what it looks like. And then you're trying to figure out who you can get all your pictures made with? Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. here baby 35 minutes past the hour of the rick and bubba show thanks for being with us linkedin.com slash bubba so glad to have them uh look if you're out there right now and you are trying uh to uh replace someone or maybe you've got a new role that's just become available uh, with your company you know like we know uh one thing that a especially small business can't really afford is wasted time, huh? Yeah, as uh, as Don Henley said, uh, you, you don't want it to be wasted time. So uh, so anyway, why don't you go to LinkedIn.com slash Bubba right now. We'll get you a free job post. Yeah, free. There you go. That gets your attention. Uh, go to LinkedIn.com slash Bubba. They, they go way beyond just resume data. Uh, they're going to use insights uh, from your job post, your company, and they're going to put it in front of 875 million member profile. And then they're going to use screening questions and give you the ability with their app to work some of that. And that way, when you actually interview people, LinkedIn.com slash Bubba is weeded out everyone that really doesn't warrant an interview. 
So then you only hire the best of the best. Uh, you got to fish where the fish are. So go to linkedin.com slash Bubba. Uh, also find uh, that link also at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors button. Uh, Bubba, it looks like Alec Baldwin uh, may be uh, now he – it's almost like he knew that, that he had problems, and he, he's basically tried to do a PR campaign to keep from happening what I'm afraid has actually happened, and that is he has been charged. Yeah, he's been charged with two counts of involuntary manslaughter in the death of the young lady on the, on the set of the movie Rust. Uh, Baldwin not only was an actor, he was executive producer of the whole mm-hmm. project. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. tragic accident, yeah. uh, no doubt about it. But he could face up to 18 months in prison over this. Now, I doubt he will get that, uh, but still, he's going to have to face charges. So did the young lady who was the keeper of the guns, or as they call it, the armor, mm-hmm. um, is also going to, to uh, have the same charges against her. You know, the thing about this, it, it at the least, it just looks like there was some sloppy gun procedures going on um you know you would think if you are on a movie set and you have guns and uh, you have blanks you know for those and you have someone who keeps up with that uh that they would never be any live rounds on the grounds I at just, all it, yeah that doesn't make and sense and apparently there was some and they were doing some shooting uh, during lunch break or something, and seems so unwise. And I mean, Baldwin saying, "Look, I, I'm not in charge of the guns," and she handed it to me, and he even said he didn't pull the trigger. Now the investigation said, "No way, this gun goes off." He didn't pull the trigger. They yeah. say that hurt him more than anything. We yeah. did the interview and yeah. publicly said he didn't pull the trigger, and they're yeah. like, "Yeah, I mean, but again, said that. well, let me ask you this. now, now you know that line we talk about it all the time. Why do Once I? they established that he lied about that, mm-hmm. which apparently we're going is going to be established." Now the lawyer, that's the prosecutor, can now tell the jury, well, how do, he, he, he'll lie about anything. I mean, we, how do we believe anything? He claimed he didn't pull the trigger. Well, I, mean, I, I mean, his defense is going to be, look, I'm an actor. We have mm-hmm. somebody that understood, and that's to be legit. Sure the that's gun, legit. she hands it to me, and and it went off accidentally. Well, being the top gun, it is. It's just you have to pull the hammer back to to make the gun go off. So. Um, Hearing the prosecutor talk yesterday, though, I mean, they said the set and everything was just a mess. They found a bunch of, of violations that yeah. didn't even have anything to do yeah. with this, but you know how that is. Right. If you violate yeah, yeah, this, well, look yeah. what else. You're yeah, in an unsafe there, environment. Right, there, and that's what she said. There were so many cut-costing measures that, that that's what led to this problem, and so he's going to have a situation. Well, the line they have to draw, and I'm no lawyer. I just play one here on the show. The line they have to draw when you get to involuntary manslaughter, they're going to have to prove that you, Alec Baldwin, the individual, okay, you were so careless that we have to hold you accountable that your carelessness caused this person to be shot. Yeah. If the whole set's got problems, then you got all kinds of people. You say, well, right. th- there's fines and there's all this. But for Alec Baldwin to go to jail, they're going to have to decide that he was so reckless that if he had not been so reckless, she wouldn't have got shot. And and that's going to be a tough thing to prove because back to what you said, Bubba, what he should have said all along, because I've heard actors come out and go, well, you always you always confirm that. Yeah, but that may not be criminal. Well, yeah. it, it might be the right it be thing a good to do. Idea, it might but, be a good idea, but is that criminal? But, so it's got to be criminal. And so what, what, what he should have said is – I fired the gun, but I didn't, how was I to know there was a live round in it? And then if somebody comes and says, well, I normally fire it before that. Well, yeah, maybe I wish I'd have done that too, right. but is it criminal that I but didn't But is that do procedure? It? Right. Is that, did you bypass a procedure that you're normally supposed right. to do? Was Probably I, not. Was, I, was that something where that everybody says is done and yeah. I didn't do it? Now, yeah, required. Now my negligence may have led to her death, but that's where the line's got to be drawn. And, you know, he could serve up to 18 months. We know he's not going to get that. Do y'all think he'll go to jail at all? No, I, I, I kind of doubt he will. I, I think, uh, you know, you're probably looking at probation. Uh, then the civil the, case. The ahead. civil case will be uh, will probably be the one that will hit him the, the worst because the burden of proof is not as high, and uh, they'll go after him financially on that. Well, let me ask you this. 
because I read his statement when he did his interview, one, about he didn't pull the trigger. But, and then he made the statement that I would never point a gun and pull the trigger. Well, if you're filming a movie that's about a gunfight, and would. they handed you a gun and said, you know, this person said it's clear to go, mm-hmm. you're going to point it at somebody and pull the trigger, right? How many more? Yeah. Why are you acting like you never do that? I mean, that's you're, that's okay. Is well, my point. My point is, we shoot at each other in movies. Well, with, go- with blanks. It goes back to Greg what you said about him being established as a liar. Do you realize that they can put together a clip of his whole his whole film history? You realize how many? Yeah. Pic- how many? How many? I, I how many? That was a dumb statement. I would point a gun and pull the trigger if I got blanks in and I'm an actor because we do it all the time. I that's think that's what I mean. He, They're going to produce a highlight reel of him doing it in all kinds of movies. Yeah, yeah. I think he hurt himself with that interview. That's why the you know most of the time the lawyers don't want you talking to the no, press. Oh, and don't. don't forget when he uh, stopped out in the street and gave him. Remember, mm-hmm, he he was right. really he, yeah, he needed yeah. to be quiet. He yeah. should he should have shut down and not said one word to he got. I to think court. he was he trying to show how upset he was. True. To show it was an accident. But the more he did, the more he just opened himself up for misleading comments. And look, one, one, I, I, yeah. he should have. I think he should have said, "Look, the gun went off. I don't know what happened. I, I, I didn't think it had a. It in wasn't the, supposed to have a live round in it. I don't know what happened." We were. If there's a rule that says no live rounds allowed on the set. Whoever's in charge of that is who's. That's whose fault it is. There yeah. were live rounds just everywhere on this set. Yeah. They, they found, uh, I guess, six with the one that struck the camera operator. Right. Five uh, others were found by the FBI. Two were just loose on top of a prop cart. Uh, so, one was in a bandolier worn by one of the performers. A fourth was in a brown holster. Uh, some people think that brown holster was uh, Alec Baldwin's, but they're just live rounds everywhere, scattered yeah. amongst these blanks. So yeah, and that's what the that. Pros- that. Yeah, and that, the prosecutor really, really landed on that yesterday. Yeah, it's crazy, mm-hmm. huge violation. And so yeah. then the the, 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 mm-hmm. the the law's job is to say acknowledged, messy set, uh, kind of stupid what y'all were doing here, but where can I make a criminal charge stick? And and if I'm gonna make one stick, who do I make it stick to? That's where it's going to be complicated on the prosecution side. Who who is ultimately responsible for a set that was a a, a tender box for a fire that led to a person's death unnecessarily? Well, you go and back. Who's who's responsible for that? You go back to the armor. Right. Who's the person handling the weapons? Right. Yeah. She appeared to be young, inexperienced, and uh, not very mature in what she was doing. And then you go back to the executive producer, who's in charge and responsible for all of it. Who is Alec Baldwin again? Yeah. Is that because I'm, I want to get that right? I think you're right. So the executive producer, I thought, was the person who provided the money for it. They they fund it. Are that is the producer? The one who's actually in charge, and of course, the director has a uh, has a lot of authority as well. The well, exec- they're, they're kind of like the coach on the field. Yeah, in the yeah. in the executive director, the person who gets the thing financed. You mean producer? Uh, producer, I mean. Um, and then uh, and then there's a producer, and then there's a director, and then you have all the people under that. Um, so a lot of producers. Yeah. Um, the I had forgotten that one of the camera assistants had actually walked off the set because he was like, "This is crazy. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. dangerous." Yeah, that's and, gonna uh, hurt him too. Yeah, that's that's nuts. Well, uh, I, I don't know how, and y'all said this before, but let's just say it again. Who in their right mind, when shooting a movie that features old guns, new guns, uh, futuristic guns, how does any of those sets? allow one live round to be anywhere near where they're shooting these things. Well, I think that's why they have a yes. law you're not supposed to. Yeah. yeah. You can't do that. I mean, that is... They're the, ignoring that's, it. You talk about just... Yeah, I don't think that's... But what's the purpose? Well, so they all go over during the breaks and shoot targets, but that's stupid. <sighs> that is stupid. Because it's easy to get it mixed up. Right. That, I mean, that's just... Yeah, you don't want to That's do that. stupid. Uh, so, um, anyway... So Alec Baldwin, we'll see if any of it sticks, but he has been charged with involuntary manslaughter. Two counts. 18 months is the maximum penalty if he's found guilty, but we'll see. 15 minutes to the top of the hour. 866-WE-BE-BIG. More Rick and Bubba coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Uh, all right, so, Bubba, you said we, there was a hero. We were talking about prom. We're talking about the pitcher situation and the mania. Bubba really described it perfectly. Picture the New York Stock Exchange and people running everywhere, and you're trying to get pictures with various groups of people, 
and everybody's scattering. I, I tell I tell Bubba when I walked in, I felt so. I, I Can always, I correct this and say the Chicago commodities market, okay. Rick, like you saw in trading places, there is even more perfect. Hefty. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like you. I tell you the people I feel bad for are the people that don't know that there's a high school prom coming there, and they think they're going to have a normal day at the gardens. Yeah, yeah. that's sad. It is. Hey, hey, buddy, who was trying to take a picture of his little boy? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're there, and it's crowded. It's <laughs> It's not overly hot. Mm, no, I went too bad. But it is sunny, it and is. Uh, you know when people are dressed up, you you know you tend to be a little warmer and, oh, and yeah. the confusion and running around, as you said, trying to find the pictures. And there was some some sweet soul, Rick, and I, I I don't know who it was. I don't even remember what he looked like in all the confusion that was walking around with a basket asking people if they wanted a drink. I, I met him. You're talking about the Good Samaritan. Yeah. I met him, too, and I thought, is this an angel from heaven? Where, oh, did, where did he come from? Huh. And, and I, I said no, but I said, thank you for serving. I did, too. Hmm. And I, I, he was walking, and I thought, wow, that's a, what, a great, what a great service that is. You know? You, know, you know what? I think he was tied to the bus. He had something to do with the bus. Oh, really? He kept okay. hanging around that big bus. I kept knowing. And, and it, it may was a, have been the driver. And, I don't he, know. and he had a basket full of various yeah. cold drinks. Yeah, and it was a it was a cloth basket. Oh, I mean, yeah. It was covered. It oh, was yeah. very oh, I loved very it. Very nice. Yeah. And, I uh, probably hugged him more than I should have. <laughs> yeah, I think he. I, I didn't overreacted. get anything because I didn't have a free hand to hold it. <laughs> but uh, it was nice to know he was out there doing that. Wasn't it? Well, and then there's the pressure of this picture thing. And Dad, you've all been there. There's the pressure of what getting the right pictures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean you yeah. you've got you know there's there's that nervous stomach thing, you know you're it's hectic hectic crazy crazy hectic hectic crazy crazy. And what's so bad? I saw one mom and I felt so bad for her because I think this was her last daughter to graduate, and uh, and and I think it was it was a uh, it was Big Love's day, and her mom and I watched her and I felt so bad for her. you know what she starts saying I heard her talking to herself enjoy this. Enjoy this. <laughs> mm-hmm. She kept saying, "She kept saying, take a deep breath. Don't be stressed out." By I'm letting a I'm letting a really important day just slip by and all this mania. She was literally trying to talk herself in. Yeah. Just don't be like this, you know. And well, and, I heard one dad. He was having a, a spiritual. Uh, it, it had turned spiritual for him. He was actually praying. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I heard him. I heard him say as I walked by, "Thank God, this is over." <laughs> so. I, I thought he's really been touched. Yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a day. I, I think I might have just uttered that in my spirit. But anyway, so so then, so see, what I got two. I've got, I've got to, and, Brooke, and Bubba, you had this last year. If you have two, it's really mania. And so yeah. Sherry said, I thought, I said, Sherry, honestly, I mean, you know, I'm a game plan guy. That's a, I, let's work the plan. Let's execute. And she said, here, I'm simplifying this this year. And I said, Lord, thank you. She said, you're nothing but cell phone guy. So I said, so I don't have to key with the big camera. You don't give me one camera. You got none of that? Because she's got like two cameras, and she gets confused on which one it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I said, so I don't have to fool with that, that, that crazy camera. She said, no, you're strictly cell phone guy. Now, I became kind of the butt of jokes out there because I kept bragging about me going to portrait mode. I am now in portrait mode, and I would declare it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, and, it's a great effect. Yeah, and it so, really uh, uh, and I, and I, and, and people, were, people were impressed with what I was doing in portrait mode. <laughs> That portrait portrait mode, if you get if yeah. you get the the foreground, the background just no. right, you can you can knock out some good. You know what pictures. I would say to your point? There it was. Yep, that's the one. That's it. Well, see, I'm the camera guy. I'm the, I'm the big lens camera guy. Yeah. So I have to, you know, you try to work with everybody, and I want all the other moms and all the the phone people to get their picture, and uh, and and then you know peel out so I can do mine. Look at that one right there. Mm-hmm. That's portrait mode, that's baby. That's good. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. it. Huh? Look at that fuzzy background. Look at Burgess. I mean, look at me go. <laughs> Love I, it. I, I, and so uh, we're looking at pictures <laughs> on RBTV. So anyway, I, and I see. Here's what we all know. There's going to be a bunch of pictures now. Now the the problem I have is that I have the boys, and I don't know where they got this from. They want to be goofy. Okay, and I don't know where that comes from in our family. Yeah, I know. Me but, but And I'm like, guys, we can be – let me have a shot that your mom's going to be okay with, and then y'all can do whatever you want to.
Nine minutes to the top. Phone calls now. 866-WE-BE-BIG is the number. Usually in the flow of the show, um, this audience doesn't get to call a lot. But you can now. We're going to open up phones early today. As we all get ready for the weekend, we get ready to welcome our golden ticket seat guests, the Elite Eight, the Great Eight, coming up a little bit later on. If you're in route, we're looking forward to seeing you today. Melissa will get us started. She's out of Sweet Home, Alabama. If you want to join us, and some of you were calling moments ago, just uh, call us now. Uh, Melissa, hello. Welcome to Rick and Bubba. You're on. Go ahead. Good morning. I just had a comment about the Alec Baldwin situation. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in Tusa County, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Fortunate to be raised there. But I know I'm 41 years old, and since I was a child, if somebody hands me a gun... I always check to see if it's loaded. Yeah, yeah, standard. That's the common sense way of doing things. That's just it, protocol, it, and that's respect for dangerous weapons. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and and being an actor is a little bit different. We, you know, we were tra trra that way, and a lot of actors say they they follow the same protocol. But the key in this case right. is if you didn't follow that protocol, is that a good suggestion, or was it mandated, and and therefore is it criminal to not have done it? And that and that's that's right. where the case is going to really rest. But, and, and but yeah, we he, we, we were raised the same way. Is he is he going to be looked at more as the person who did the shooting, or as the executive mm -hmm. producer mm -hmm. over the whole project? Right. So there's some liability there, I would think too. But really, like Greg said, I think it really most of it should fall on the person who is there to handle the yeah. guns, the be, armor. Yeah, and they try overcharge too. I will say this yeah. though. I will say this. I don't know. Because the protocol that I was raised on was a gun that I didn't know anything about or, or a real gun. If somebody who this is their job hands me a gun and says it's blanks, yeah. I don't know that I ever checked a blank gun when it was handed to me. Yeah. I had blank guns. I, I don't remember checking in to see if they were, they've had a live I mean, obviously now. it's a good idea yeah, to but, check any gun. Right. To you. But, uh, we continue. Uh, Jim in Alabama. Jim, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh Good morning, guys. Hey. Uh, if, if you will check into the background of the armorer, she's uh, related to a very famous Hollywood quick draw artist named Fel Reed. So she is very familiar with firearms. While maybe new as a set armorer, she is not uneducated on guns and gun safety. No, I, I wouldn't yeah, think apparently. that she would be, but she was She was young and inexperienced at doing this job. I Matt, mean, this was, she's just uh, not that old. Matt in Alabama, go ahead. Monkey grass, green acres. Yeah, I, I hate to say it, but based on the outcome, hard to make a case that she was good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, uh, how do you get 18 months for killing somebody, but you get 18 years for tax evasion? Yeah, well, I, I think that speaks to I think to you how, know the answer to that, man. Yeah, what the government thinks <laughs> yeah. is important. <laughs> Thank you. you remember, the hey, uh, remember, the king always had very, very severe sentences yes, uh, yeah. as to scare you into abiding. Uh, Tyler, Mobile, Alabama. Tyler, go ahead. Hey, yeah, I know we're getting hung up on the um, 18 months for Baldwin, but in New Mexico, there's actually a firearm enhancement for involuntary manslaughter yeah. to make it a minimal mandatory five years in prison. So you say if he's found guilty, there's no way he serves less than five based on New Mexico? If they give him the firearm enhancement, which I guess they'll announce in arraignment. Yeah. Well, I think it's, the fire har the firearm enhancement, and I'm not an expert on New Mexico law. <laughs> okay, I want to be very I don't clear. Know how you would be. Yeah. I think it's like if I hold up a convenience store, there's a certain penalty for that. If I hold it up with a gun That's that right. I'm brandishing, it's extra on top of that. I don't yes. know that it's extra in a case where it's a manslaughter case. Yeah. Where it's yeah. an accident. In the, in the story, it says it's a Class D felony in New Mexico, punishable by 18 months in prison, up to. So that's what it's classified. Yeah, that's what our story said today. I know some of you have been emailing, oh, five years with a gun, but I, I think that's an add-on for a intentional and that crime that you decide to use a gun in, not an accidental death that a gun's involved. Yeah, you're right, and and a lot of states have that. Right. If you bring a gun, that's why sometimes yeah. these criminals thinking that, they'll go in and try to convince you they have a gun when they really don't. Right, yeah. right. that's why they'll finger in the pocket. Right, yeah. Uh, Trey in Alabama. Trey, go ahead. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
So I don't understand why Mr. Baldwin can't be ultimately held responsible. I know it's a, a law thing, and I'm no lawyer, but just the basic four rules of firearm safety. If you're the operator of the weapon, you want to ensure it's uh, secure. It's a you little, know, it's a little different on a little different on the movie set, Trey. I mean, it's a different thing. Look, I understand that we don't. A lot of us don't like Alec Baldwin, but we can't send people to jail because we don't like them. Uh, you know, it, it. What does the law say about this particular situation? You know, if if you're over at my house and I get my guns out and I'm taking them out of my gun safe and I've got a round in there and I've been careless with it and I shoot you accidentally with it, that's a little different than I'm on the movie set shooting a western where they keep handing me guns that have blanks in it and they're handing me one with a bullet in it. That's really not the same thing. Uh, and and that's what they have to prove is that he was so negligent that his actions, you know, uh, if he had done a better job in, in, in his situation, then then she would still be alive. Exactly. And, 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 and the problem is there's a lot of people that, that they're in charge of the guns that just hand them to the actor. Right. So this is not the same thing. Yeah. And, 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 and I understand. So I think some of this is, well, I don't like Alec Baldwin. Well, yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Uh, but, but we understand. We, but we don't send people to jail because you don't like them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we send them to jail because they violated, they, they've committed a crime. Uh, and so that 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 is a little different. And that's kind of what the special prosecutor said, Rick. Uh, mm-hmm. It said, and I quote, if any of these three people, Alec, Hannah, or David, uh, that had done their jobs, she would be alive today. The evidence clearly shows a pattern of criminal disregard for safety on the Rust film set. And that's it's, the key. What's his role in this whole situation? Exactly. And we're focusing on his role as an actor. Right. With him, he's going to be put in that group mm-hmm. and say, all of y'all created an environment that had her killed unnecessarily. Correct. Yeah. If, and see, that's different. Yeah. Then, well, if they hand him a gun, he should have fired it one time. And that's why he needs to go to jail. It's mm-hmm. a little It's a little more complicated than mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, let's go to, uh, to Nathan. Nathan, go ahead. Morning. Hey. Hey. I just wanted to say about this whole Alec Baldwin thing. The reading somewhere, the armor lady, it said that she was to put blank by the person who ever was sitting around then. I, I can't but understand. But how do you not know the difference between a blank and a live round? Well, that's that's why they have a person called an armor who handles all the weapons. They're supposed to do that. And I think what should have happened, the armor, the girl who was the armor, when she saw live rounds laying around and saw that everything was being handled carefully, she should have said, we got to clean this up or I'm out of here, and left. Yeah, or or I, I like, let's ha- get rid of all live rounds. None should be here. Right, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, right, the whole right. thing was sloppy and a mess. Right. And, but who, I, I wouldn't want to be part of it if they're breaking all those rules. Yeah, and who's, you know what happens? Accident. Yeah, and if Alec Baldwin shares in that responsibility, then yeah. he's got problems. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. You know, let's stop. We all thought, you know what they do? Does this sound familiar? They try to do faces in the picture that like they have y'all. names for. Does that sound familiar to, yep. to, to maybe their uncle sitting over here? Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, so-and-so face slightly, no, off. You know, slightly, slightly off. off and all that i'm like good gosh on, greg and so you know, I lemon said, lips yeah yeah that that exactly that mm-hmm. kind of stuff and yeah. so I, I was i was like all right look can we just get a picture okay <laughs> please so then and then you work I, I have to work through this doggone it you never know if you have one of these in the family i know betty's one big loves a, an eye closer that son of a gun will close his eyes in a picture. Really? <laughs> I'm just like, son. So every one of them, you, you have can, to check his eyes, take, don't you? With, yeah. Betty, yeah. with Betty, you can take ten pictures. Her eyes will be closed in eight of them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, amazing. it's like she could time the camera. Just right. perfect. I, I, and, and, uh, and, then, and, and, and then Big Love does that. And then young Broderick, the Tasmo, he has this lean back thing. Where you try to get everybody lined up, he'll rock back. And I'm like, hey, hey, now you're messing the whole picture up. Get up there even with everybody. <laughs> what you know, is that? And then God bless their dates. I mean, they're just trying to do something, and they're you know hacking on each other and all this. And, again, if you can just get in there and get – so then that you get to that point when you go to wherever you're going to eat after, okay, and then it's the moment of truth. Let me have your cell phone. Let me see what you, let me see what you accomplished. Uh-oh. And, buddy, if you don't – Cause see, you better hope you got something. Because what, what happened was her camera was going to be heavy, heavy uh, Tasmo with a few big gloves, and then I was heavy big glove with a few Tasmos. 
So that was going to be the combination of all that. So if I drop the ball on mine, you've pretty much the big love, you know, pictures are, are pretty mm-hmm. much over if I if I dropped them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, unless yeah. she was able to pick up some magic. And with an eye closer. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, man. with an eye closer. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, I took tw- I took twelve of this one. How many can you use? I mean, one. Is, that, is it is it an uncontrollable yeah. thing that you're you you time it? I mean, what, how do how are some people that way? And I, I don't know, know exactly what you're talking about. Well, and here's the thing that I don't get about it. A part of his if it's daylight, it's worse. He's like me. I have a really bad sensitivity to the sun. I can't keep my eyes open in sun. You know, my, my eyes, I, I have mm-hmm. to have sunglasses if we're out in the sun, if you're going to take my picture. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I'm going to be like this. Mm-hmm. It and, was and, not and, the best time yesterday. We were a little early. To needed to be pictures. a little later. Yeah. It did. Because you had a lot of bright, contrasty uh, situation. You had to fill it with a flash. That's the only way you could get well, around when, it. And can, may I make a suggestion to, you know, I'm not trying to change the school, school policy and tell the parents <laughs> what to do, but if I can make one suggestion. Then you get to the venue, and what do you hear? Everybody's taking pictures out on the out on, out on the view. Well, what, what? Why didn't we just come here <laughs> and 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 do one location and Can't get do that, Rick? Because the place they are gives a view of Birmingham. It's like up on a hill, yeah, and it yeah. looks out over the city. And the sun was perfect then. You know, if you could get them set late, up, yeah, late, yeah, yeah, late. So here's an idea: Why don't we all just end up there and go take their picture there, and then watch the senior lead out and leave? Well, why are we at two locations? I, I, I couldn't believe it. when I heard that. Everybody's getting a picture made out there by the view. What? I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, we should have just done that. Just, just go there. And look, I understand why they do it, and I, I appreciate it. it's a good idea. But like you said, I, you know, I'm a, I can't do things during the week, guy, and boy, it kills me. No, I know. Man, God love me. you, little sensitivity. Oh, Unless it's tennis. Man. Yeah, now if it's tennis, anything. No, yeah. it still kills me. But <laughs> right, uh, sure. yeah, it still kills me. <laughs> right. I'm telling you. Yeah. I, I know it's tough, but you you know what you have to do. You just have to get it done. Mm-hmm. You have to grind it out. Here yeah. we are. We're doing it. We're I know. It done. We're grinding. We're, we're grinding. Getting it done. I'm trying to hush, but we're just grinding. <laughs> we're doing it great. But uh, but you're I right. I'm gonna run over somebody getting to that bed today. Well, by I, the way. I, well, I will I will I will say this. Um, if, I'm no, gonna we'll, look like Larry Zonka. <laughs> I hope you wake up in time for your next round of pictures. <laughs> but let, let's, I may pass that off to somebody else today. <laughs> well, there's just only so many pictures of your of your kids you really want. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's I, only so much memory I got to store them. <laughs> well, here's, here's, well, here's how bad it is, too. Think about it. If you've got sons, they're just in tuxedos. Right. How many pictures of them do I need in tuxedos? Yeah. I, I mean, it's like if they go to multiple proms, do I need pictures of them in multiple? But I know different dates know. and all that. And their dates are so pretty and they're so beautiful and they're so, they're just so lovely. <laughs> and, uh, and, and everybody's out there and it's just a madhouse. I mean, guys, there's something about madness when people are casually dressed. And madness when people form yeah. dress. Mm. The you know what's funny too you with, the, I mean? with the girls. It, different yeah. madness. With you, you're talking about with the girls, and especially like when when I coach with uh, a lot of the girls on the tennis team, you never see them in that environment, and it's so so funny to see them dressed up because most of the time you see them and. You know, they're out there and hot and got oh, yeah. hats on and sweating and running. You know, oh, yeah. and then when you see them dressed up, they look like a totally different Yeah, place. I had that situation because a lot of them went to Nicaragua. Well, in Nicaragua, Nicaragua. Oh, hey, yeah. hey, Nicaragua, baby, you just surviving. Oh, yeah. and, and, and they're coming up. Hey, Mr. Burgess, I'm like, who is that? <laughs> yeah. They're like, that's so-and-so from Nicaragua. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's Riley? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Six minutes past. As uh, we work our way back, Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Manandler, 
the team all here. Welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. Rick, glad to be here. When I say that, I really mean it. I know, Bubba. I know that. And we're glad that you are here. And uh, we're trying to corral you a little bit today, but I think we can get you headed right down that tube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I feel yeah, like it's, day, it's the day the cattle get their shots, and I'm trying to get you in that shoot. Here we go. Uh, so anyway, um, David Crosby, dead at 81. That's a modern medical miracle. Yeah, he uh, that, that, long. That, uh, that David Crosby lived to 81. Uh, David Crosby, I know, Greg, I'm with you. He, he certainly deserves his place in rock and roll history, but there was not one project that he was part of that I found entertaining. I like Southern Cross. That's a good song. And, and Stephen Steele sang that. And, and yeah, I think but as he, the group. But I think he even wrote that. But anyway, so I could be wrong on that part. But you're right. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, I, I liked one song, and that was Southern Cross. Uh, I didn't like anything by the birds. Mm, Nothing. Not really. Zero. Before uh, our time, right? Before our time. But I, re- I, but I acknowledge that David Crosby sure. not, not only had an impact on music, he also was another one of those people that was able to live an unhealthy life for an incredible amount of time. Yeah, really? You know, he had the, to get a new liver but, at one point. Yeah, but Bubba, the one that the favorite. Now, I want to tell you one thing about David Crosby you did like, okay? That time they put him in rehab and they, they caught him scaling the wall. And, and he got up on top, and they, there, someone actually he had could to, scale the wall. He got up there and jumped, remember, and escaped. That time he got out of, they oh, put yeah, him in some I kind of whatever. It. And <laughs> um, and 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 uh, and I and look, he he may be a might have got his life ready and, and landed that plane. I certainly hope so. But I also saw him be a real jerk one time, and see that's why you shouldn't be a jerk. I know we all have bad moments. Yeah, I can't I get it out of my mind. That. What was that? You know, I think and I, I know that. I should not. I should not have that feeling about somebody over one bad moment. I was like, a big fan of his I've hairstyle. Because I've had bad moments. I, We've all had bad moments. I liked his hairstyle and his hat. Mm. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. But I've never uh, – I, I always see that every time his name comes up, and I think, oh, what a jerk. I, I, I'm I'm sorry, what I think happened? I saw what that. Happened? Huh, I don't want to talk about it. You t- I've told you all before. They, they, <laughs> they were in concert at an amphitheater. <laughs> oh, God. And uh, – this was back when you know we were we you know it's always good if you're in a cluster that has a rock station so you get tickets or whatever. And I don't even know how, why we had tickets to this. I don't even remember what happened, but somehow it was a combination of bands and they were one of them. And I was I was backstage for that. You know you come and we have a barbecue and you might yeah. get to meet the band or, or whatever. And they came off their bus and did their whatever. And then it wasn't very much. And he was walking back to the bus, and a little kid, because his dad must have been a fan, ran over to him and said, "Will you sign something?" And he said, "He's trying to blow him off." And he said, "Please." And so he goes pick when he picks it up, people mob and get in the line. He goes, "See what you did," and dog the kid. Oh, mm. I remember you telling that. Mm. Wow. Yikes. I thought, you know, you, you play guitar, but you're not all that important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you wrote some cool songs. Yeah, you wrote some cool songs, but frankly. I mean, All right, so talk to me about him, David. Uh, is he is he uh, most well known for for the the singing or the writing? Yeah, if someone and, just and let me ask being part Crosby, of Rick, and Nash, being and a Crosby, key role in important bands, right? But, but like the Bee Gees, did he write about a gazillion songs that nobody knew they wrote? No, I, uh, you I don't, know what I mean? Is, did, sure. Was he behind a lot of other artists? Do you know, uh, I'm Rick? Sure. I'm confused I go to the Burgess about Brothers. Crosby, Stills, no, like and Nash. And Young, oh. yeah, that was so that was when Neil Young was with him. Yeah, Neil okay. Young, and so that that's two different groups. Yes, yeah. well, it's but the same it's a, group. But we'll Young comes later. He came and went. <laughs> yeah, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young is the same band. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, but right. Young left. Okay, so they they just they just took him off the the marquee. Okay, I got it. And he went out on his own, did his own thing. As and you the know. Crosby, Stills, Nash came from one from the Birds, one from the Hollies. Yep, and Buffalo Springfield. There you go. Make it right. mm, there it is. So anyway, David Crosby went on in at 81. And uh, as I said, probably the most remarkable thing is he lived the way he lived and made it to 81. Yeah. Does it bother you when somebody like David Crosby do that and you'll try real hard to be healthy and you'll die away before him? Right. <laughs> yeah, he looked horrible. For, I mean, health, <laughs> health wise. Oh, it would be, it would be different. It would be different if he was a health nut. I mean, he looked horrible. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get into the Biden clips today, Bubba. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Where did he go? Let's go. <laughs> Where is it? Anybody hey, know? Where's my Joe? Joe? Speedy claims that clip Where's number one today Joe? will now bring all of us into secondhand embarrassment, even if mm. you don't struggle with it. Mm. Uh, and that is, uh, and when I see just the headline on my sheet today, Biden at Raphael Warnick's church while dancing is going on. 
And that's it. all I need to see. I, I know that that's a video that I got to watch. And Speedy, he dancing a jig? If you need to step out of the room, no. you can. No, he's not, Bubba. That's uh, the problem. <laughs> um, so here comes the president, and he's there with Raphael. Are they celebrating his big win and all that? Well, uh, yeah, and, and you know. He this, sent Herschel back to the house. Let's not forget, he just in the last few days said he grew up going to a, a black church. This dude. was on okay. uh, the Sunday oh, yeah, before yeah. MLK, right? right. right. Well, yeah. it was a lifeguard and, at a black post. Right, right. And so, guys, I think he's confused. Confused and forgets where he's at, or or something. But I can't look at it. Look either. how much he looks like that puppet. He's scared. Please look. Just yeah, stay with it. Look at his oh. hands. Look at his hands. He's just looking around. Well, he don't know where he's at. He said, "Now this is odd." It's just like Walter the puppet. Walter. He's trying to find corn pop. Y'all? Yeah, he's like, what am I supposed to do? Do you see that? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Cooking drummer, though. Cooking drummer, I will say. Yeah. yeah. I love the music oh, director. Oh, too. Bring it! it! Yeah. Oh, those hands, Bubba. Oh, no, Bubba. Why did you tell me to look at his hands? Why did you say that? Did you say there? No, yeah. Can, can y'all for radio uh, best describe what he's doing for everybody? I can't. Every, everybody, kind of, like, everybody's being moved by the beat but him. It looks like he got lost in us, and he yeah. looked. He was standing in the church. He didn't know how he got there. That's it. Or another one. It looks like somebody superimposed him into a scene he's not really in. That's true, it does. <laughs> it actually does. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think you're right on that. You're right. <laughs> He, he's like, he, one of these things is not like the other. One of these in things more ways than not one. Look. Yeah, and I'm not talking about skin color. I'm talking about yeah. just coherence. Right. You realize what he, is he... Somebody get him. What is he doing? And we wonder why the guy with the mics is still wearing a mask. But anyway, so... Um, <laughs> all right. Who? The guy who went back there and was messing with the wireless mics or woman this had a mask here. here. Uh, this. Oh, so man, a in church. If I was running against him, I just run that clip. That's and I say I approve this. If message. y'all are wondered, wondering why you're now hearing on things like CNN, the Republicans had it right when they said, which is a phrase I never thought I'd hear on CNN. They're done with him. They 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 know this is a liability, and they hope they can get Trump in the same trap. But they're ready to be done with him. Yeah, you, it, you realize we have the State of the Union coming up, uh, and it's it's very soon, week or two. And then he is going to announce he's running in 2024. They're going to let that die down in the news cycle. Then he's going to come back and announce he's running. Well, now, Bubba, let's hear him really, really pontificate and clear up why the uh, classified document scandal is no big deal. <laughs> uh, here, here comes the president. He'll now tell us that there really is no, this ain't no big deal. I mean, you know, that they had classified documents. Now, you have to forget everything I said about Trump having them. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, but um, yeah, ignore all that. I'm hoping you're going to forget everything that I actually said uh, now that I say something different. So here here we go. You know, the only, I, I will answer the question, but here's the deal. You know, what quite frankly bugs me is that we have a serious problem here. We're Look talking behind about, him, Rick. We're talking about that's What's the going nominee. on, and the American people don't quite understand why you don't ask me questions about that. But having said that, what's your question? Now, the reason why we're uh, that's, asking that's you a Newsom question behind him, he's the that's one that's going to push him right off the, yeah. the front of the right. stage. Yeah. The reason why the press is finally asking you about this scandal, the classified documents in your garage, is that you railed on Trump when they found them at his private residence. That's right. why. You you can't. We got we got. I love when I love when, inexcusable, I, inexcusable. I love when when presidents do that garbage. They're caught in some kind of scandal. We got some real problems in this country. Yeah, uh, is this what's going to take you to actually address those? Yeah. Well, don't, y'all need to ask me about things that we really got a problem. Well, you told us that what uh, Trump did was a major problem, and and that you and couldn't you couldn't comprehend that that would even happen. But now you've done the same thing that you said was irresponsible, and you can't figure out why everybody's asking you about it i mean how i mean can you does that make you mad to even say what i just said to yourself <laughs> why, why what you're the one that made us ask you about it with yeah. your own comments they always fall back on we have serious work to do okay we have work oh yeah like the rest of us don't right right, right. we prefer them to not do work actually right Spirit in the atmosphere. I would come, like to go to that church, though. It's a cooking church. When yeah, we come back, except for bad, warning, except bad, for the bad theology. Bad theology, good song. Okay. When we come back, Bubba, Kamala explains electricity. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. So there you go.
There we go. Uh, some other things that are going on today uh, in the news that are big headlines. Comey's book. Uh, and I'm like you, Bubba. We've been involved in, in uh, you know, getting books and putting them out. I've never seen a turnaround this quick on a book. I mean, when, I mean, when did Comey get fired? When was uh, when Trump let him go? What's it been, six months, yeah. nine months ago? Yeah, maybe? I, yeah, it may be longer than I think. A little think. bit longer, yeah. See, I don't know. I don't know how long ago. I'm not even going to try. Well, anymore. Trump. I get these things uh, wrong. Say, he these was, timelines uh, wrong all the time. He was sworn in middle of January a year ago, so he's been in, what, a year and a few months. Um I don't know. I need to look, but well, Bubba, I, I just, thought he turned it out pretty quick. I was about to say, like. Bubba, you don't have to look. He wasn't, he, the, the president's only been the president for two years. Well, so, not so, that long. So, yeah. so we're not talking about a, a big body of work. So what's the president? He's been a year and then whatever this month is, a, well, year, January, a year and four February, months? February, March, April, a uh, year and three months, 15 months. All right, so so w- then Comey. Even, Comey wasn't fired day one. No, no, so, no. So Comey has not been fired very long ago. Guys, I know because of dealing with books, you start working on a book, Say in 2018, your book uh, if it, it, it will come out late 2019, maybe if you can get it all together. So it's turned around pretty quick, and I'm kind of like what some of the folks are saying: Is there anything in this book, even the stuff they think are just hard hitting headlines today, <laughs> that we didn't already know about Trump? Hmm. No, I, I don't think so. Rick, he was dismissed on May the 9th, 2017. So. Little, uh, you know, eleven months ago, basically, almost a year. Well, that's the, that's getting a book out in her. The first book that came out on him. Uh, at the rate he's going, by the end of his term, there's going to be ten books. It's, especially when you keep firing people, and every right. time you fire people, they right. write a book. Right. right. But I mean, I'm seeing things uh, about, uh, you know, I, I don't know where Comey would would question Trump's marriage. I I don't know. Where, where well, it, you know, this is all excerpts from the interview coming out this weekend. So you know, they they tend to take things. A little out of context for the promos, you remember, to, you know, got to drive some audience in there. Right. So, But it, it will be interesting to see what he says. I, I, I'm not saying it's not interesting, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it's just part of the game in Washington. Well, it, it's um, – The game continues. It, he, he, he says um, that when – he said that Comey was, uh, was being told, and what he felt is that um, – uh, that it's going to come out on April 17th or next week. He says that he questions the strength of Trump's marriage to his wife, Melania, after revealing that Trump asked him to investigate the salacious allegations about his actions with these Russian prostitutes, you know, the fake dossier. And now I want you all to think about this. This is supposed to be a hard-hitting headline. It bothered President Trump that if there was even a 1% chance that his wife, Melania, thought it was true, it could cause trouble between them. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I, and, I, I, and I don't I, think I, a guilty man asks hey, him to hey. investigate it. He's you wanting think, he's yeah. wanting the investigation to prove that he was innocent, so he can prove that to his wife and and this fake news that was going on. And of course, it's obvious now that it was it's just all made up. Yeah, he goes <laughs> he goes in there he goes in there to talk about it. Here's what it is. Come, I remember Please that. investigate this and prove to my wife it's not true because it's not. Right. Oh, I, how dare him? Yeah. What? Uh, he, he, he thought he thought if there was a chance, even one percent, that was true that Melania might be mad about it. But yeah. Now he also yeah. told Comey. He said, "Now leave this Stormy Daniels thing alone." <laughs> <laughs> now that, that, that let that go. My lawyer's got that handled. Uh-huh. Yeah. But but anyway, <laughs> the, uh, well, have y'all seen Trump's tweets this morning? About oh this? please, oh, yeah, he's bring so them on, bring them on. James Comey is proven leaker and liar. You're right. Virtually everyone in Washington thought he should be fired for the terrible job he did until he was in fact fired. He leaked classified information for which he should be prosecuted. He lied to Congress under oath. He is a weak and untruthful slime ball, who <laughs> was, as time has proven, a terrible director of the FBI. His handling of the crooked Hillary Clinton case and the events surrounding it will go down as one of the worst botched jobs of history. My favorite line of the whole thing right here. We haven't got to it yet. No, it was my great honor to fire James <laughs> Comey. Yeah. His great so honor. Good. Well, how about this? Out of James Comey's own mouth, he admitted he did leak one of the stories. Yep. So we do yep. know that is true. Right. Yep. How about this? This is the man that would not prosecute Hillary Clinton. He says that he thinks the present uh, president is untethered to the truth. Uh, anyway. Well, he may have company. Right. Um, he calls the president. Now, again, these are things that he's supposed to be giving us these great revelations on Trump. He calls the president egotistical. So, yeah. Oh, who thought sure. that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trump? Well, not, no no president me? has been that way. Here's another no, one that's going to be a bombshell. All. You ready for the bombshell on this one? Comey, who stands six foot eight, says the president was shorter than he thought he would be. 
Where does this and book, when does this book get to him? What did he, Rick, did he, he says he doesn't have good hair either. I don't know what he's talking right. about. What did, I mean, what did he think? Twenty one minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba show. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we uh, are excited to be with you today and another weekend coming up. A brand new Rick and Bubba University uh, out again this weekend. Catch it wherever you get podcasts. Uh, as uh, we interview Kirkwood Bullis, worship leader on, uh, you know, the new uh, world that we now live in as a worship music kind of comes from everywhere, anytime, anywhere. And. Uh, how do they go about vetting out uh, the theology in some of the modern songs? And he kind of takes us through the history of how hymns have been handled and, and compared it to how it's handled now and, uh, and and how he tries to do his job. It's a, it's a really informative interview, so catch that over the weekend if you so desire. Uh, so, Bubba, we, we have one more Biden clip, and then we'll let Kamala Harris, our vice president, Explain electricity, uh, but but can't hardly wait for that one. Rick. So Biden t- tells that first of all, we watch him stand, and any of you who have people you love that are going through any stages of Alzheimer's, dementia, um, post strokes, if you watch the president standing in that church, they that he looks like your loved one. Uh, and so it, it really is concerning. But then next, uh, he said he didn't understand why everybody's asking him questions about this, uh, him having classified documents in his garage. Um, he's, we got, he's got work to do, and there's more important things to talk about. I don't know why everybody keeps asking. Uh, so then he goes on to tell us he really doesn't have any regrets. So here, here we go. Yeah, what's your question? Do you have regrets that you did not reveal the existence of the documents back in November before the big time? Hang on. Okay, look. As we found, uh, we found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. Failed. We immediately turned them over to the archives and the Justice Department. Rating. We're Rating. fully cooperating, looking forward to getting this resolved quickly. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Thank you. Uh, that's not that, what you said about Trump. I, 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 you know, un, doggone it, you got on 60 Minutes and you rallied on Trump, and we all remember it, and we've all got the cuts, and, <laughs> and and now you're trying to act like you didn't say what you said or that you, you're a different standard. Don't uh, you know Newsom standing back there going, I love every minute this of it. so much better Loving than you every minute of it. And I think even the people that write things for him to say, they've given up. Yeah. Just say, Newsom, you know, I think it's like this. Now, used to, they would just lament over it. I think it's like this now. I think that'll work. If you watch <laughs> Newsom, <laughs> right. if you watch Newsom may be trying to stuff more classified documents in his pocket. <laughs> right. If you, if you look real close in that clip. Bubba, are you gray on electricity? Uh, no, not really. But well, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris wants to tell you about how electricity works. You know, this is that weird well, thing. Well, I'm, I'm curious if she, if she believes in standard current flow or she's a subscriber to whole current flow, H-O-L-E. This is that weird thing where she speaks to us like she's on a children's show, like she's the guest on Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's talking to all of us like we're all... Like we're all little children, or in our modern day, it would be like a drag queen talking to the kids at the library. Right. right. <laughs> so, uh, so we uh, l- or the l- local school. <laughs> right. Uh, or sadly, a church. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, don't don't act like that didn't happen. No, because yeah. yeah. it did. Uh, all right. So uh, here here is our vice president explaining how electricity works to us. Okay, here we go. Today, America has more than half a million miles of transmission lines, enough to wrap around the globe. 24 times. These lines connect the power plants where electricity is created to homes and businesses and schools and hospitals across our nation. Think about it. Every time you turn on a light or charge your laptop or plug in your air conditioner or put leftovers in the fridge, you rely on the power delivered by our nation's network of transmission lines. Wow. I never knew that. Of course, Bubba, she... <laughs> Are we she, plugging she, in air conditioning? Right, yeah. Bubba, she... Yeah. <laughs> well, she, she I, I, I don't want to... I don't she's wanna making, nit- she made a mistake right out of the I, gate. I don't want to nitpick, but... But uh, go ahead. 
you know, if you if you follow the law of conservation, you know that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It is only converted from one form to another. Right. And we use mechanical and magnetic right. energy to to create current flow. So it, uh, d- nitpicky. On right, my right. Right. I give you that. It, it, right. You I sure. Give you that. Yeah, right. Yeah. But why? I I guess I I need to know the more broader context of what. Well, the broader That's context. What she's talking about. If you want to really, really just take your head and tilt it this way like a golden retriever, you always call that the golden retriever, the Irish setter, you know how they look at you or a little little dog when you talk to them. She's acting like we don't know where power comes from when when we when we are, like we don't know how a refrigerator. We think it's magic. Did we? Did, what is this? Some kind of. Um, <laughs> did, did a fairy put it in our house? We don't know. We don't know what powers there. are. We don't know what lights. We don't know how that. Does anybody not know when they see these power lines everywhere? It, did somebody go, I wondered what all those were? <laughs> Is that how we I plug in our head? idea, yeah. What's with all the strings in the air? Right. I, I thought that. I, 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 thought that th- was a, I thought that was a bird rest. <laughs> right. I, I, kept think, I kept thinking this circus is never going to get started. It is if they don't put their foot on two different ones. Right. right. Yeah. Well, so, the same, the same I thought it was a wacky good. zip line. I never found where you got on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got a uh, transmission line uh right next to my house mm. and i was playing in the side yard with ruby the other day and i realized that there was a little plate on the pole so i took a picture of it and i showed it to greg and greg just went nuts greg, but, uh, do you want to hear somebody talk about power that actually knows what they're talking about so what does all this mean greg tell well, us what all this it's stuff your, means. it's what class it is which is how big around it is it's how tall it is the date it was installed stuff like that what is the what are, what is the didn't you say the, the the type here type C means something or something? No, it's the uh, class. Yeah, if it's a class three, that that means the, oh, the cl- thickness. Okay, there you go. Wait a minute, class. And you got <laughs> oh no! Why did you to dog go many? <laughs> what did Kamala say? Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell me that when I, I put a leftover in the fridge, the power comes from in line? <laughs> I you didn't know, know that you Cam told me. Cam, uh, what are we talking you, you, about? You know what it is. And we're wrapping the world twenty-four times with the amount of twenty-four times. That's right. That's possible. That's a, that's a lot. Of um, <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, Actually, just just to she was a show I thought it was a zip line. <laughs> <laughs> just to give you some reference in history, though, it was always amazing to me that my mother told me when they got electricity. Now that was my mother. Wow, mm-hmm. she said she was like a teenage girl when they came by and was stringing the first electric wires, and they got hooked up. And mm-hmm. Rick, you know what their first appliance was? They had it was electric mm-hmm. radio. They had a bulb hanging down in the center of the room with a string oh, yeah. on yeah. to cut it on, and they had to turn the lamps off and on the oil lamp. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, and that happened in my mother's lifetime, and here I am. One generation away, and look, look how dependent we are on it now. Another and we're, question for we're about for, to run every car in America on it after absolutely. 2035, I guess. We're going to yeah. try to. <laughs> phone calls, phone calls, phone calls. 866 We Be Big. We talk to you next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Trump was 6'5 or something? I don't Trump's know. pretty tall. He now, Comey's on up there. That's yeah, he's 6'8. Yeah. Right. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here. With- there he is. There he is. Glad uh, to be here. But before we do this Marlin story, we got to ask you about this picture. Okay. And you, I was. <laughs> I know which one you're talking about because I saw it too. I so thought, oh, that's good. There, in a picture, anytime we uh, two, two, there's two, two pictures. Anytime <laughs> we appear in a picture, there are right. three options. Number one, I'm posing in the picture. Everyone wants me in the picture, and I know I'm in the picture. Right. Uh, right. Then there's the photo bomb. Yes. No one wants me in the picture, but I bomb in the picture. That uses you said involves a face. Yeah. Right, and I, I have yeah, a good one of Betty photo bombing a picture last night. I'll okay. have later and, next week. And then we have this. We don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. Is this? I'm in somebody's picture, but I don't know it uh, because um, <laughs> you had the. But I'm really in it. You had the the senior day uh, deal with your tennis team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you supposed to be in that picture? Well, l- let me give you the setup <laughs> of how how this is. We have 
What a, we, we what do a pretty a, family. We do an introduction before <laughs> the match, and we have both teams lined up on different sides of the court. Right. And then the coaches are lined up by the net. And you're introduced, you come out, you meet your opponent, you handshake all the coaches, and you run back to your respective side. And in that particular case, that is the Cross family. That's Karen and Keaton and Dale Cross. And we are having our senior day, so... After we did the intros, the, the girls who are seniors come out and their parents give them a flower, and uh, Coach Mears reads a little something about them, what they've done, how they've contributed to the program. And it just so happened in that particular picture um, that I am the background. And so it was not intentional photobomb. Uh, okay. How about this, how about, real how about this how about one this there, Bub? You're about, looking what directly what into the camera. You not well, see that you're behind them? That one's a little the, more damning there. You're looking well, at the camera. No, this, this is a case <laughs> where <laughs> when they stop in front of you uh, and you realize that you're going to be photobombing, there's nothing you can do. You can't because, step left or right? Well, I've got somebody on once. I can't go funny. to the right. I have somebody else standing there, and I probably had somebody on the other side. Well, you don't go point. to the right, then you're really in it. I mean, yeah. go to the left, you're really in it. Yeah, it would be you, my right. Yeah, you should go to your right. If you went yeah. to your right. <laughs> but I, I, it almost I realize like that you're, the ghost of you is hovering over <laughs> yeah. this famous place you have built. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's uh, the, the where the photographer is set up, I realize. Hey, I'm in the shot, and I really can't do anything it about it. Funny. So there's no way to get, get it, it out of that either. Funny. Is he, like I say, you can tell he knows he's in the picture. <laughs> yeah. that one, yeah. But yet yeah. he can't acknowledge he's in the picture. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like he's the backdrop. And, like I have to and it's hard for me not to make a face when I realize I'm in the right. picture. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, when, when but you know, fa- that's what that, that second one, re- this, that second one, that's that look like somebody says, you remember remember Bill Bubba Bussy? Yeah. You remember he, how, the role he played in the tennis program? Yeah. Man, you, uh, people are taking pictures, and also you look, and he's in the background. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rick, like Henry Wales in the, in the window. In the either house. picture, in either oh moment, this is a this is senior day. I know. This is a special day. Uh, what if they want to put and it this on their picture, desk? This yeah. picture is going to – would have probably – it may still, I don't know, end up on a wall or a desk or a bookshelf <laughs> <And there's> somewhere, <laughs> and there he is. <laughs> in the world. Oh, great. Great. I could get it if you were, like, far off and you're in the background. <laughs> you're in the picture. <laughs> like you're in the family. Well, see, I can't back up. I'm against the net. See, I'm kind of cornered well, well, there a little you, bit. Well, was there, I mean, when they go take a picture, you can go, hey, let me get out of the way. Y'all get the picture. All right, now I'm back. Well, mm-hmm. it happened so quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so quick. Yeah. So quick. Uh, as a matter of fact, the second one may have happened first. That's probably – and in the in the next one, I probably had made an effort to try to get out of the way of it a little bit, but Rick, not good enough. Rick, the see. second one looks like, you know, when they take a picture of bands and have a face that a face <laughs> 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 it's the dad and there's Bubba. Hey, we're going to frame that senior day picture. Well, we would, but uh, Coach, uh, Coach Bubba's in it. He's got his big head right in the <laughs> Well, the good news is we did get some uh, later shots, too. So we I've probably, noticed that, you, that was as it happened. <laughs> <I've> noticed, <laughs> hey, leave it right there for a minute. I've noticed you've gone with the green yeah. glasses. Yeah, I, yeah, I haven't seen those. Yellow. Those, there, there you go. Are, are, are you on the same side of the net they are? I mean, yes. you are yeah. almost Time pressed out. against the family. Time out, Bubba. You yeah. think those are yellow, those glasses? The mm-hmm. rim is yellow. That's green. Mm. That's, that's green. That's, that's no, awesome. That picture may look green. The, there's there's flowers. Yeah. yeah, and the picture looks lime green. Do you see in the picture it looks lime green to you? Uh, looks a little more Buddy, yellow those than are lime green. Yeah, it, but there's, I thought she was just saying, though, they're probably yellow in yeah. person. She can hear him breathing down her neck. <laughs> <That's what laughs> the only thing I would say, Bubba, you see that flower? That's yellow. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's that Oregon yeah. color. And they What's also have green in the flowers, so you can look and say it, green and yellow in the flowers. Thirty-five minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba show, the Great Eight, the Elite Eight, all showing up here shortly uh, to spend some time with us here in the No Name Studio. They too will be on the bleeding edge of technology, uh, and they make their way to Sweet Home Alabama as we go out to the whole world via all kinds of platforms, including America's boldest radio stations on the Rick and Bubba Radio Network, our TuneIn app, our YouTube channel, our podcast archives. Uh, and also, Blaze TV uh, carries part of the Rick and Bubba show as well. Buyraycon.com slash Bubba. How do I get all this content? Well, go to rickandbubba.com. It's there. And you can listen to them uh, and, and love the quality of the sound on your Raycon earbuds. And people are raving. Why? Because it's the, it, it is the same audio quality brand 
that uh, that people are charging you an arm and a leg for. They look much better. They fit so much more secure, so much more comfortable, and they're about half the price. And then we get you an additional 15% off by you going to buyraycon.com slash Bubba, uh, and you can set uh, the sound profile based on what you're listening to, like you'd set a profile for listening to this. Hello, test one, two. Uh, you've got the Rick and Bubba show. Uh, then if you listen to certain kinds of music, go to a different profile. You can do noise isolation if you need to be you know, to yourself, or you can have the awareness mode. I need to know what's going on around me, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, you'll love them. 50,000 five-star reviews and many emails that come to us. So get yours now by going to buyraycon.com slash Bubba. That's buyraycon.com slash Bubba or rickandbubba.com under the sponsor. To the phones we go, a phone troll this time, meaning we can get a lot of you in here. 30 seconds will rule, uh, and at the end of 30 seconds, the buzzer will sound. Your time on the program will come to a close, and then we'll move uh, to the next caller. Let's start with Lawson out of Birmingham. He's listening to us on 104.7 WZZK. You can get in right now if you make your move. Lawson, welcome to Rick and Bubba. 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, guys. How's it going? We're good, man. Uh, y'all had, we're talking a little bit about Joe Biden this morning and Kamala Harris. You know, it's, as bad as Joe is, you know, if we can get rid of him through the impeachment process, we're left with Kamala Harris. So, mm-hmm. uh, it's does Kamala. It get better or does it, it get worse? Uh, I, I said this to you, and I'll say it to our sitting president. It's Kamala. Kamala Harris. Uh, we say it correctly. No, nobody's wanting Kamala. Biden to be taken out of office no, so no. that she'll Except be. Except for the Democrats. Uh, now they, I think they do now. I, I would look closely to who's stashing those documents right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You have to ask who has the most to gain. Oh, I know. Uh, if you want to join us, lines are available. The Real Greg Bird just taking those calls now at 866-WE-BE-BIG. Martin. Also out of Birmingham Martin. on 104.7 WZZK. Martin, go ahead. Martin? Marty. Marty? Uh, Man from Birmingham. Martin. Uh, Martin? Larry. Larry. <laughs> uh, Johnny Ray. Uh, okay. All right, now I can't see the topic, but yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't happen. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it, it's one we've kind of covered, so no big loss there. Uh, Victoria, <laughs> uh, welcome. 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hi, um, Jim. Green Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, that's not it. There it is. <laughs> button to button. Uh, all right, Victoria, go. Hi, I just want to say, um, I am really loving your Kamala Harris, uh, Pamela calling her Pamela is pretty pretty great. Um, I've been listening since I was uh, probably twelve, so and I'm thirty two. So it's wow. a long time. Thank you guys Thank you for your passion. Thank you for uh, telling about Christ and family friendly programming. Well, uh, <laughs> on most kind of on most days. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Yeah. That's very kind. You know, over 30 years, you'll have your moments. There's no doubt yeah, about it. True. Rachel in Tennessee. Rachel, go ahead. 30 seconds. How are you? Hey, you doing great, guys. I just want to call and tell you thank you so much for what you do, and thank you to the producers, especially today. Um, last week sometime there was a little bit of technical difficulties up here in Chattanooga area with our radio stations, and you guys went off the air for a minute. And so we got to listen to death announcements for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, that's... Glad uh, that got worked out. Yeah, that's... Well, that's where your bad music is crucial. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I'm just making a point. I mean, you want to find some way to... Right. You know, it's, that's a tough one. And... Um, what is, it is what is the uh, the the old joke? Once we get a certain age, where they say, "I got out and checked the obituaries, and I wasn't there, so I felt like it was a pretty good day." <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it becomes more important. It yeah, does. Uh, Sweet home Alabama. So yeah, we uh, there there's some there's some things brewing in uh, on the network too. We got some updates coming up, so be paying attention on that on the radio side. Chris, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to hear Bubba's opinion on them taking down the the rocket at the. Considered, uh, Alabama, Tennessee state line. Uh, we, yeah, we, we, we talked about it. that earlier this week. Yeah, I've, we I've decided I'd like to have it in my yard. Yeah, he wants it either in his yard, but a great idea I thought you had yeah. was move it to the hunting land and yeah. have the greatest shooting house ever. ever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could see the entire property. Oh, yeah. From that yeah. one. And yeah. just think, you know how it's sometimes hard to describe to somebody where to go to their shooting stand yeah, not or anymore. their shooting house. You just say, go down there, take a left. Go by the rocket, and it's right on the right. Absolutely. Yeah, because sometimes the, the instructions are pretty tough. Hey, you, I say there's going to be a tree. Now, it's fallen, 
step over the tree <laughs> yeah. and go to the second <laughs> sweet gum and take a left. <laughs> you know, you got some snake eyes now, so it's dark, but you'll be able to find it. But with the <laughs> rocket, hey. You'd know right where you to go, go. You go to the rocket, hang a right, and there it is. That, what a terrible feeling back in the day when I would, would hunt other people's places because you know, mm-hmm. we didn't have a choice, and it was so kind of them to invite us. I've wandered around in the woods so many times. <laughs> oh, really? You know, because they, tell, they, they told me, hey, you can't miss it. And you know what I would say? Apparently, you can. <laughs> yeah, uh, you uh, can. Hey, I've stood around <laughs> yeah, many a uh, time. Uh, so. Apparently, <laughs> uh, apparently you, you actually can. Uh, let's go to um, – uh, Michael in Alabama. Michael, 30 seconds. Go ahead. Morning, fellas. Hey. Hey, hey uh, so it's, Mar- it's Michael, not Martin, but what I want to talk about is I have a buddy in the movie industry, and he was telling me that there's basically three types of ammo, blank, which you obviously can you know, distinguish, but he said dummy rounds have sand in them instead of ammo, and he said you can't really tell the difference between the two, and if a live round gets into a, a, a group of dummy rounds, he said throw it away because you can't yeah that's what we were saying i i, I just kind of go back to the common sense uh if i'm pretending to shoot because my movie needs it i'm not gonna have live rounds on the set period. yeah why period. why even get it in there period. You, you would think that the blanks were colored different too yeah. i mean you know, but why are live rounds why are they even yeah. here yeah. we don't need the crew to be able to target shoot okay there's no need for that you know what you say ah it's too dangerous uh, let's go to Randy in Huntsville, one hundred point three. Randy, River. Randy, we ain't got no, no bad, Randy. <laughs> go ahead, Randy. Vegas, how are y'all? We're good. good. Hey, you may have mentioned it already earlier this week. Uh, you gotta love the beast. They said they found another batch of Biden's top secret documents during his colonoscopy. <laughs> you know, I saw the picture saw of that. that one, did you see it? I did. They're looking at the screen, and you see a top secret. So oh, good. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's good. Uh, who you are. Let's That's go good. to Jason. Jason, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Thirty seconds. Go ahead. What's going on, guys? You? I'm surprised. Um, El- Eller didn't say them power lines are made for the monkeys to swing on. All right. Eric in Alabama. Eric, thirty seconds. Go ahead. Hey, Bubba, Alabama, uh, Wyoming's going to be um, banning electric cars by 2035. They're trying mm-hmm. to pass a bill to do that. Yeah, we, so we talked about that. Yeah, we did cars. that story, too. Yeah, we did that story early in the week. But, uh, yeah, one, and that, one, that was a, in, in response to, say, California, who is banning combustion. Right. engines by right. 2035 yeah. they thought they'd turn it around on sure. well the the thing that was so eye-opening of the, about the wyoming story is we brought it up it, it's saying there are there are a lot of states in this union that this childlike view of transitioning to electric cars it will not work they're not it, 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 it there's no way for it to be implemented uh, and it plays a part mm, and yeah. supplemental, and, yeah. And a lot of people, it should be a consumer choice. And you just, it's, we just don't have the electrical infrastructure. Uh, as as I'm sure that uh, Kamala could uh, tell us that uh, to handle all that right now. Yeah. Nick in Birmingham. Nick, go ahead. Thirty seconds. Hey, good morning, fellas. How you doing? Good. Hey, I just wanted to let you guys know I moved here. Uh, when I was in second grade in 1996, and my parents started listening to you guys on the radio, and I've been listening to you guys ever since, and I've now got three kids of my own who all listen as well. So we're three generations in. Well, that's what you guys what you do. Well, Nick, wow. see, that's what we got to have. Are you getting listener of the week? I mean, that, I mean, that, that's what we got to have. I mean, that's somebody that that is sticking with the show, passing on to his children, mm-hmm. ensuring us another generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Bobby in Anniston, Alabama. Go ahead, Bobby. Uh, that, that, yes. Um, so, uh, Mila, when you brought that speech about, you know, we're, we're here to help you, you know, Ronald Reagan brought up in his speech years ago that the scariest words in the English language is we're from the government and we're here to help. <laughs> yeah, I very, that, he said it much clearer than you were able to do on that phone. But right. I, I will tell right. you, yeah, that, that, Pull that, the strings, that sir. was a great one. Bailey in Alabama. Bailey, go ahead. Yes, sir. I'll be real quick. So uh, football season's over, but the Troy Trojans are the best team in Alabama. And I'll stand by that. Uh, we beat Auburn Tigers by at least 14 points. And uh, you can take that to the bank. That's all I got. 
So are you going to beat Alabama too? Because wow. to beat the be the best team, Troy would have to hey, also they, also beat Alabama. They they won't schedule us. I think they might be a tad scared. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> oh my. Look, that I'm love glad. Look, I love your confidence. Love your team, and y'all did have a great season. Great season. Yeah. Great season. I played a little ball for T. Roy back in the day, so I, I bring I, it. I certainly love uh, seeing them do well. A little bit of a step out, and I could tell you, you, you were doing that. You had a little yeah. tongue in cheek there, and that was nice. I like that. Borderline delusional. Yes. But, yes. But. I love the confidence. Love the enthusiasm. Oh, that's a great that, that, season. That's Crazy a, as it may be. That's a true fan right yeah. there. Rick we'll be back. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. But those gr- glasses are green. They're, they're sa- yeah. Seattle Seahawks green. Have you been wearing glasses yeah, this yeah. whole time that you thought were yellow? Because yeah, yeah, they are yellow. They're the color of that flag. I mean, I, I know the glasses. It's not a, it's not an issue. But you would agree in that picture they look Seattle Seahawks. They, they don't green. look green to me in that picture. In the picture? No, they don't. Okay. They look yellow. Which I, tells me, yellow, which green. tells me, guys, they are green. Bubba, they look lemon lime to me. Bubba, I they, want you to they know look, this. They look Michigan yellow. Bubba, I, <laughs> oh my gosh, maze, it's not maze. <laughs> Bubba, let me say this to you. Here, here's where I found myself in a, in a weird place. I was ready to tell everybody in the room the picture just makes them appear to be green because of the shadow of your visor. <laughs> but if you were there, you would see they were yellow until you said that they look yellow to you in the yeah, picture. Yeah, uh, look, I'm, I may not be seeing them in the right color. Right, right. Yeah. I was all I, in I to don't defend see the yellowness of them. That, you then, know, the, the green the green part of the spectrum is what I am colorblind okay. in, so I can't see I want you to know, I was on the yellow train. Yeah. Right, right the up yellow the, train. Right, <laughs> you know, when you were like, well, yeah, now there they do look uh, kind of a Seattle Seahawk lime green, but it, that's just the picture doing that. I was all in for that. Yeah. Well, let's call that family and ask them. They got a real close. <laughs> All right, in your senior picture, is that great? Yeah. <laughs> but in, in a, in here, a here odd twist, both scene. both girls did play on the junior high team when I was coaching there too. So well, it's a good thing yeah. you're in the picture. Yeah, right. yeah, they've been been great for the great for the program. <laughs> it's I, like I, he's in the moment. background, but he's real close. You know yeah. what? I'll, <laughs> I love, I love how you go. Lovely moment. <laughs> Lovely <laughs> moment. I, I <laughs> shared it with the probably family. one of the better Greg, moments Greg, ever. Greg, you won't, you won't, you won't. <laughs> see, I, I even like the idea since you have been coaching so long for you to actually be in the picture. Well, I like, we I like took both. some. This, this like, was all as it happened, you know, right, just yeah. as they called it I out. It was, it was very <laughs> candid, you know. It was an action shot. So we had some pose shots. Later. I got it. Well, but, you know but, what? But when it's just frozen, though, you see. Yeah. Yeah. Greg, let me say this. You know, I don't know if you know this. You know what it says also in Comey's book. He once met Bill Bubba Bussy, and you know he said honestly, in person, his head wasn't that big. It wasn't as big as I thought it would be. You didn't have a big old knot. No. Well, look, when that head comes into a picture, it's going to have a presence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. Can't do nothing with that. <laughs> yeah, especially it's with the way it is, that and, the, you know, no green. Yeah, I know, especially with the yellow, the yellow glasses on. Mm-hmm. Well, he is the face, Rick. So he's in the picture. He's well, the face of ten. You really should have been in every picture. He probably is. Yeah. If we had all the well, wait, 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 wait a minute. Based on what I just saw. Let well, the other, back. You, the other you senior, are, I am <laughs> hugging her. I said she's my daughter. So you, well, oh, you're actually in that. Oh, y'all only had three? Yeah. Okay, yeah. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Then it is official. You're in all senior pictures. Yeah. Yep. One post, others. I just can't move to my right because somebody's in my way. Yep. Trapped in one. Couldn't get away. When we come back, uh, people have been telling me about the Marlins and their attendance, and I thought everybody was exaggerating, but the guys are telling me that uh, this is all true. We'll talk about it when we come Rick back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Good story. When you told me that more people are going to see the Marlins minor league team play than the major league baseball team, I thought you guys were exaggerating. Rick, I mean, how bad is this with the season just getting underway? The Marlins, who lost to the Mets at their home park, 4-1, to one, only drew 6,150 fans for the Wednesday night game in 75-degree weather. Oddly enough, the team's double-A minor league affiliate, the Jacksonville Suns, held its home opener the same night and drew 6,960 fans in slightly cooler temperatures. Which would be considered, for a minor league team, a good crowd. But for a major league team, that's really bad. The Mm -hmm. AA team on the same night playing at home drew over 800 fans more than the big team, the major league team. What's the beef with the Marlins? There's so many factors involved with this. And and before I get into the why – we have proven that baseball works in Miami. 
They've won two World Series, I think, 97 yeah, and yeah. 02 or 03. They, yeah. They've won. They know how to get it done in packed stadiums. Now, they do have a small ballpark that they built, and that's part – a what? A small ballpark that they've built, and that's not the problem. They, <laughs> that, the problem is getting people to show up, and it's because they built this ballpark. Basically, Miami has boycotted this new stadium since day one yeah. because of the way they funded it on, on the backs of taxpayers. And they have – so basically, you have that. That's a factor. So the people didn't want the stadium. They felt like no, it was forced on No, they were – yes, big mm-hmm. time. And then – Uh, we're back. Eight minutes to the top of the hour of the Rick and Bubba Show. 866, we be big. And uh, thank you for your phone calls. We'll continue to move through. Don't forget, another Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, coming out uh, this, uh, this weekend. So just uh, make a note of that. Grab that wherever you get uh, podcasts. So um, I-, I know that uh, we-, we have other things to, to look at today. Um, but is is this one funny uh, on the dad and the woke daughter? It's just two different opinions. You have a right. very young, mm-hmm. it looks like college age woke mm-hmm. daughter, mm-hmm. and her her dad is standing right beside her, mm-hmm. and it's almost <laughs> like a man on the streets. It looks like somebody's asking them questions mm-hmm. about you know the Second Amendment and stuff like that, and the the opinions couldn't be further apart. You have a woke answer, and okay. then you have a reality answer from Dad. <laughs> well, so I, I'm kind of interested in that. That's okay. a maybe. But, right. but, Bubba, these World Economic Forum updates continue oh, to own me. It's and we got two of those today. I find myself kind of drifting there. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so let's go to the World Economic Forum. <laughs> uh, we have a Saudi Arabian diplomat, Ahmad al Jabir, I'm not sure how to say Jabir. his last name. Yeah, I like and Bubba, that. he is talking about his vision of the future. And then we'll go to a Jim. Is it Hageman? Hageman? Hageman, or, maybe? Or, or, I thought you were going to say Hageman. the crazy sound man. Yeah, but crazy look, sound that's man. funny. Uh, so here's, here's more. Now, remember, these are the global elitists that have all gathered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as uh, John Kerry told us, they're, they're the chosen yeah, to right. save the planet. It. To right. say is it is the Hall of Justice, uh, it is the Avengers. They have been chosen, You've been chosen to right. save the planet. And here is another uh, soundbite from the World Economic Forum, which remember could have been a Zoom meeting or a conference call, but they all flew there. So here we go. Virtually no traffic. You can go to different places very efficiently without. Uh, using cars. There are no cars. Not um, one single car? It's uh, it's going to be different types of transportation that are, uh, like I said, environmentally friendly. They will be, uh, it's based on renewable energy. It- speak right, up. So, First of all, speak up. Yeah, he's a low talker, what which low saying? talkers normally don't get our attention. Let's mm-hmm. just be honest. He is saying, Bubba, he, the future that they want, the global elitists that are meeting that didn't do it on Zoom, they didn't do it on conference call, they all flew there. He and they're driving around there while they're there. He said the future will have no cars. Now, notice he said it'll be replaced <clears throat> by something wonderful. Uh, he used a word. Rick, now, we now hear again, this now, all the time. Remember, they always, so. now that's just yeah. grabbing out of the sky. What is this thing yeah. that will yeah. be environmentally friendly? That was the word he used. What is, what is this mode of transportation? Because Bubba's already shot holes all through battery cars being somehow some wonderful green product because they still require fossil fuels and battery Every, disposal. Everything's got a right. footprint. And, and let's don't even talk about the grid. 
Okay, so the so I, I, you remember this is when Elizabeth Warren was the, it was one that, yeah. that we heard that she said one we're going to come up with something we don't know what it is mm-hmm. that's going to replace fossil fuels and coal and all this that requires mining we don't know what it is it'll be something and Americans will make it so mm-hmm. that we'll keep the jobs right so this is a, he he just said no cars and then she says and it'll be replaced by what a mode of transportation. That's environmentally friendly. Now he doesn't know what that is, and he's not defined what that is. We all got jetpacks. Yeah, I, I, what, what I, are we doing? I, are we walking? And Greg, then, what if you went home on a jetpack yeah. every day? These people. I, I, you, know, you, know, a run. you know what I'd like to see in the future? We we'll replace overeducated, pointed head goofballs. Right. Oh. I'd like to replace them. If he can't talk no louder than that, he mm. don't deserve to have yeah, a microphone yeah. or a platform. <laughs> you're yeah. not going to get much of a crowd rallying behind a low talker. All right, oh, we goodness. continue from the wonderful World Economic Forum. Oh. Now we're going to hear from Jim Hageman, I think, or something like that, mm-hmm. Snabe, whatever his name is. Uh, but anyway, he's going to tell us, Bubba, Look also we need a billion people to stop eating meat. So oh, here, we, here, we, here, here we go. Food for all 8 billion people in this world. So it's a very important point that you are addressing. Um, low talker. My daughter, 24, inspired me and said, Dad, how can you advocate for these zero carbon value chains if you still eat meat? Oh, my goodness. And so I stopped eating meat. <laughs> now the math would say, well, you need to stop eating meat uh, 11 years to compensate for a flight to Thailand. Yeah. Yes. But if a billion people stop eating meat, I tell you it has a big impact. Well, it's not going to happen. Not only does it have a big impact on the current food system, but it will also inspire innovation mm-hmm. of food systems. Apparently it makes you a moron. Yeah. <laughs> He, <laughs> if you think for one minute he's not eating a hamburger at times. Well, Greg, here's I what I love. It. It's like he knew what Bubba or and I or somebody here was going to say. I acknowledge that I'd have to stop eating meat for 11 years to pay for this flight to Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> he says, but what I need is a billion people to join me. Yeah, 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 I, yeah sure. So from, hit, from sure. this Look, here's appearance, the, he's going to convert a billion people to quit eating meat. Rick, let me tell you how That's arrogant. How about just not fly to Thailand? How arrogant all this is. If you don't want to eat meat, sir, don't eat meat. Right. No, I'm not forcing you to, and nah. I'm not forcing you not to but don't try to tell me what to do there you go the whole area they love of this bunch they, they love it they, i mean you're talking about a bunch that is up their own butt so far they can't see the sunshine oh yeah, i mean good night can we have the performance i got yes. one minute and it's only 52 yeah, seconds guys yeah. y'all L- listen to this bro. acoustic performance about saving the red corals here yeah. we go <laughs> <laughs> Is that AOC? I don't. Is it me or there's no words? I can do that, y'all. These are the people. These are the people that are going to save the planet. Who is it? Bobby McFerrin? (laughs) He's great. Greg, Greg, listen. Y'all not paying attention. There you go. It's bringing the plight of the Red Sea corals. Well, what a party! What a party hey, they're having! Hey, these people are crazy. They're crazy. How miserable would it be to be there? I guess they just couldn't book the stones. I, I can't. No, guys. How can anybody take this serious? <laughs> Where was their PR team? Where was the PR team said, now look, guys, if we want to be taken serious, some of this has got to go. Yeah. The red, the red coral people are out. Right. Uh, the, the, the guy about eating meat, he's out. Yeah. No car guy's out. Rick, here, Maniacal here's, gore has got to calm down. If I'm in charge of this and this bunch is already booked, I go, no cameras. No cameras. Yeah, no, we, got this. Keep Not, this here. we can't video. Right. This is for our audience only. <laughs> Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. There was even a thing very similar to that hard knocks on that you do NFL where they go behind the scenes mm. with the Florida Marlins back when Ozzie Guillen was the manager. And you really can't watch it without – I mean, he's a handle. Goodness gracious. But it really showed you the dynamic there of the fans, the stadium being built, those type things that nobody really wanted. Every year they do this big sell-off where they get rid of their better players and they try to start something new, which that frustrates fans. I think the biggest thing this year is this. 
Derek Jeter is in on the bye, right? Well, where did he come from? New York. New York. They're questioning his loyalty because what did he do? What was his first move when he got there? That I don't know. He gave away the best player that they had and a marquee guy in Giancarlo Stanton. Well, that's not bad enough, but you know where he went? Not the Yankees. He sold him to the Yankees. Hmm. So I think that is the big beef now when you take that on top of the stadium and that boycott. This is all just festered and became a perfect storm. I well, thought they, everybody loved Derek Jeter. <coughs> well, the well, Yankee fans do, <laughs> especially when they got him that new player. Well, yeah. how about this? They're, the park holds 36,742. It is so. the smallest park in baseball, I believe. There may be one smaller, but I believe it is the smallest. But they say the atmosphere is awesome there. They say as far as the game you experience You don't mind being there by great. yourself. But, yeah, that's, that's a – It's like the Braves when we were growing up. Yeah, I know. Fulton you, County Stadium. You could walk up and get seats right behind home plate. You I might even pitch. In I, the really don't know, I really don't know how you turn this into a good thing with, with so many people with that boycott of actually going to the games. Yeah, to me, the, the, and you're right, it has proven, but the Marlins, the, they, they're doing everything you can't do if you're the Marlins, everything. Because you go, all right, if you win, people come. All right, we won. And then you sell all the players. Right. You, you don't You don't have that guy that everybody says, oh, I got his jersey, man. He's our hoss. We've won two yeah. World Series. And well, you've got new of- owners, though, now. So it's, it's a and different And didn't they let mindset. a bunch of celebrities be part owners, too? Or was that the – The Dolphins, the, wasn't it? Was that no, – right. it was yeah, some Miami right. team, yeah. was it? One time Gloria Stefan was in there. <laughs> I mean, it, it's yeah, – yeah. Serena Williams. Yeah. And all it's all so anyway, uh, also in sports, with our little sports update here, we don't know what league Johnny Manziel is playing in. I mean, I've got an update because we've got a spring league that's supposed to start next spring and then another one the spring after that, the AA something next spring, and then the spring after that, the XFL is supposed to be back. We know Manziel's got some opportunities in, in that spring league that's coming out next spring. And then somebody sends a, a picture, I mean, a, a story of Manziel running for two TDs in his second spring league game. What league is he playing? I, well, I can tell you. It's called the Spring League. It, spring League is actually what it's called. It's yeah. a developmental league with a two-game season, listen to this, that provides opportunities for players who pay a fee to actually be there, hoping to showcase their play for a chance to land on an NFL roster. And also there are CFL teams there, too, recruiting. But you got to pay to be there. All the guys you see on the field paid a fee to uh, to play in these two games. Has anybody ever heard of this in your entire life? I have life? not. I have not. The Spring League, the TSL. Has mm-hmm. anybody ever heard of it? No. This isn't the one Patty Labelle created, is it? <laughs> no, I don't know. But he's he's <laughs> digging. Yeah. He's digging in this or whatever it is. Right. And like you say, he'll you know he'll probably end up in Canada. Do y'all realize how well he would do in Canada if he just keep his act together and go for him? Be, well, the, be, say, be the I, next Flutie. Look, I know he's been impossible. He's brought a lot of this on himself. But I I enjoyed watching him play. I wish he was on the field somewhere. And we never got a chance to see if his game would actually work in the NFL because he was too busy being suspended. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like that you go, well, yeah, his game just didn't work out. We really never had a chance to see if it would. No, we didn't. And uh, he's getting out of trouble pretty good here, but his team lost 34-17, by the way. I think he did throw a pick, but, I mean, he still had some good numbers. But he will play. I mean, he's he's got till May 15th, May 16th to make a decision on the CFL team. I don't know whether they call the Tiger or something, Tiger Cats. Tiger Cats. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I know about and that. And if no one picks him up – Prior to that in the NFL, this is where he'll land, and 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 he needs to go play because I don't I don't know that he can get a job in football doing anything else because he's kind of burned a lot of bridges other than playing. Right. Speaking of burn bridges, Seattle Seahawks uh, postpone Colin Kaepernick's visit after the quarterback declined to say that he would stop kneeling. That's so, on Kaepernick. So back, I go back, I, I go back to this yeah. again. You're not good enough to demand things. For a team to take you, warts and all. I'm just sorry. Yeah, you 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 yeah, you, you, you haven't gotten to that place. Again, we name a lot of kneelers that are going st- that, are, that are already doing about to do spring workouts for the team they're still with, yeah. because because they're really good. Look, he he's just going to have to learn free market. I mean, he's just he's just off the page on that. So.
from the No Name Studio. On the bleeding edge of technology, a brand new hour underway. Thanks for being here with us. Yeah, I know I'm not the only one. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here for a brand new hour. And a welcome back for a brand new hour. Put your hands together for Bill Bubba Bussy. Rick, thank you, and what an honor and privilege it is to be here, and thank all of you for allowing yep. us to do there what we do. There they are, Bubba, the Elite Eight. There they are, the Great They're Eight. They're in the house. The Great Eight, they are here, and they are from all over. This this group right here, I saw an interesting interaction there. Oh, yeah. um, uh, to, uh, you know, looking stage left, uh, their right is a newly married couple. Look, how, see how they're all snuggled oh, up? Yeah. Uh, looking uh, <laughs> stage left at them, and then look stage right, been married a while. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and to watch this because uh, they were just ecstatic about their new little marriage and all that. And then I looked over at the other side. Are y'all married? And instead of brightening up, I said yes. They went yeah. <laughs> Been yep. at it a while. And I just told them to look right there. There's 20 years right there right ahead. There. Look at them all <laughs> so, snuggled up. So anyway, so uh, it, uh, great to have all of you here today. Um, just just one more look. Hope back. y'all make it through the show today. Yeah. <laughs> just just looking back, especially this next topic. And um, in a minute, we'll have uh, these two parents here regretting bringing their children. Right. Uh, right. Because right. of the world that we live in, it, yeah. we're just reporting, and we'll we'll be as kind as we can be. But it's it's a, it is a messed up world out there and i'm sure your family knows this anyway sir but but though so looking back and you're going to see the yes i can't believe what i just saw or continue to see from the world economic form i really can't believe it (laughs) and that's somehow somehow i was like you know until she started like sounding like a chirping bird i didn't care about the red coral reefs (laughs) and and now i do they do they really think they're making a difference (laughs) they they, they own it and and i would say you know like we all say this uh, bub and i've been trying to teach this lost art to our society for years now the inability to cull the the nuts in your group Mm. you have to go to your group and say we got to call these people they make (laughs) us look like we're all crazy yeah and and so i haven't seen anybody yet and i haven't seen every speech from the World Economic Forum, John Kerry says I should look to them because they've had a supernatural prompting and they've been chosen by whatever force that he thinks is out there to save our planet. And after seeing them talk, I'm yet to see one person, Al Gore and John Kerry included, that I don't think is crazy. Yeah, I mean, right. the, 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 Al Gore the, may the, be the leader right. of the pack, yeah. Rick. Yeah, it's I a mean. crazy fest. For so, sure. so as we move on that topic, we look back inside our country. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll handle this with kid gloves. Uh, mm. We are living in a Take society a hey. th- that explains a lot. Because we can't even, we've lost the basic ability to to discern the difference between a male and female. We have no clue. And, and now anybody can decide to be whatever gender they want to be. Uh, there was a time in our history where we saw this as something that needed compassion because it was a sign of mental illness uh, and uh, gender dysphoria. Now... Not you don't even have to really struggle with that, which is a real thing, and there mm-hmm. should, we should be sh- compassionate about that. Now, just anybody who wants to, for any reason, can just declare that they would rather be a gender other than their biological gender. And, and again, we've said now, if that's something that you want to do in your own private life, okay. I mean, it, that that's your business as long as you're not harming anyone. But that's not what we have. Uh, I, I saw someone uh, putting something out about this. You know, we've left the we agree to disagree, but we mean you no harm. Yeah, that's long now, ago. Now it is you will condone me. You will celebrate my decisions. You, you will, will endorse me. You'll endorse and you'll adapt everything around. And if you don't, you're an evil, wicked person, just like the idiot I saw talking about the NHL, NHL oh, player. Oh, yeah. What an idiot. Yeah. You talk about somebody that doesn't understand the topic, and he's he's just trying to fit in. Oh, yeah, he's he just is. trying to fit it's in yeah. with, 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 the, with the wokeness. He couldn't understand how someone would have religious convictions 
and tell the National Hockey League I can't go out with a rainbow-colored hockey stick and go out and, and, uh, and celebrate the inclusion of the LGBT community. If we want to do a promotion that hockey's for everyone, let's just say that. But y'all aren't saying that. That's where this this guy that was getting on him, he didn't understand. You didn't say, let's just do something saying everybody come to hockey games. They certainly can. Great. Mm -hmm. You're making me take a specific group and endorse and condone them, and my religious convictions will not allow that, so your ask of me is over the line. Mm -hmm. now, that used to be pretty easy to understand. And then what we say, we pick and choose. What do we say, like, like in the hockey? No, their convictions – and their preferences supersede yours. You cannot be devoted to your convictions, only they can. Right? Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah. So anyway, we have a man that first of all is a biological man. He wants to be portray he wants to portray himself as a woman. And this is a, a women's gym. You know, sometimes women, which I think is wise, these these gyms that say, here's a place where women can come and work out and not have to worry about men in here being inappropriate. Women wear certain clothing to work out. We would rather just be with other women. We don't really want to be in a co-ed situation. Sure, that, that should be an option available to people. Well, no, no. He's got to come in there and be part of the women's gym and uh, and 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 here it is. Not only does does he want to be portrayed as a woman and be in the women's only gym, he wants to use their restrooms. He wants to use their dressing areas. See, it's never enough. It's always an overplay. So, does anybody think this is a woman here? Mm. Huh? Here, here we go. Bubba, Twenty-eight year old Bridget Klein Simpson has identified as a woman for years, and she mm. wants to get into better shape. So she went to the Body Works gym for women in Parksville for a membership. Klein Simpson says she was initially welcomed, but after one workout, she was informed she was not allowed at the women's only gym. Saying, sorry, we made a mistake. You're not actually allowed to be here, but uh -huh. you're more than welcome to use the co-ed facility. And uh, I kind of just hung up because uh, I was, I mean, I was extreme, ext devastated. I mean, there's really devastated. no other word for it. Devastated. Look. By the way, that's every sound man for every rock band on the road. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're right, Rick. That's Zach Probus. Yeah, that's exactly. That's Zach Probus. We had him with our band. Yeah. He looked just like that. Okay, and, and talked like that. Look, here, I tell you what. here's the other thing. See, listen to what he oh said. Listen to what he admitted. I'm free to use the co-ed gym. Right. Yeah. So do use it. Then use it. If that's really, not enough. If you're that's really worried for... about your health, it wouldn't matter whether you're in a co-ed gym or not. If no, you're, he if wants the, to make a, he wanted if to be the health, away. If yeah. the health and losing weight is the goal, that's not the goal. The goal is I've got to become some kind of activist, and I've got to over-ask things that are not reasonable. He wanted to be turned away. They're, it's not reason. reasonable. You don't know, Greg. If you think that's weird... <laughs> Hey, workout, she was informed she was not allowed you. at the woman's home. Oh, we get to hear him again? Time. Okay, good. Saying, sorry, we made a mistake. You're not actually allowed to be here, but you're more There's than welcome. There's not one person who walked She's the co-ed facility, and uh, I kind of just hung up because mm -hmm. uh, I was, I mean, I was extreme, ext devastated. Does anybody I mean, really think he's devastated? All he wants to be is patted on the back mm -hmm. by the LGBTQ trans, whatever letter, T, he wants to be patted on the back by the movement and say, good job. That was his way, goal when he went in there. Make trouble. He, he's not devastated. First of all, he's, he's not, not going. He's not going to stick to the workout. He's not <laughs> devastated. I bet well, he won't. You think that? Right? Yeah, he's not going to stick. I to bet work he out. won't work out two days in a uh, row. How you like my flannel I mean, shirt? Yeah, yeah. So right, we come back. Good. We're going to have to break and come back on this one, Adam. Right, we'll break and come back. If you think. That's weird. Uh, yeah, and, and if you think this society is not completely gone, again, Bachman over uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive said it, Bubba. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing nah, yet. Nah, nah. We, we the confusion and and what gets me? It's a fake world. I don't think any of this is sincere. I don't think any of it is. I think it's a bunch of children playing pretend. Won't and, and, and none of this because it's so basic. They ain't got no yeah. real. It's problem. so basic. Devastated? Uh, we'll be back. More Rick and Bubba coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Here. What was the question? Let's back up right. here a minute. <laughs> so what was the question? If you could lose 20 pounds eating right. Mexican food, would you consider it? If you, if you lost it, not the way you'd fear to lose it. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> um, I, I'm leery of all of these single restaurant diets now because I think they're I think they're kind of a scam they're just a marketing ploy mm -hmm. you know hey I can lose because every 
everybody wants to lose some kind of weight. I mean, that's just almost across the board, right? So, oh yeah, except for if bones. You, if you, yeah, if yeah. you eat here at whatever, I lost so much pound, and this is all I ate, or I did it. You know, maybe the first one was true, was real, but I think now, a look lot what of, happened to look, Jared. Look Greg, what it, yeah, look what it did to Jared. Yeah, Greg's made me paranoid oh, now that all of these are like copycats, but they're just clever marketing schemes. Oh, that's all. That well, was. Chipotle is going to now weigh in. Right. This guy claims that he lost twenty pounds only eating there. Mm-hmm. Hey, Rick, he saw how Jared before it went bad. Right. Jared was a wealthy man. Over this deal, he's just trying to pull that minus the underage stuff. Well, this is what this is what makes me mad. Listen, thank you, Greg. This is what makes me mad. This, and this happens. It did happen the other day. When we we did the stupid ice cream thing, and this is the key to it all. When it says this, yeah, remember we did the ice cream diet the other day. We talked about. Oh that yeah, the ice cream diet. This man says, you mean, Greg, Greg, you mean the twelve fifty and the dose of ice cream every day? Yeah, but listen, listen. Not only did this man chronicle what he ate at Chipotle. Yeah. He also chronicled how he worked out. Well, see, there you go. Well, well maybe, see, yeah. maybe the workout. Well, see, Tubbs ain't going to hear that part of the story. Oh. Tubbs is going to go to Chipotle every day. Yeah, look, <laughs> you talking about Bubba? Yeah. No, just Tubbs in general. Great, great. Not Bubba. No, the, the, I've seen the Tubbs mentality because yeah. I, I, I'm from the Tubbs community. I know exactly how we work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And we think there is some That's way exactly. that we're going to lose weight by eating whatever we want and never exercising. And I don't. And, and yeah. I keep looking for that one magic bullet. <laughs> yeah, but today I had a salad. <laughs> Rick, Rick, cheat day. Greg, Greg, I had, Greg, I had a salad today at Chipotle. It had fried chicken on it. It was it had cheese galore and Thousand Island dressing, and I ain't losing any weight. <laughs> Rick, and my banana pudding had bananas in it. What have you had today? Well, today's my cheat day. If you notice, every day's a cheat day. Oh, look. Uh, if you, you really, if you look into the calorie count on some salads, you, you're, you're better oh, just go have a hamburger. No, oh, yeah. oh, you're, no, all, you're all over I that. like a good salad with a bunch of that junk on it. Ham. You know what? Bacon. They, yeah. Yeah. Cheese. Yeah. Dressing. Is there nothing? Come on. No, let me tell you this. Crouton. But, but, but how about this? Yes. Yes. But it, Bacon like, bits. Yeah. Hey, but it ought to make us Son. angry because I hope none of you. Okra. Just, I hope none of you in this room are saying this. I hope none of you are saying this. Oh, Eggs. Goodness, That's the go. reason why you have to realize nothing breaks your heart more to know that you actually chose a stupid salad. And you realize that when you look at the calorie count, you could have had something ten times better. Yeah. And and well, and, my and, salads are so good. I don't really think of them as a salad. I don't care how you dress a salad up; it ain't better than what else I could have. I no. will say I, I mean, have it, fallen it, victim it, to that before. After after I've eaten it, I've gone. Time out. Dang, I think a out. lot of people are doing it just for the mindset of staying on track with what they're doing. Which time was out. my original point. Yeah. Time out. I'm not talking about just a salad. I'm talking about it's just part of the meal. You you get the salad and then you get a steak. With it. Oh well, that's, that's what I'm talking. That's oh, good. Oh okay. Yeah, then I like salad. Right, you talking about when salad's a warm up band? Yes, <laughs> no, I love yeah. that. Yes, I mean, if you got good, he's gonna play a little forty five minute set. <laughs> hey Greg, <laughs> yeah. hey Greg, I'm waiting on Bon Jovi, but I'll enjoy cheap trick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what about a loaded potato? Raise your hand. Uh, uh, I can like thumbs down. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Don't Taters like are bad for your uh, back. I like them. What? No, for your don't, back? Don't be a tater hater. What did you just say? <laughs> for your back. I had a, therap- I had a physical a therapist back. tell me that. Yep. You, you know what I mean? Don't go don't back. Don't be a tater hater. <laughs> serious, <laughs> serious business. Greg, what Greg said. Don't go and back. When I said this to Amanda, serious business, she, oh, they said that's that. that's crazy. Can I tell you what else I don't bad, like? It's bad for, I don't know, something. Listen, you know, More potatoes, less quacks. You know what else I don't like? And I get trapped I in this position all the time because I know it's a relatively loved side item. So does Dr. You know what I don't like? I can't stand a twice baked potato. See, I love those. I hate those. I, I hate just them. don't get a match. And I've had to, I've oh, had, I love them. I've had to muscle through them because meals. somebody made a fuss over it and gave me one, and they're all excited, so I can't make them feel bad. But when I see a twice baked potato come, I'm going, oh, God. So we called them to potato boats growing up when my mom made them. Oh, there we go. I tell you that, what those I like, are potato though. skins you're talking about. No, she, you take you scoop it out, and then you do all this yeah, to the potato, and then put, and put it back in there and put cheese and, and stuff. And bake it again. Mm, yeah. I just don't like a twice baked potato. Tell you what I do like. Good. What's the one in the cheese? I don't like that's why scallop I don't like, potatoes or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't like <laughs> stuff, stuffed potatoes. Just give me a baked potato for my potato. I don't like all that stuff. I don't like all that. And plus, you know what, what else? about those potatoes that are about as big as your plate? But listen, though, Speedy, here's those the problem again. So now, now, you you back, now you're back yeah. to big looks salad. Like a, looks like a football they split over. But now barbecue. you're you're just yeah. using a potato for a bowl. Thank you. Yeah, you basically. are. You're but, right. But you're also now you're back to big. It. Now you're back to big salad. There's yeah. no big potato presentation. It's better than what I could have had that has less calories than this. No, I'm, it's not gonna be waste, hard. I'm not going to yeah. waste calories on a big potato. Yeah, I'm not going to waste calories on a salad. Do y'all eat the skin I mean, after huh? you eat a baked potato? Yeah. Well, it depends. Uh, I feel like it's dirty. De- depends what kind it is, and was it washed ahead of time? Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. 21 minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show. Rick and Bubba, Rick and We're back. All right, so we'll finish up the absurdity, and then we'll get into... 
Well, I mean, honestly, some of these things kind of spawn a little bit of fun when you're just looking at how bizarre it is. So this is the new thing where we're also continuing down this road of, of not understanding um, that gender comes from chromosomes uh, and it's biological. Now, remember, most of the people that, that, that get on board with this declare whatever you want to be is so strange and we saw this happen, I believe it was that college in Oregon or Utah, I can't remember which one, that even when a scientist tells them, now remember, <laughs> it's funny sometimes how things get thrown into certain groups that, that make it kind of clunky, as we use that word a lot. These are the follow the science people usually. Yeah. Now don't give us all that Bible stuff, follow the science. <laughs> it comes to the vaccine, follow the science. <laughs> and then everybody goes, science says there's only two genders. Well, science is bad. Yeah. Down with science. Do you have to cross your eyes when you talk like yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most people yeah, do. Yeah. It makes them so, cross. So, yeah. you, so you can't really, you, there's no consistency here. No. But now we're in this new thing that we, we, we're not just satisfied that there are biological males that want to live their life as women. We're not, we can't just be satisfied with that. We now have to find some way for them to get to do things that biologically they were not designed by however you think, however you think human beings were designed. They were not designed to do, and they just we just don't think that's fair. I I want to I want to be a, I want to be a woman. I don't think it's fair. And uh, I want products, and I want to have babies, and I want to nurse them. Well, y- you you really can't. I mean, no, you, you, no. It, that you you're not designed by whoever you thought designed you. Yeah. Or however you got here. Or just the random dumb yeah. luck of evolution. Right? Yeah. So listen to this ridiculous <laughs> comment. Here we go. There are non-binary people. There are trans men who, who lactate. There are those who go by he, him, different pronouns. It's just inclusive to everybody. It is not hurting cis women to say chest feeding, but it does hurt those who go by other pronouns to continue to say breastfeeding, especially if they have body dysmorphia. We, we got to go to chest Everybody feeding. Everybody confused. It has to be chest feeding. Chest feeding, feeding Greg. Chest feeding. I, I don't, I've had uh, you know five babies. Uh, if I'm <laughs> holding the baby and Sherry and I are there, and the baby's hungry, okay, mm. I could take the baby's face and smash it up against my chest all I want to. But it ain't gonna nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than the baby may not be able to breathe very well, I, yeah. I, I better watch yeah. out. You know, and, Bubba, and, your ch- and your hairy chest, my goodness, you could lose the baby. I mean, oh, completely. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Uh, right. So, yeah. like being in a forest, the yeah. chest, a bush <laughs> the chest can't, can't see in here. The chest <laughs> cannot nurse a baby. It, it can't. No. It can't see. do that. That's just see, not because you can't. And did you hear all the yeah. words she was oh, going with? Did you There's hear so all the many. words? Oh. I, I want to go back to this again. Who who gave who permission to change the English language? Yeah. I, I know I know Miss Paget wouldn't put up with it. No. Huh? Where, where'd cisgender come from? Well, I can't keep it's, up with it. It's in the right? news I, again I, I, here today, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, and yeah, as oh, we yeah, continue yeah. down this road. Do y'all realize how crazy what just yeah. was said said just Absolutely. Well, meeting. that right now someone should run on the scene and say I deal with mental issues and I'm here to help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's going to get a bit more confusing here, Rick. How can it? <laughs> Facebook and Instagram is owned by Meta, you know. Oh, the Metaverse. Mm. The Metaverse. Meta's oversight board has announced a new policy Wednesday that will allow transgender and non-binary people to display their naked breasts on Facebook and Instagram, but will continue to forbid such posts by cisgender cisgender women. All right, so cisgender, what does that mean, Adam? This is your answer. Straight up. Straight up. Normal. Yeah. Straight why, up. Why cis? I, well, I don't know where it came from. Why can't we just say straight up? It's mm-hmm. straight How up. About just straight up. Women? Straight why, up. Yeah. why, why yeah. can't we say a biological female who acknowledges that's her identity as well? This mm-hmm. this cis part of it is like the prefix. I don't know what that means. You but can't. Maybe you can't give up. the standard a name. It's the standard. Right. I, I mean, they the the standard of where all this is. Each group is comes not comes up with their own name. Right. I think we ought to come up with our own name, and it'd be normal. All right. Right. I looked yeah. up the prefix. The prefix cis comes from the Latin meaning on this side as opposed to trans, which means on the other side. Right. Well, that right. makes perfect sense. sense. And, yeah. and, the, yeah. and it says here. So if I'm straight up, I can't put pictures up. Nope. No. If I'm if I'm pretending to be something else, I can. Yes. Even if you got enhancements? 
Yeah, because because it's about <laughs> the cisgender well, that, man. That's, that's a it is. This is a valid question. Yeah, and the it's, cisgender. It's right. I just wish you wouldn't if have asked. If we're going it. by what I, it looks like, I kind of figured right. you'd ask that question. <laughs> well, they say I it's, it's, it's the gender with how you identify now. That means it's the same, and you presume it's what you were at birth. So. <laughs> So now no, I'm pretty let, sure. let me continue with, with their statement, though. This is good. Let, the, so oversight, <laughs> the oversight board finds that removing these posts is not in line with Meta's community standards, values, or human rights or responsibilities. The board wrote from posts from a couple that identifies as transgender and non-binary. These cases also highlight fundamental issues with Meta's policy. It goes back to the uh, playoff now. Uh, What's uh, happening in the playoff is this. Go to the hockey thing again. Devoted to your faith <laughs> is loses to LGBTQ. If LGBTQ makes you Plus, compromise your faith, they're not mean. Right. And they're not out of line. Mm-mm. If you won't participate in their celebration because of your convictions, you're out of line. So we 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 mm-hmm. give preference. Mm-hmm. To, to 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 we we protect them being offended more than we will protect you being offended. Yeah. Right. Are the gods you serve being offended? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you being concerned about that? <laughs> uh, so so and even if you if, you know certainly you don't want to be mean. You don't mean anybody harm. Right. How is it more? Oh, 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 they're standing by their convictions. And a follower of Christ going, I'm standing by mine. Why is there no applause for that? Mm. I disagree, but you're standing by your, your – say you don't agree with them. So what? Why is that not – why does that not get an applause from you? Well, because that means he doesn't agree with them. But it's okay for them not to agree with him? Yeah. That's an who, applause. Who decides? What do you mean him, Rick? Right? Yeah. Or, or, oh. or, yeah, right. We're going mm. into a world where, you know, our, our convictions and principles come before a board and they rule, we don't like you and we like you. Yeah, and much. we rule. They're more important than you. You'll adapt to them. They do not have to adapt to you. Yeah. Yep. In, in protest, I'm going to do the rest of this show without my shirt on. Oh Go ahead. wow! Because that's what I stand for. You can put it on Twitter <laughs> or Meta, whatever it is. I can. Yeah, I'm allowed. Right. To, yeah. now, uh, yes. Yes. Are you? Me? Yes. A male man. Yes. Cis male? No, I'm not a male man. <laughs> no, right. I'm not a male like a, a postal. Not a pro- yes. M A L E. It's all very confusing. You don't right, deliver yes. the mail. But yeah. I can be shirtless on Instagram, but like women well, can. It depends on what you but identify. But trans as. women, biological trans women, women biological no, women, trans men. who identify as women, this is women discriminating cannot. against cisgender women. It is. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the bottom line. It is. Yeah, the pop really what. brought they're, that they're, home. They're, really they're taking. Does. They're they're yeah. deciding winners and losers, mm-hmm. and you can't do that. I mean, how, I don't see how they think that's fair at all. It ain't right. Free the nipple, guys. Am I right? <laughs> I'm with oh, you on that. Gosh, buddy, you've I, had a week. I, I, go, right. I, I go back to this. <laughs> Bubba, do you also see an underlying issue? And is I'll he be, on some new vitamins? He is. Sorry, guys. Underlying <laughs> issue, too. Aren't you kind of, by saying this, declaring, well, they're not real, so who cares? Yeah, that's as what oppo- you say. As, as opposed to We the, can't see real women. Right. We so see. Aren't, aren't you degrading them to a, well, what matters? not the real thing anyway. Yeah. Has anybody, thought about, that that? Has anybody ah. thought about that? Has anybody thought about that? I like they're that. They're saying it doesn't matter because they're not real. Yeah. Really? If you think about it. Mm-hmm. Real ones are not allowed. Right. Isn't that exactly what they're trying to overcome? Maybe you that's think. the slogan. What about Greg? fake ones? Uh, phone calls coming up. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. But right. I, who I, washed the skin? I'm gonna leave the skin. I'm not I never think it. about that. The ones that we made at home, you they've been skin? washed. I have no issue with eating the skin. Yeah. Really? I heard the skin's really good for you. Yeah. Well, well, that's what's gonna get Somebody me. Somebody made that up. Think about all the things well, we do. We don't care. It's just like I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you Rick, this. I get mad with this skin debate anyway because you know if you eat the skin of a chicken, everybody's on you. Know. You know because it's bad. But oh. If if you don't eat the skin on an apple, everybody's against you. Or I if mean, you don't what? eat potato, everybody's everybody yeah. gets mad on you. You missing those vitamins and nutrients? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do I eat the skin or not? Anybody like sweet potato? No, I love a sweet no, potato. I don't. A little At cinnamon all. sugar in it. I'm anti. Some butter. See, you know what I noticed? See right there, I've noticed no something. Skin. I've noticed yeah. something. If you like a sweet potato, you don't like a twice baked potato. I like both. If of you it. if you like sweet potatoes, or if you like twice baked, you probably don't like sweet potatoes. What about That's sweet potato you're casserole? casserole? I'm oddball there. I love, I love sweet, sweet potato, potato people. I'm relatively new to the sweet potato, but I like it. Let me oh, ask you, it. sweet potato it's a healthier people. Choice. Is it Wouldn't a, eat it, them as a kid. 
Is it like a dessert no, type no, no. thing? No, no, no. Well, it depends on what I've had. Like for me, a steak and sweet potato is really good. I'm not eating But if I orange. have like a vegetable a plate with there. some ham, I will love a sweet potato as a almost like a dessert. Okay. Mm. Can I tell you? I'm real hungry. Back to this thing y'all talked about earlier. And I don't want to relive it again because you know, I, you know, I think I think we have to really, 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 you know, delve out in small doses our potty humor. But I will say this: yeah. back on what y'all said earlier in the show, in the kickoff hour, about how people talk. I love when somebody thinks they've come to a revelation oh, that, that public restrooms are dirty, Yeah, like at some big find. But but I will – hey, man, people are going by here, you know, doing number one, number two, 24-7. This place is nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah I bet it is. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And when they leave, they know they're not coming back, so they don't care. <laughs> right, but so – They'll so, leave one soaking. So what you're talking about, what I was saying is what y'all said right. about the potato skin, <laughs> about not worrying about it. Yeah. I said, I don't worry about that. The things we worry about and the things we don't worry about it, there was an actually a guy and he pastor, okay, and he he went to the restroom, you know, as a man, and <laughs> and then was about to wrap up, oh, and the guy said, "You're not gonna wash your hands." And his quote was, he said, "I'm I know every detail of where this particular part of my anatomy has been. I got no idea who's been." <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of from that. And he too. said, "So I'm yeah. out of here." It's much worse for me to wash my hands, go touch this stuff, than it was what just happened there. Because I've been with this piece of anatomy all day long. I know exactly where it's been. Yeah, and it's all it's fine. Yeah, one of these has been washed today. You know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you don't know when they clean that hand. No, you don't, you? Mo. Really don't. By the way, you know the other thing. I love how you said I can do well, a journal well, on this. I know where it's been all day long. Yeah. I got no idea where all this stuff is. <laughs> we'll be back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Need to breathe. Don't need to breathe. Gets us going. Uh, Bubba, I know they talked about it at the kickoff hour. I was really rattled by Lee Ermey's death when I heard that. Yeah, you know, uh, big fan of his. He's uh, He's been in a lot of funny movies. He's played some pretty rough characters. Um, he has. When he's been here in the studio, we've had big fun with him. He, yep. he did, I think, some of the best drops uh, that we've got in the in the catalog there. So, yeah, I hated to hear that. He's... Uh, that that's fairly young, uh, seventy four now, but he's he's probably lived hard, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, you would think somebody like him though. You think nothing could get him, but uh, so anyway, Arlie. What, what Ar- was the uh, the pneumonia. cause of that? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, complications of that. Really? Yeah, there you get. You got to watch it. Yep, it'll get you. You know, pneumonia gets real serious. Oh, you get real yeah. serious. Right. Well, let me ask you yeah. this, just to to clarify what is pneumonia exactly I, i've always heard it's fluid on the lungs is that correct yeah. yep yep well, and then don't, and then don't forget the dreaded walking pneumonia which is not as bad but does that mean pneumonia you can function with is that all yeah. that means I, exactly I think yeah. So. Yeah. yeah i think so. i've had that and, and can turn into full-blown yeah i've had right. walking pneumonia and hey it's a party yeah but but don't a lot of people get pneumonia from being in the bed too much? Yeah. Does that yeah. is that Lame. one of the things that brings it up? Or a lot of people who are like paraplegic and stuff yeah mm-hmm. yeah so, so anyway, I'd like to thank Speedy because I'm a little bit sick again. Appreciate you, buddy. You sound great. Yeah, thanks. Rick. Appreciate you. That's, that's <laughs> it's my I, gift to you, uh, and I hate that. I really do. The I'll last thing I heard before I shifted over here to the same mic you and I share, and then there's various bottled waters laying around. You don't know who's belonged to who. And <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I, I took a drink, and I think, God, I don't know if that's my water. And, and all of a sudden, I heard you going, yeah, I just don't know if this is ever going to let me go, man. I've been sick for, long, for days now. And I was like, well, that's good. That's good right there. Thirty five minutes past the hour. Thank you, Johnny Donovan. Phone calls coming in now, and we'll we'll take those. MyPillow.com slash Bubba. They got a new hoodie at MyPillow. Have you seen this? No, nice. I haven't. Yeah, it's really cool. Only $28.48, uh, 49 I'm sorry. They dropped them 65%. Uh, small, medium, large, extra large, and double X as well. Uh, you can wear them uh, no matter if you're male or female. There you go. 
uh, because, uh, you know, hoodies are hoodies. Uh, so anyway, uh, MyPillow.com slash Bubba, those are available. Also, they're drawstring pants, a little leisure hangout, uh, very, very comfortable. Uh, could go with the hoodie, too. They're only $34.99, savings of 30%. So uh, make the move right now. Check it out. These are sharp. They're comfortable. Uh, perfect for this time of year and at a great price and high quality, mypillow.com slash Bubba or rickandbubba.com. You can find them there under the sponsors button. To the phones we go, Mike, out of the great state of Tennessee. Mike, go ahead. Welcome. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, buddy. Hey, um, I understand that our culture today is demon inspired as a disciple of Christ. I understand that. But I want you to superimpose or imagine our culture today being the way it is today, the day Pearl Harbor happened. Mm-hmm. And FDR trying to come to this culture and talk to this culture, the people living in this country, into standing up and pushing back against that evil. I mean, we would be speaking Japanese. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's the way it would be. Well, I, I, a buddy of at mine, at least half the country. Yeah, a buddy of mine says something. I won't give his name because I don't want him to take. And this is not. We're not saying this. Uh, I'm just yeah. to, to this Let's guy's point. Not us. We're not saying this because I know some of you. This will hurt your feelings really bad and and whatever. He said, you know, if you look into the um, the circle of life, sometimes you can go in and if you remove every single predator uh, from the area. You you get uh, you get things that rise up and the population becomes overwhelming. They eat up all of the food, and you realize, wow, those predators were there to to kind of keep certain numbers, balance uh, balance yeah. in all this. And and he 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 makes the point that you know we started out by saying that some bullies should be taken care of because they're over the line, and and they're truly should be dealt with. They're they're criminal. They're juvenile delinquents. And we should stand up for people who are being harmed. But in, in that great motivation, we, we kind of have messed up and we've, we've removed all forms of bullying, like people making fun of you, uh, people giving you a hard time about something, someone being mean to you. And he says a lot of this is the rise that all the bullies are gone. Because there would have been a time if you walked around as a man saying you were a girl. Oh, yeah. The, the environment you would have been in would have been so severe, you'd have shut that down. You'd have said, I think I'm going to stop this pursuit. Yeah, that cold. But uh, now everybody says, well, sure, whatever. Don't say anything. <laughs> Don't say anything. Uh, and uh, and he says we need to bring a certain level of bullies back. <laughs> well, keep now, that's his, that's his view. I see what he's saying. Um, a little extreme. Right. right. Well, it goes back to it's another version Do of. Do we have a happy medium here? Well, it's another, it, was, it was kind of society's own way to discipline certain things. Right. You right. know? Uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to anonymous caller out of Alabama. Anonymous, go ahead. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey. Um, yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. We got you loud and clear. Go ahead. And go ahead. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Guys. So yeah, you want to just want to, y'all touched on it just a little bit ago, uh, about, you know, these people supporting these random causes for whatever they may be with us. Fake, um, and and that kind of kind of touched base with me on some stuff I've been saying for a while, and some of them may be really be trying trying to inspire change. However, I, I believe if you look at the generation that's actually doing this, it's more of a not a very true support, but more of what can I post on social media? No to question. Get me the attention. No question. That, uh, <clears throat> that, that is really doing that. No question. Uh, again, it, it's. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it kind of started back. You, you see it with a lot of movements, and sometimes it fixes itself, sometimes it doesn't. As soon as the organization, not the sentiment, the organization Black Lives Matter came out, nobody did their homework on them. Nobody. Uh, you know why? Oh, I, I got to post that on my Instagram. I got to get their logo up there right now. I mean, I, I just, you know, because you're a decent person and you say, well, of course I agree with that sentiment. Absolutely, uh, Black Lives Matter. But you didn't take your time to really research the group and what they were really about and then what they went on to do because you had to get it out there because you didn't want – and you know what you did? You're just saying, hey, don't, 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 be, don't, be, don't be mad at me. You don't have any sincerity about it. it. It's patronizing is what it is. And there are people say, look, let me get my rainbow thing up there. Everybody leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Companies are the worst at it. You talk about insincere. Most of these companies make fun of y'all behind closed doors when they go off to their retreats. 
and the people in charge, they're mm-hmm. laughing. They are not sincere. There's not an ounce of sincerity in it. They're doing it so a mob won't be mean with them. And, uh, and, 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 the, and the thing about that, what's dangerous, if you establish that, then really you could be manipulated by anybody. Yeah. Uh, we the biggest went, mobs yeah, always going to win. We went we went through that when some advertisers tried to pull some things from us way back when we made a stand for God's standard on some of this, and they were like, "Well, people are upset. Y'all need to y'all need to apologize." And we said, "Well, no. Based on y'all's products, we'll just go on the air and tell people you canceled on us because we 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 were con- we had conviction. Uh, we we were devoted to our faith, and let's see which one of those two audiences leaves you first. I mean, if we're going to play this game, we'll just come on and say, if you are mad that they uh, tried to take away our livelihood because we are devoted to our faith, and if that bothers you, don't shop there anymore. And we can all do this. Uh, uh, and so it, it, you can't get to the point that whatever mob applies the most pressure gets their way. Uh, that, that can't be the society that we live in. But you're right. Most people, there's, there's not an ounce of sincerity in this. It's patronizing. Well, in the it, country, it, it's was saying set if up, I put up a certain, if I put your logo on my website, will you please go away and stop bothering me? Well, in our country, was set up with the majority to rule, while protecting minority rights, and I don't mean color; yep. I just mean of opinion on something. Mm-hmm. But it it certainly was set up to avoid mob rule, correct? Which they used to have in England, and it was. You know, if the mob was looking for a head and they came to your house that night, it mm-hmm. might be yours. Mm-hmm. Due process was forgotten about. 100%. Uh, Monique, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Hey, I was just going to submit um, the comment that the caller made earlier and responded with, you know, getting away with the bullying and maybe we need some of that back. I was just going to say that I can't wait and I hope to see some of that come back on the ice when that hockey player returns. So do you you hope he gets uh, bullied for standing by his faith? I hope that he gets treated like real men kind of treat men used to back in the day when they would come out with something like that. Maybe they should change the name of his team to the Fairies or something. Oh, she's got it, oh you got it backwards. Oh, you got it backwards. You've got it backwards. You got it backwards. Yeah, you, you, I see what you're saying. No, he the guy who would not come out, his team – wanted to do a promotion, hockey is for everyone. Now, that sounds fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. But what they did, they wanted the hockey team to come out with sticks that have the rainbow colors for the LGBTQ. And the numbers. And and the numbers. And he's the only hockey player that wouldn't do it because he said it violates his devotion to his faith. And so I totally got it backwards then. I thought he was the only one. No, my bad no, 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 no. No, you got it right. But let me tell you this. Let me tell you one thing you didn't get wrong. He is being bullied because uh, all the woke commentators that are trying to keep oh, the mob yeah. off them, they've looked at him and said, we're going to trash him so they don't come after us. So he he is uh, – Did he sit the game out or will he just not wear that uniform? What was uh, – he, he did that – I don't know if how he he how he actually implemented it, but Adler can help us. But I, I, he, is, he would not come out for the pregame thing. It was that, that's exactly right. It was the warm-up jerseys right. that had the rainbow right. on them. He refused to wear them. Um, and in a recent development here, the Ivan, this is, this is his name, Ivan Provorov uh, is his name. Those jerseys are sold out online. His, his jersey, yeah. yeah. See, that they don't even understand society where, where society really is. is. Did, what the guy was calling for the Philadelphia Flyers, that's his team, to be fined $1 million because he wouldn't come out. A million dollars. You know, this is where Which we need. Which means you're just forcing mm-hmm. people to do it. Right. This is where we need our hockey expert, Chris Wood. That's true. I know. That's, yeah, well, right. he has yeah. a lot of light on this. Yeah. Well said. Saw him the other night, Adler. He was working at an event. Oh, he'll work. He's a he worker. Will. He, he just he just had a birthday last Saturday. Happy birthday, Chris Wood. Uh, let's Adler go. Sidekick. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to. Uh, boy, I just don't know. I'm gonna try KC <laughs> in Kansas City. KC, go ahead. Hello, KC Wireman talking here. Hey, buddy. Uh, my call mainly pertains to a subject discussed during the first hour. And uh, I was raised with firearms in a hunting perspective since I was about 10 years old, was taught how to uh, not carry a loaded gun in the car, in the house, et cetera. But in my adult life, uh, I've learned how to handle handguns. And I hand uh, handguns to people on a regular basis, like at the range, uh, show them to the range captain. And you always make sure that the slide is open, the action is open, and that the chamber is visible. 
not only that, if it's a handgun, like a pistol or a revolver, I will hand it with the barrel pointing toward me. And that's my obligation to whoever I'm handing this firearm to. Still, really, um, still, he wasn't yeah, all yeah, correct. Trying to look right in, yeah. you know? yeah, all correct, but really wouldn't apply to this case. All correct. Everything you said is correct, but we're talking about a pretend movie pretending to to shoot and being told the gun you were handed for the next scene has blanks in it, not bullets. So that that really, it doesn't really apply. I mean, I understand that people may do that of their own. Yeah, uh, training in the background, but but it's really not the same thing. Uh, but everything you said is accurate. Uh, I mean, in, in, uh, when dealing with guns that we all know are are real and, and could be live. Well, uh, apparently they all are real guns on the movie set. Shouldn't be. Should have blanks, but right, yeah, real guns. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, 866, we be big. 14 minutes to the top of the hour. More Rick and Bubba coming up. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Yep, thought about that. Woke up Friday, did not feel great, and uh, then it just kind of deteriorated from there. So thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Well, uh, I did get a text from you over the weekend, and I love how it read, you know, Mm -hmm. hey, woke up with a cold. Thanks, bud. Appreciate you. Thank you, buddy. (laughs) And Well, um, last week uh, was a, uh, you know, it's a a busy time of year, and uh, for those of us with kids, you especially seniors you got all that going oh, on gotcha. and prom so stuff much, so many things it's it's busy enough and then you add on all of that and i, I tell you by about friday i was about out of it I, i'm shocked i didn't go down with something because i i was <laughs> yeah i felt like i had to i had to have a time out or i wasn't gonna make it yeah, yeah i probably would have been fine bubba no matter how tired i got if i just hadn't a talked in the same Mike Speedy talked into for days and drank his water while he was sick. I probably would have been fine, too. <laughs> that'll, that'll do it. Great. Let me ask that'll you a question real quick. Right. Um, did, it, did, it, did it start with um, congestion, uh, nasal congestion, but it wasn't runny, it was just, it was just there? No, I, my mind was a little more post-nasal drip again. Oh. That, needs to be, that seems to be my new thing that starts it now, which is real weird because yeah, you, 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 you can't, uh, <laughs> you don't sleep good with that. No, 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 you don't. I'm I'll, waiting on it to hit me. Lisa and Chandler both have it. Well, here's the thing. See, I've already had it once, and now it's come back around again. That's, well, my, that's my favorite. It hangs on for – Yeah, oh yeah. once you get it, it's hard to get rid of. But one of the problems is it keeps acting like it's wintertime. That, that's the problem. Well, yeah, it didn't – I mean, again, this morning, I got up to 35, 36 degree uh, – Yeah. I mean, I, th- I knew it would be cold till Easter. We always have that. But now, hey, now it's getting a little silly. Did you know we have NFL teams that have their, their, their winter workouts or spring workouts that start today? They're having to postpone it because of blizzard conditions in the north? Well, I, I know down south it's not to that level because I can't imagine, and you've already clarified what it is. But when you go, you know, on Friday, you're, you know, in the, in the upper 70s, and, and then you get up for church on Sunday and, and it's 40. I mean, that, that's a shift. I mean, that, <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. a, that, that's, a, that's, that's tough for everybody. You know, you're literally out there looking at flowers just everywhere. I'm talking flowers, about flowers, ta- flowers, 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 smell it. it. But you look, I mean, the farm, oh, wait a minute, I'm the, early. The, the farm just, I'm, I'm sending pictures to oh, Sherry yeah. Friday. It's just flowers everywhere. I mean, wildflowers all over the pasture. Is it the little yellow ones you've yeah. got in the green field? That's yeah. what I've got. They're out pretty. there, but then all around Sherry, the little house Sherry's got, there's just flowers everywhere. And then you wake up Sunday and, it, and it's winter again. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, that's got to, that can't help. And it's it's going to be rather windy where we are today, so yeah, that'll, that yeah. adds to it a little it, bit. It was windy yesterday. You, you like take crazy. 50s in a 15-mile-an-hour wind, it's pretty chilly yeah, out there. Sure <laughs> well, we, what, what we got to make sure of is that it, it this sickness, what, this little head cold deal y'all we got keep going, it between y'all. is that it dies with you here. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and and we don't just keep giving it to each other. Well, you realize, so, uh, you realize not, this is a major issue, right? Right. Here. Yeah. So yeah, what, the fact that we put our mouth on the same thing, you know. That's mm-hmm. that's not good. No yeah, microphones no. will do that. No, it, yeah. That, yeah that, so we'll. Yeah, that, there's no way that can be. Good. You have a commitment from me that we will try not to. You keep know what it you going. say to people if you're if you're sick, don't put your don't, don't drink after them, don't right. don't brush your teeth after them. You probably don't want to stick your mouth up next to something they've been talking into. Probably not sneezing around it. I'm a talk coughing. back here. How's that? Yeah. Now? Yeah. So I know it's hard to run the board from over there. I don't know what you're gonna do. But <laughs> we'll be back. More Rick and Bubba coming up. Hang in there. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. And uh, open up the show uh, this hour talking about it. Did y'all?
It is nine minutes. And here we go. Rick and Bubba show continuing. Spending time with the grade eight, visiting in the golden ticket seats. So, Bubba, I got a little, uh, is this high tech here? I mean, it just. Yeah, high, well, it's, uh, yeah. it's high tech criminals. Uh, high tech criminals? Yep. Yeah. Everybody. That's a little. Good night. <laughs> Speedy struck again. <laughs> Speedy's got Bubba a piece of gold. Hey. And Bubba, you, it's funny y'all said it last week. You were great. You put that behind your vehicle, it won't roll back. That's the yeah. chalk, chalk box. <laughs> Need it for the trailer, Rick. Yeah. Speedy, why did you get him so much? He doesn't have to eat it all. Why did you get so much? That, well, but he will. I'll tell you this. Yeah, years, ago, years ago, I cut him a piece of cake. And he, it left him wanting more. It yeah. wasn't big enough. Right. And I heard him well, complain you about done it. That in a while. So no. I thought, well, you know what? I'll no. cut him a big piece, and if he doesn't want to eat it all, he can throw the that's rest away. That's not a big piece. That's a mm-hmm. quarter of the cake. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's you not that the big compared mm-hmm. to what I normally yeah, do. Yeah, right. you, you've yeah. done. Better. I felt like I did pretty good. You yeah. did. You held yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. Just, I noticed you threw a mini cupcake in there. Yeah. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. One to grow on. Yeah. Yeah. Bubba, just remember. Just, just don't, oh, don't let them do that to you. Scan day Monday. We're we'll really good. Big scan uh, day coming up. Yep, yep. And don't forget from Speedy's don't, point of view. Don't need to water those seeds. Hey, don't forget from Speedy's point of view, there's one way to get a race. Yeah, cash I know free it. Up. I know it. Hey, He's hey, been hey, eyeing. I'm just, I'm just saying. He's been eyeing his uh, number two seed for Rick, a while. Rick, Rick, Rick. And, we, <laughs> <laughs> and these are from McKinney uh, Cakes out of oh, Montgomery that we've talked about on the show before. Yeah, Bubba, give us a And so we thank them for bringing that. And, Bubba, I just want you to have a good day. Thank you. Well, that'll do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could he that'll not put a little d- kick But in again, you don't have you to. Eat you know, it all. about a quarter of that would be a good day, <laughs> right? And that's all he has to eat. Right. You know, again, right. it's. Well, you I know mean, you. I'm I mean, just saying. I mean, he doesn't have to eat it all. Right. He can have, have two. To. He can have two <laughs> bites and throw it away. Right. He probably won't. So yeah. if you are a user, like a great white with a seal. Yeah. <laughs> You think he's just going to eat a couple of bites? <laughs> Leave it laying there? <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> Big air. <laughs> if well, you, you have T-Mobile. Try uh, real hard. Your data, Let's talk about T-Mobile. Your data may be exposed. Yes. T-Mobile has been hacked. <laughs> oh, not again. Over 40 million uh, customers hack- Holy has oh. their information now in the hands of hackers. You can't even have How a cell that? phone. I mean, you can't even have T-Mobile. <laughs> Out somebody get me, hey, somebody get your credit card information right out of the T Mobile. <laughs> I told Gwen we should have stayed with our other carrier. I told her. <laughs> T Mobile says that while some personal information was exposed, mm-hmm. not all of it was exposed. It was mm-hmm. only a partial well, breach. What's that mean? Well, they said that they probably know your name, address, and your uh, birth date, but passwords to your account and all of that was not compromised. Uh, but isn't that all they need to go get the rest of it? <laughs> well, <laughs> pretty <fine>. close. <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> so. Didn't I see where, was it KFC? And somebody else got shut down by some ransomware people? Really? Shut them down. I saw where all the airlines got shut down by one. I saw that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably announced it. Well, that's a, <laughs> a, 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 I think that's a plausible theory. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. So Bitcoin went up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that, that shot way up. Mm-hmm. How, about, right. how about every day it's just the hackers have got something? You know what? I know. Um, so number nine. So here, if here. we can't just protect our data. Is that it? No. Not 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 completely. The answer to and, that is no. And you know they these companies collect more information on you than they actually need to supply you service anyway. Right. Because they want to sell it. Yeah. The, it, before the hacker sells it. True. Right. So good point, Bubba. Good point. Thank but, you. But but I mean it's one of those things. You know how you get to a point where you're like, I mean the with this, the society we live in, it's almost like somebody said, "Well, you got to play ball." Yeah. So yeah, you, I mean, you am do? I am I going to live in a world where I never use any these services? I mean, and speaking of leaks and hacks, did you see the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court? You know, they had a leak mm-hmm. when it came to the overturning of Roe, mm-hmm. and boy, they were really going to get in there and search and find out who did. Oh, the I leaking. bet, I bet. Well, after a thorough investigation, Rick, they can't find who did it. So, 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 so that's it. They were hey, they were going in there and hey, <laughs> yeah. we got, we're gonna get we're gonna get answers for everybody. And they've come back. You know what that means? We didn't like what we found, so we're yeah. like we didn't find it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was an egregious breach oh, of egregious. trust, according yep. to Chief John Roberts. Apparently not. Uh, the marshal of the court investigated the situation. Rick, now they brought in 
like FBI. Oh, we're gonna get yeah. to the, We know how good the FBI is doing these days. <laughs> and and they could not find out who did it. They uh, they interviewed dozens of law clerks. Uh, it, they never did say if they actually interviewed the justices themselves. And they, they had identified 80, I think it was 87 people mm-hmm. that would have had access to the documents that were leaked. So it came from that 87, but they can't figure out who it was. And, now, they're not supposed to be telling their spouses. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. And I think five or six of them said they finally admitted they did tell their spouse that this was going to happen. I might want to keep looking at So them. the spouse may be the one that actually mm-hmm. did the leak. Yeah. Let me go back with this again. So we, we now... People, we're drifting so much that even if I'm in this role and part of being in this role is I've agreed that I can't share this stuff with anyone, people just do anyway. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> when they think it's, yeah. it's good for them. Right. Okay. They said they interviewed more than 120 yeah. Yeah, people, 100 of those employees of the court, all whom denied disclosing the opinion, and they still cannot find out who did it. You can't. Whoever did I'm it beat, you, beat Rick, the on system. Your, on your theory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they found somebody they walked. Somebody like, walked yeah, yeah. into somebody's office, shut the door, and said, "By the way, I know I got who it is. Mm-hmm. Do you want to see how bad it is it? It's bad. No, nah, I don't want to see it. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Let's just well, this say, is the thing. Just, they let's never, just say we didn't find anything. They there wasn't clear in the story <clears> I saw <throat> if they interviewed the justices themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who would also know? Mm-hmm. They you went after the camp. staff. You know, mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. You don't think somebody down there on the end wouldn't no. let that go? Huh? Was sure. unhappy with it. I, I would. I can't. I, I will down say at the end. Let's start I'll, with the people know, who voted down no. on the end. You, you know. know? Let's start with the ones who voted yeah against it. Well, what yeah. I would say if somebody, that's that's your prime candidate. That's right there. If somebody asked me, Rick, can you tell us who did it? I would say no. I honestly don't know, so I can't speak to that. Could you give us an opinion that we won't hold you to if we just asked your opinion? I would say I would. I would have in that investigation to Bubba's point, y'all's point. I would have included in the investigation, and maybe they were. Uh, the actual justices who voted against it. Because I, somebody I, let it out yeah. to create right. a, a, mm-hmm. a fury ahead of it, it hopefully mm-hmm. uh, hoping that they would change it. So yeah. it had to be somebody opposed. Mm-hmm. Nobody who was actually for that decision would have leaked it. Somebody there walked was no in, motive to do Somebody something. walked in and said, hey, it's one of the justices. And he said, oh, what a nightmare. That's going to lead to they have to step down. No, they can't step down. We're going to get into all some constitutional yeah. war. And, and so he said, look, let's just come out and say we didn't find nothing. And we'll keep saying how it shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and don't do that again. Top of the hour. <clears throat> we'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Mention Art Bell as well. Greg, what, what's everybody saying about Art Bell's death? Well, you know, at first they thought it was a Friday the 13th hoax, but then then it did get confirmed. Art went on in. Either, well, well we that's think. what we're saying. He may have been abducted. You never know. Or maybe he jumped time. You don't know. Yeah, how do we know he, he didn't fall a into uh, uh, some kind of time warp, uh, some kind of uh, continuum, yes. uh, you know, black hole? Uh, you, you, I mean, Rick, you remember he went off the air because he was afraid of – who was it, Greg, because he was exposing these things that nobody yeah, knew was going on? Him. Was yeah. it the government or was it the aliens? Or Illuminati. Yeah. Th- there were various things. That, that he said we're out to get him. And we, I see here they said they're going to try to do an autopsy to conform, confirm the cause of death. So they yeah. actually have a body. Mm-hmm. That's what they're saying mm-hmm. here. See, I didn't even know if, they, if he just disappeared. No, or what, he, yeah, they, they, they're claiming they have. <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> no, well, I mean, they're I claiming know. Bubba. You, now, you never know when it comes to art. Well, who's that guy that does that show now? George Nori. George Nori. Yeah. yeah. And they have a they have a lot of different ones. George Greg, when you when one. you used to listen uh, all the time when they were very X Files, uh, hey, yeah. we're gonna it just you would come in with some of the craziest stories. Yeah, I haven't listened in a while. I got tired of numerologists and people like that because that, that bores me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it's a six, a zero, and then it's a four. And that, that certifies and I'm like, What? Yeah. <laughs> the obit- but, but he had everything. I mean, you talking about it was X Files on the radio. It really was. Oh, absolutely. Bubba the obituary says it all. As Bell begins his journey on the other side, we take solace in the hope that he is now finding out all the answers to the mysteries he pursued for so many nights with all of us. <laughs> well, he he knows, that's for sure. He does know. He does know. I'll give you that. So there we go. Uh, we we've told Speedy to try to get since Comey's out doing his um, 
his book, book tour to try to get Comey to see if he wants to promote his book here on the show. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to have him on, Rick. I, I got some questions, and I, I haven't looked at the book yet, but I'd love to talk to James Comey. Well, I, mean, I wish we could get him right here in the studio. Oh, he'd be the tallest guy that's been here yeah. since that basketball player we yeah. had. Oh, Mark Eaton, wasn't that his name? Yeah. His old seven footer. Well, <laughs> he just didn't look right. He was so big. Oh, well, I was scared of him. When I saw the headline today, I thought he'd written a book about Bill Clinton because here's what it says He's morally unfit to be president, lies constantly, and treats women like pieces of meat. I thought, well, why are we talking about Bill Clinton again? Yeah. I mean, it's a. Right. You know what that means? He's going to serve two terms. Bill Clinton did. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Didn't seem to get in the way of them. Billy C, did it? No, no he didn't. So, um, but, but again, the, the Comey thing really comes across. First of all, it's like the other guy who did a book. It's like all the things that have been in the headlines. He just went and wrote a book, put all the things in there that we've already heard. So then people can refer to the book as opposed to them acting like they've coming up with stories. Right. And it feels like that again. He's mad because he got fired. He's mad at Trump. He's angry. Uh, they're fighting back and forth. It's like all of us are in the kitchen mm-hmm. and, and mommy and daddy are fighting and we're all caught in the middle of it. Right. You know, it, they're mad at each other. They don't like each other. So you have to take everything either one of them would say about the other and go, well. He he also takes a couple of shots at some of the other folks, I think, just so he looks like he's not being partisan. Okay. <laughs> uh, I saw, where was it here? He was talking something about Obama. Uh, and uh, Well, I, I know that he said um, he said he's not in favor of impeaching in uh, Trump. Yeah. So he, he threw that in there, too. He said um, – the voting booth is where you make change, which I agree with him on that. So, and, and but he at one point he was saying, in a, in a quote we had last week, that he still believes that Hillary Clinton should not have been investigated, but he he's not he's never been able to communicate that well because it's well, hard it's hard you to know, communicate. That's, that's and, what and I, I would was, want. To, that's what I want to know. I want to know if me or you did the same thing that she did. Would we have people with black helicopters and ropes swinging through our windows? You go after Trump's personal lawyer, which is a gray technical area everybody admits. Now, you you can't just get a free pass to break right. the law if yeah. you're an attorney. Right. Uh, but it, it's certainly a, a gray area, and they have to be very careful what they go into on this. Uh, because if you do away with the attorney-client privilege, due process is done away with also. Because nobody's going to take your case. Right. And so how how do you... How do you go in with an overnight raid on that, but you don't on Hillary Clinton? That, and I think that is a fair question for James Cole. Well, Bubba, he said that it was. If he's right here, I will ask him. But, but Bubba, he said, <laughs> "Speedy, please, for love, get him." Bubba, but you don't understand what he said was. He knows it was the right thing to do, but it's difficult to communicate why he did it. Well, that's why I'm going to say, "Go, you got it. You got the floor. Explain it to us." We're, you know, we're not. Uh, we're we're average intelligence, average Americans. You can explain it, right? Make me a believer. Below average on some topics? Here, here's the thing, too, that I don't really get about him. He had this Hillary Clinton thing go in this investigation, and it's clear they didn't want to wade into it and influence the election. They were, they were really tiptoeing around it. Well, they come out and say, we're not going to charge, and then there's a backlash from one side. Right. Well, then... A week or two later, or it was really right before the election, he goes back and goes, hey, we're opening it back up, which absolutely hurt Hillary. So I, I, which one was it? Why, why even announce that? You, you know what I mean? It's almost like no, it was yeah, a political yeah. pinball machine. Really? Is that what it, it seems like to you? Yeah. It sure does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it really, and I would tell him that. Now, is he sitting he right can't, here when he you He can't that? investigate me, can he? I mean, well, he get me now, but, he's out. Uh, huh? it's these kind, it's these kinds of things that he does. That uh, I'm used to being audited, so I'm I'm ready for that. Right, that I lose <laughs> respect for. So. Six minutes past the hour. From the no-name studio, living on the cutting edge, preferably, but unfortunately at times, the bleeding edge of technology. Uh, Out here from Sweet Home, Alabama, to the rest of the world, big boys looking on, the Elite Eight, hanging out, visiting, Bubba munching on cake, Uh, Helmsy getting into the scrambled eggs, 
Uh, Bubba, welcome back for a brand new hour. How are you? Rick, glad to be here, and thank all of you. We uh, we only ask for five hours each and every day. Remember, just a mere five. <sighs> you know, we're we're looking at the at the weekend. I'm a, what are you going to do with that time? Right, we're looking at the daytime week. TV. Hey, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Take out commercials is only three hours and fifteen minutes. <laughs> that's right. uh, so, uh, so we we look. Seen any good judge shows lately? Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. my gosh! Yeah, the it's number not, of judge shows on are just ridiculous. Them. Y'all make a good point. It's not like our show's all that good, but everything else is really bad. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, we're better than that. Yeah. Um, so we're getting to uh, you know when you have it's stuff, enough to make you want to get up and go back to work. You know, we we talk about this all the time. When you see something out there on the ca- uh, out on the calendar that you're a little bit anxious about, and it just gets getting closer and closer and closer. So y'all know that um, you know this this world of now having adult children, and I'm putting quotes around that. Uh, you know, they're they're transitioning. You know, uh, some of them are, are further down the road. They're pretty solidified. Even though uh, boomer, when you know you make a, a choice to be an actor. Uh, that that you could be, you know, he's still trying to recover from all the pandemic stuff, but you know the the the, the other two. So the the oldest, you know, they're they're thirty three and about to be thirty two, but the but the twenty three and the twenty one, you know, them them getting out on uh, getting legs under their adulthood, it's just a it's a transition, yeah. you know. And um, so Brooks Big Love Burgess, you know, lives in the ATL and um. ATL? He his apartment was flooded. It was destroyed. I, I told you the story about the, about the move, and now he's in a studio. It is less expensive, so that's good. That that takes a little pressure off him there, but a little uh, bit smaller. But the last time that Mama saw his apartment because yeah. she was there helping set it up, it looked really good. And we have not been there since. Um, and uh, I want to thank the folks that uh, Crocker and uh, who who got together and helped him move. Some friends we just met, Bubba, and a company that's advertising with us now, and they really were so helpful on getting him moved and everything. And yeah, we had one move this week. Yeah, and he, yeah. They, they told me they were helping Hunter too, so that's great. So I know it went well. They did such a good job. And um, I so need to talk to him about a desk. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. So I, uh, <laughs> I. I, we haven't been back, and and Sherry says, "Well, I want to go over there. What is tomorrow? The twenty first? If you're listening live, uh, yes, that is correct. I want to go over there and just see how it looks. You know, same day over and back. Don't do the whole weekend thing. And uh, and see, I know, I know, <laughs> I, I'm not. I don't live in a fake world. I know that this young man has done all he could do with it in the situation he was put in." But if anybody on this planet thinks that tomorrow is going to meet Mama's standard, no, oh my Rick. gosh, <laughs> I am dreading it. It's it's as if well, this it's this as if it's as if I'm sitting in the local jail in your favorite western, and I know that I'm hanging at noon, you know, and yeah. and I'm just sitting in there, you know, and I see them building the gallows out there, <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, unless somebody intervenes, uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to have a good day. I've told him over and over again, son, I'm just telling you, please, I mean, we, we, we have to have this in some order, you know, and he'll, he'll send me a text every now and then, hey, love in studio life. <laughs> yeah, I know, no, but unfortunately, son, you'll learn this as you get older and maybe have a wife of your own. It doesn't really matter how we feel about it. No. Okay? It, it, these places, even when in your situation, by all accounts, it's your place. You're you're paying for it. it you, it's it, and um, mom, she can't bear the thought that one of her children, that the wherever they're living has not been decorated by her. Oh yeah. You know, and and I'm just like, um, it's it's going to be. So I guys, I don't. You just don't understand. You know, all your kids have different personalities, and I will say for for Brooks. Of all of them, he may be the best at staying on top of his bills and and you know servicing his car. He's way ahead of the rest on that. Yeah, but he's still a twenty three year old dude. Okay, mm-hmm. and and Mama had nothing to do with this move. She 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 wasn't there. So. She didn't tell people where to put stuff. So I'm are, already dreading just overview of the party. Are you itself? saying you feel like Mary Surratt today? Yes. <laughs> Yes, Bubba. Yes, that's a great one. So, I mean, there's nothing anybody can do for me. I'm just sitting here, you know it. And uh, and so, 
I mean, I'm going to, and then I'm going to take my truck because for some reason, uh, some rug got wet and we found some people that would clean it. They brought that back to me. Mm. And Sherry right. wants to take it back, but I'm telling you, I bet you there's nowhere for this room. No, oh, you no. can't. Hey, you and you can't. The, I know. The, the, I know you, your Rick mind can, can't go that I'm have, taking something back that they don't. He doesn't. Have you it. had a picture or anything just so you can? That's what worries me. I can't even give me. So she she had he don't. Even, I can tell you, don't want to send me a picture. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here, I've asked for one. You need to Facetime him. Yeah. Rick, walk me around. Today's the day. Rick, I tell you what you need to do. So I remember when 21st was. It was weeks away. You need to go in your garage today when you get home and knife your tire so you can't go. You're right. It's the only way out. It's only well, way there's out. always well. That. We don't have a truck. All right, so, Sorry, uh, can't get the drug, so ah, oh, it's flat yeah. as a pancake. And then and then <laughs> I can, and then I can see Sherry's trying, and I love watching. I love watching this, and this is brilliant on Brooks's part. Hey, I want Brody to come for any way he can come too. I'd love to see him. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're trying to dilute the situation. Sure. Yeah. Good. Th- throw my brother in, <clears throat> you know, and somehow bad. that you know, Mama can get uh, you know. You know what he's trying to do? He's hoping that mom will grill his brother and not have anything left by the time, you know. That, that, <laughs> or or uh, there's uh, such a crowd there, yeah, right. you, you feel like the grilling right. might be right. suppressed a little bit. And 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 I'll and then I'll build up. I said, isn't it great when they get to see each other? You know, don't like mm-hmm. to see each other a lot. And you know, I'd hate for anything to mess that up. Right. You know, for it not That's to be good. a, a good time. For that. And uh, he also mm-hmm. might be doing this strategically. So when she says, well, now, why is that right there? Mm-hmm. Then brother can oh, go, that's awesome. oh, no, that looks that's great, awesome. man. That's, that's awesome. what I do. Here, here's, yeah. what we, here's what we know. <laughs> I always try to do this to prepare. I keep telling Sherry, your son, and I always, I always do. That's what, you know how they always, you know how they'll always, when they call him your kid, that's yeah. when they've done something wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll say your son, because so we can do it back. Your son is living in a hotel room. You just need to know that. He is. Well, not literally, honey, but I'm in a studio. Mm-hmm. He now lives in a hotel room. He lives in a nice hotel room. That's what he lives in. You need to prepare yourself that this is a hotel room. It will not be like the one-bedroom apartment yes. that, that, mm-hmm. that you spend all day in. It's all one room. You, you will walk into basically visiting Brooks in a hotel room. Mm-hmm. But at this stage of his life, this is all he Perfect. needs. It's yeah. all he needs. Perfect. See, I know, see, I said something was awesome that will come under incredible scrutiny tomorrow. <laughs> he said, Dad, I didn't, I didn't have anywhere to put my dresser, so there's two closets. So I used one closet, and I got my dresser in there. I just opened the closet and opened the drawers inside there, and I said, that is awesome. Yes. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, that's a great but idea. But my wife is going My wife yeah. is going to hate that. She's going, where's your dresser? In uh, the closet. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe you, maybe you just, it's just like, it's almost like the closet people showed up here where they call California closet. Mm-hmm. It's like they showed up and they put shelves inside the closet. So you'd be fine with that. He's put shelves in the closet. Brilliant. Yeah. There's shelves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there look at there. Is. He's got stuff on top. Where's we, his hanging clothes? We're there in the other closet. See? Yeah. It's good. Well, he's he's by himself again. You got a full closet and a half closet. There you yeah. go. What's wrong with mm-hmm. that? Well, 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 see that, see well his, right. bed, his bed's right by the kitchen. Yeah, right? It's a nice apartment. Or it's a really nice hotel room. <laughs> right. How about your son lives in a really nice hotel room? There you go. What's wrong with that? I would live in one. Yeah, yeah especially if it was just me, right? Wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. Like that rent a yeah. little lower like, too. Like there, a, there's no in one tomorrow. Actually, there, mm-hmm. let, let me tell you where I'm worried about. When those movers came back, and I said anything that doesn't fit, just bring it back. They only brought a rug. And three bar stools. And you're taking it back? No, and what I'm saying is, mm. where did he put all this other stuff? Uh, There's no telling. Oh, yeah. He, he, he won't store, storage out. room slash Rick, he hotel. He won't send you a picture of it. No, I can't get a picture. That's not good. That's mm-hmm. not good. That is not good. And then, you, you re- specifically requested a picture? Yes. But that was early. I hadn't requested one in a couple of weeks. Okay. I'd, I'd get that done. Yeah. I would text him yeah. and say, don't yeah. you ignore my face. I've got to have a yeah. picture. Rick, of maybe yeah. before you get there, you off Sherry a nice piece of, offer her a nice piece of cake. That'd be great. I think I will do that. Yeah. Let, me, let me say or this. Or ice cream. Cause, and I want you, don't y'all th- agree? I don't think she's motivated. You're not going, Bubba. Right. <laughs> she's not motivated. The same way Here's the thing yeah, I want y'all to know. Point. Everybody with this, those of you that don't have adult children yet, are the there's the adult adult children, then there's the transitioning adult children. Yeah, that's different. On those latter ones. I don't think you can use that word anymore. Well, right? whatever. Yeah. On those latter ones. Uh, uh, so they have to know the deal. Dads, listen to me. They got to know the deal. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to reaffirm this today. If this all goes south, I'm siding with her, just so you know. Yeah, you, yeah. you yeah. got to ride all the way back. I, yeah. may, I may look at you and say, dead man walking. Yeah, yeah. You know I've I mean? done that. I, yeah, because I'm getting in the truck with her, and we're going back to where we came from. Yeah, yeah. you got a two-and-a-half-hour reason to agree with her. And you'll That's be right. distanced from her. You can actually yeah. hide from her for days, yeah. but I can't. No. So, so Weeks. If this goes south, 
Don't be shocked. Y'all done it. I know I you have. Know. Yes. Where, where off away from this, it looked like I was on your side. Mm-hmm. And suddenly you don't even recognize me. Mm-hmm. I've, I've sided with your mother. You're like, this is not the guy that was talking to me secretly on the phone and asking for pictures. <laughs> One day he's know. turned on me. <laughs> I let them know I will turn on you. Yeah. If it comes down to it, you'll think I'm a completely different person. <laughs> but I'm going with her. Dad, I thought you were all about this. I can't stand this. Look, before I saw it. <laughs> you put it in the closet. <laughs> what are Dad, you, you thinking? thought that was awesome. <laughs> what? Who said that? <laughs> it's ridiculous. You, you gotta I'm have, putting that in the trunk. Got to have Brody. Got to have Brody. I with need you. Brody. Yeah, because he could come in and go, More oh, man, this, is, this is awesome, man. Brody, you got to go, man. Come and on, Rick, buddy. if it gets too bad, just slosh your tire while in Atlanta. <laughs> oh, yeah. you back to that. Huh? Get it fixed. Turn around and come back home. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Stephanopoulos is saying, so you can't for certain say that the president of the United States is not compromised by the Russians. Now, think about, first of all, how that's how that question is formed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he says, it is, it is stunning, and I wish I wasn't saying it, but it's just, it's the truth. I cannot say that. It always struck me and still strikes me as unlikely, and I would have been able to say with high confidence about it on any other president I dealt with, but I can't. It's possible. Uh, now, well, now, think about, think about something? that answer. Of course, then, tr- yeah, then Tr- possible. Trump has responded by calling it a little more straightforward. Call me as a slime ball and worst FBI director in history. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Lord. Let me ask you this. And He's again, got a name for it. Er- it? Everybody can say something, but you're going to do and you're going to act out where you really are, and we've right. talked about that on a lot of topics. Right. If If Trump is compromised by the Russians, would he be – passing more sanctions against them, which they're going to do today, would he be bombing their assets in Syria? If he's compromised by them, he's really not showing it. Well, Bubba, or they're not calling in their cards Bubba, or something. Comey's not saying he is. He just says he can't say for sure that he's not. Well, without the lack of proof, you have to say he's not. Well, I just I can't. <laughs> and he's a main weatherman. He's a mighty James Spann. James Spann, welcome back to the Rick and Bubba Show. How are you? I mean, beautiful, where we live. I'm talking about in Alabama. Saturday, it poured rain. At, I mean, like like you were like like a a cow on a flat rock. I mean, it just it just never it just never it just never stopped. And then Sunday morning, we get up to go to church, and when they heard everybody get your jacket, mm-hmm. they were like, "What?" Because mm-hmm. I'm the first one up. I go up, get me some coffee, you know, take the dog out. And I said, "Guys, I got to tell you, it's brutally cold out there." And they're like, "What?" In I said, I said for April. 15th, it's very cold. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. James, uh, I know there was some damage in Mississippi, too, but you had put some footage, some footage of a uh, of a tornado that was captured, I think, at a convenience store, and that was amazing wow. footage. Yeah. I mean, it went from just a breeze blowing to the roof of a house flying away in just, in just no time. That was amazing, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, that that was uh, that was pretty stunning. We we had tornado damage, and by the way, the National Weather Service uh, did confirm that as an EF two. Uh, this was in Meridian, Mississippi, uh, and uh, this was video taken from a gas station uh, in the Grand View section of Meridian, and uh, it was pretty stunning. And you could see the inflow getting uh, more intense, and uh, there was a, a house across the street, and the roof just went away, which is often what happens in tornadoes, and. Uh, you know, it, it, of course, the, the, we, we would hope that the people taking the video next time wow. might consider getting away from the windows. Yeah, but really. It's still some pretty pretty incredible stuff. Yeah, it, yeah we're it's showing odd that right because now. they they were not looking in the direction the tornado was coming, and it it literally went over where they were and destroyed the house across the street. That house looks like maybe no one lives in it. Thankfully, it looks like it's an abandoned house. Right. I hope it, it was abandoned. It was. Oh, good. Okay. James, thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate the update. Black, Blackberry winner. See you. Uh-huh. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I do want to make you aware of one thing. Um, if you go to rickandbubba.com and show notes, a couple of things you'll see today. First of all, R. Lee Ermey, we've talked about that. He has passed away, and uh, Helmsy has found the interview we had with him here in the studio. Yeah. So the last time he was here, if you'd like to go back and watch that, you can. 
in a Rick and Bubba archive that's in show notes today there at rickandbubba.com. Have you seen us in 2012? I have not. Uh, okay. Yeah, didn't realize it had been that long either. Yeah. Seemed like it wasn't that long ago. I know, Rick. Gosh, y'all. There we are. There we are. There we are in 2012. <laughs> there we are. Uh, also, uh, want to make. My hair's not as white. Uh, you know what? It's not, is it? Mm-mm. But uh, also in show notes today, and these tickets are free. Uh, but uh, in the state of Alabama, we've been talking about our friend Scott Dawson running for mm-hmm. for governor. There's another gubernatorial uh, debate this week at the historic Lyric Theater theater in downtown Birmingham. So if you want to attend that uh, Wednesday night and uh, be out there, if you're whoever you support, but obviously our audience or any of you that are wanting to go see the debate of those candidates, they'll debate again on Wednesday. Now, the current governor, of course, won't be for, at that one either. But But the three that are vying to try to get the nomination for the Republican Party We'll all be debating Lyric Theater in Birmingham Wednesday night. And if you want to get tickets to that, and they are free, we've uh, given you a link to get free tickets there at rickandbubba.com, uh, also in show notes. So, you know, we definitely want Dawson to have a, 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 a section there. But no matter who you support, if you want to get the tickets, they're there. Uh, so. It is 23 minutes past uh, the Rick and Bubba show. All right, a grim update. Um, I just got a text from Brody. Oh, no. Young, young, young Broderick, it, it does not look good. He, Come hey, on. Hey, can I say this to young Broderick? You can't do everything you're doing in Coastal Cross. That You don't have time for that. <laughs> oh, is that what got you? So oh, he, here's what young Broderick said. Dad, I can't. I am coaching lacrosse, and I have a lacrosse thing and a some kind of shower thing I have to go to. That was a phenomenal bit, though. Well done. <laughs> and I thought, well, and I said, you must, you absolutely must get your brother to send me a picture of this apartment before I get there. I must have that picture. Mm-hmm. And he says, I'm on that. But you know what? He, he's abandoned me. Did he write fortunately in front of that? Fortunately, I have lacrosse. Uh, <laughs> Accidentally. He's, uh, he's just. Nope. Wait, wait. Yeah, he, That's he ba- how I really feel. You know what he basically said? Greg, it's the boys of Company C. Dead he man. basically said that great movie when the guy stepped on the mine and everybody heard it click and the and the officer in charge said, step away from this man. That man is a dead man. Yeah. <laughs> Let's walk away so it doesn't get all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's he's abandoned his father. And all the times that I've come through for him, mm-hmm. you would think he would say, you know what? We can't quite do that uh, today because I got to go help my dad. Yeah. And um, what about dad? Somebody help daddy. Here it is again. Yeah. I'm a... <laughs> hey, you on your hey, own? Hey, you on your own, pal? If this doesn't go well, it'll be all the way back to the state line. You'll be oh, hearing about it. No, <laughs> it doesn't stop at the state line. Well, and you know, you know how no. you know how mamas are too. You know, you you got to watch that maternal instinct. You got to watch it. Mm-hmm. I mean, guys, I know that the, this is not likely, hmm. and that's where I've got all the the I've tried I'm putting together all my parameters. I mean, mamas can declare, uh-uh, he ain't living here. Uh-uh. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, uh-uh. he ain't he ain't living here. And then I'm like, what? You know, the, and you start no. trying to talk about leases and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll, uh, hey, pull the truck up. And then you know, Brooks will be like, I, uh, I got to be at work Monday. You know, like you know, could, not, could you ask? Brooks to kind of flip the script a little bit. All right, if he doesn't think it's it's mm-hmm. going to be fitting for her, mm-hmm. flip it and say, "Mom, I'm gonna need your help, man. I do this. Everything flooded in my other apartment. Mm-hmm. I kind of got in here. I threw everything together, but I need your touch. So when you get there, help me out a little bit. So then yeah, she doesn't that's think. Good. Put her on the project. Yeah, let yeah. her know. And the other one is Bubba's brilliant idea in the break, which kind of goes to my plan, but taking it to the new level of telling her he lives in a hotel room. <laughs> Is for me to find a really, really trashy looking uh, one uh, studio apartment with stuff right. laying everywhere. You can do that online and say, "Hey, this is the picture." So I just want to prepare you before oh, we yeah. get there. So then, when she gets there, it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. So that's good yeah. too. It's a real good idea. Yeah, those are all good. That's ideas. how we've made a living. Yeah, well, low expectations. Low expectations. And then you're impressed when it's not much right. to it. You know, yeah. really, this whole show has survived on. Oh, not as bad as I thought. <laughs> yeah. Not great. Not, not as bad as I That's thought. Great. There you go. Uh, right. Oh, Bubba. Oh, there it is. There oh, it is. this right looks good. There. That boy here it is. This was way. Now Sherry said, "Look, he's had a little problem <laughs> getting organized, and he's promised he's going to pick it up." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it, well, it's like uh, you know, but you know, when they're at that age, especially males, not not females so much, but. Um, 
you know, like when the, the water thing. You wouldn't believe I had to go through in the water thing. Son, I'm going to ask you this. Does it have any water on it? <laughs> well, I mean, some. Okay, okay. well, that's not good. You, you, don't, have wa- water. you don't have no. water on it. <laughs> well, I mean, is, does it have mold? Well, just right here on the back. No, that's bad. That's bad. You know, I mean, go go get don't do not put that piece of furniture and go get Clorox wipes and the, all that's got to be cleaned up. Yeah. Fan, and, and you need a fan. And if it's ruined, we got to dry it and and yeah, all yeah, that. He, he he okay he, okay what? Brody says I'm getting the pictures now Ooh, for okay. the apartment. Ooh. thank you, buddy. You gotta you gotta give your brother a heads up. Does Brooks know? Somebody that Brody's daddy. working covert here. Somebody help, Daddy. Okay. Somebody. You, you ever know they'll, they'll abandon us. Oh, yeah. Somebody help daddy. I mean, you, you, y'all, yeah. can, you, you kids going to have to do a better job. Y'all just can't leave us out here like this. <laughs> so basically, you're going to go over and have to go find another apartment. Is that what you tell me? I hope that doesn't happen. Okay. Because, I, you, Greg, here's, here's spend the thing. all weekend cleaning well, up. Well, the out. thing I'll have to say, and of course, you, when you start down this road, I might as well be going, yeah. is what is I'll go, well, baby, in, in, in the particular lease, you, we can move him all day long, but we're still going to pay for this part. Yeah, that's true. Right. So that will pay that for helps. this. Right. You know what I mean? So now he's going to, so, so I guess he'll continue to pay for this one. Who's going to pay for this new one? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's real good. That's the picture I need right there. Yes. <laughs> Well, That's he, the, he's working on it, Mom. So he's getting it all together. Yeah, I said he, now he's yeah. getting the sleep he needs. It's yeah, all good. Yeah, Here's my concern is she's going to demand that he come out of this apartment back to one that was like he is in the same complex. Well, no, they can't move you over here. You need to go back to something like right. you have. Well, those are all flooded. That's why we're in this one. Right, but uh, I mean but, there might yeah, be right. more options in the right. complex well, they similar weren't. to that. They weren't, or he would be in that. You're hoping okay, this is all yeah, they had. This is all good. This this is you're hoping it's Thank you. This, you know what this is? We're practicing. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, like, and the, the other thing is this, and the, I'm going to land here because it helped me get to where I am now. $700 less a month. Yeah. Well, well, that's you. $700 that's, that kid wow. don't have to that, come up with. That yeah. says everything right there. You know it does for but me. That doesn't help yeah. the mom's outlook. Well, it, it seemed to work. The, it, that's what I've used to get to here. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if it's still, you know how something may not still have the punch it had? Mm-hmm. Uh, look, that's a lot less pressure on him. You know, he was, barely, point, hey, he was barely making it. Rick, do you remember? Now he's got a little breathing room. Yeah, that's it. At what mm-hmm. point does she tell you to stop using that line? Uh, About noon? No. No, let's, let's get me on the road. Okay. That will be – that. those of you who don't know how to go from Birmingham to Atlanta, I don't think that lasts to Moody. Yeah. I don't think I get past Moody. Wow. When she says Pell something City, like, maybe. When, hey, Rick, I know it's cheaper. Right, because so, that, yeah. that's coming. She'll say, "We'll see. We've got it now." Drive by the landfill on fire. And yeah. Talk about right. that right. for a while. <laughs> Here's what she'll say: That's the reason we haven't driven over there already. So there's no, that. Don't need to go there. What we're going today is to see what else I need to be. There's anything else I need to be concerned about. What time do you get back? Your prediction on Saturday night? Yeah. My prediction: I'm no way I'm home before ten. Hey. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh, Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. As we were coming into this hour, I want to tell you about this past weekend. And and look, we we tell stories of of our life as uh, husbands and, and dads, and uh, a lot of you seem to relate to that. Uh, lot, got a lot of good email when I was talking about you and me, Bubba, trying to get pictures on the various proms and all that kind of stuff. Well, it was impossible. You think we could have got one picture, wouldn't you? But no, yeah, yeah, but, it was impossible. But I thought that that might have been me not catching Speedy's uh, viral code. I thought, well, that might have been we were in a gar- <laughs> we were in a garden there, and then I went to the farm on Friday, was outside again. I kept hoping and praying it was only pollen oriented. Right. But now that the rain came and kind of washed all that away, and I'm not doing any better, I realized it was Speedy that got me. Mm. But but anyway, so uh, – and I've never really had a pollen problem, but I was almost pulling for it. You know what I mean? I thought because yeah. at least yeah. that could right. be resolved. Because right. yeah. uh, the last time I had this viral thing, it went on for like two weeks. Yeah. But in, in, you know, at, at different degrees. It, do you have a cough with it? Uh, uh, not much. I had an upper respiratory yeah. thing. I think it went on two months yeah. where you just every now and then <clears> – <throat> Yeah, I've, know, got, I've got a little bit of that, and it's, yeah. it's almost like right. I've taken everything you can take, no matter what my – I've taken a Mucinex in case that comes along. I got Dayquil going over here. I've got a steroid mm. going over here. I've got a Flonase going over here. I'm I'm so full of various cold things, but <laughs> but but anyway. So um, uh, and I even threw an antibiotic in there just to see. Okay. But even though they don't have any impact on viral things, you for some reason you feel better when you take them. Yeah. 
Uh, but anyway, followed by a probiotic to try to offset that. So right. it's, a, it's a mess right now. Yeah. You're uh, in a war, buddy. But anyway, over the, you know, when you have a job, if I didn't have to talk all the time, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But when right. you have a job that you have to ca- talk, anything that affects that is a big, big hand. And then you have to think what you're saying most of the time here on this. Well, show. yeah. Not all the time, but part of the time. So recommended. So, so this weekend featured something, and it was going to be kind of a slow weekend, which I was thankful for, but it featured. And, it, and any, this is what, you know, we talk about the various things that husbands, you know, have hanging over them, family portraits, and, and we had a little bit of that with all that going on. But the other one is your wife is hosting fill-in-the-blank. Oh, Rick. Uh, there's nothing. No. I mean, it, it just takes your world and just turns it upside down. You know, especially when, like, you and your sons are just asked to, like, like y'all need to go somewhere. Where are we going? <laughs> Rick, but, but, but anyway. Don't complain about that. Yeah, you well. be in charge of parking. Well, it, it, so, so we <laughs> – we were, we were, my wife was hosting. Now, I want to be sure because I, I found out some weird cultural things about this. And we've often talked on the show the difference between a shower and a tea. I'm hosting a tea or I'm hosting a shower. Yeah, I never really could figure that out. One of the things that I figured out was a tea, and ladies are going to start laughing in the audience. A tea is we drop by and we go. We don't stay, mm-hmm. everybody, but a shower, everybody arrives at one time, stays for a length of time, and then leaves. Is that right? Uh-huh. All right, some of the women in the audience are nodding their head. Well, there was a tea, you can come in and out. There was like this, there was this weird thing that happened. So a friend of like ours, an open house? a friend of ours, <laughs> son is getting getting married. So Sherry is hosting a tea for the the bride. Okay, but our connection is to the groom, but she's hosting it for the bride because of our friendship with the groom. Do you, do you follow? Uh, I'm on mm-hmm. it. So you know this okay. is going this is going to bring hens from everywhere to your house. You know what I mean? So, so all of this. Now, keep in mind how the weather was for us this past weekend. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, whatever you've done that you think was way out ahead of it, it's all going to be destroyed by the weather that comes in the night before. It. Right. So you're you're really right, right going uphill. So the first thing I noticed, even though, let me be clear, I love love how beautiful it is and how the design was for our backyard. It is beautiful and I love it. It's well done. But over time, now we've lived there for. 15 years so all these little nice shrubs and trees are now giant trees okay right so there's trees they and grow up and and there's tree there's leaves with the weather can't decide what it wants to do and then when the when the trees think it's spring because they thought that a few times mm-hmm. you have these seed pods mm-hmm. and now they're flying everywhere you know pollens everywhere and and we love that we have our pool is kind of a natural look which is kind of cool it's got rocks and and it has trees and stuff, but all that stuff f- falls in the pool yeah. all the time until the trees decide what they want to do. So you're constantly climbing uphill of trying to keep everything there clean because trees, when the wind blows, everything on them falls off. And, and the trees right now, the, the trees at one time, I saw the trees shrug to me. We don't know what the weather's doing. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. don't know what to do. We don't know you whether know, to bloom yeah. or yeah. what. We, we keep going from winter to spring to winter to spring. We don't know what to do, Rick. I'm sorry. We got stuff going everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, so we have, uh, like I said, one of the best investments we ever made and one of the easiest checks that are, is written every month is that, you know, because of my wife's love of plants and flowers and trees, the last thing we need is for me to kill all that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Not so, wise. So, we, so we have a landscape service that – Rick and Bubba's show. 866 We Be Big is our number. All right, so you guys are going to have to help me with a couple things here. So, you know how you get people, you know, like to think about, hey, Rick's got a gray spot, spot in his mustache. It looks like his nose is running. Hey, hey somebody's got this. Hey, what about that? Hey, hey, hey. Well, the new thing is I'm getting bombarded, and it really bothers me because, you know, I'm proud to be from Calhoun County, Alabama. And I'm proud that there's some words that I can't say because it was never in my life. So HelloFresh, oh, Rick, does I'm anybody does too. anybody know how to say this? I thought that you, me, and Adler, or Speedy, researched this word when I, I when I did. cut the spot. F a l a f e l. So so what is that? Falafel. Right, and I thought that y'all told me how to say it in the commercial while we were cutting it, and we all looked it up and everything, and everybody says I'm not saying it right. So what is it? Falafel. Uh, falafel. Um, falafel. Are you sure, are you sure you're right saying it right? I've never even heard of it. 
Yeah, uh, awful. Greg, so anyway, He's this a copy. Uh, so I yeah, and, but look, I'm saying beforehand. Though, I so. think this is great, but y'all just have to know where I was raised. A falafel power bowl never came into play. <laughs> falafel, and so I've never said this word. What are we saying? I've never been around this word, um, and and I thought I said it right in the commercial, but many of you say I think that you said I have falafel. Uh, wh- whatever. I, I don't know how really? I said it. I don't I, remember I, I just it. Made that up. I don't remember it. But usually when Greg and I when we're cutting commercials, I run up on a word I can't say. We research and try to figure I it out. Oh yeah, and I, I think we trusted Adler. But anyway, I didn't. I, it doesn't really matter if y'all oh. if y'all know what I mean. The bottom line is HelloFresh.com slash Bubba is a is is a you know a great way to do your your grocery shopping every week and planning your meals because not only do they send you the recipes, they send you all the stuff you need to do a falafel power bowl if you want to, yes, yes. Uh, to do Southwest pork and bean burritos if you want to, and other. I mean, man, and and I know Helms, you Adler, we've all used them. The food is fantastic, mm-hmm. and 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 you've got it on the table. Seventy seasonal and convenience items uh, they have out uh, every week. Thirty five different uh, new recipes every week, and we're going to get you twenty two free meals. That it comes to your door twenty five percent less than uh, you ordering out. It also helps in your total food bill because you don't waste food. Here's the recipe card. Here's everything you need for it. Now prepare it. 22 free meals plus free shipping with our code Bubba uh, at, uh, at at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. Uh, and also you get that same deal if you go to that link at RickandBubba.com. Also, want to tell some of you from yesterday before we get into the world's oldest dog, because I know we're all waiting on that. Uh, but the uh, – but the um, <laughs> Can't wait to get it. Yeah, right. And and so – because I know I laid awake last night wondering, I wonder how old the world's oldest dog is. But um, so yesterday with a lot of you checking on us and – praying for us, and, and we had a great day yesterday. And then always, anytime we come to these anniversaries, uh, the book that Sherry wrote and uh, in, in came out in 2016 comes up because it's been a great resource for so many people. I brought some in today. We had the publisher give us some more. Uh, but anyway, uh, there, for those of you in Birmingham, because of this this can kind of be a uh, – you can, you can handle two things at one time. If you're in the Birmingham area where you hear us on ZZK, Alabaster, Alabama, which is just a little south of Birmingham – uh, there, you know, it's hard to find, you know, bookstores anymore. Uh, but there's a Christian bookstore that's been around for a long time. It's been in this location for 11 uh, years. Sanctuary Books and Gifts in Alabaster. Uh, they have. Uh, we dropped off some copies to them yesterday that Sherry went ahead and signed. So, it, you know, sometimes we say, "Hey, could you, I have guys in the Wednesday Bible study? If I brought you some of those books, could you take them home and get Sherry to sign them so I can give them to people that need them?" Well, if you, you can kind of go in and say, "I can get it, and it's already signed there." And it was kind of him to offer that, so um, make you aware of that. And I think Sherry's put something on her Facebook page about it too. So, Bubba, do tell us about the world's oldest dog, Rick. The what is the group that uh, that holds all the Guinness? World? Yeah, is that how you say? I've never been able to yeah. say that word. Guinness, 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 Guinness World Record. Mm-hmm. They uh, they have named a 23 year old Chihuahua mix as the world's <laughs> what? what now? Chihuahua mix oh, oh. as the world's oldest living dog. What mix? <laughs> Chihuahua. That's that same place where you can't say Toyota, isn't it? It's in that same wheelhouse, isn't it? It's always been Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Ch- 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 Chihuahua. Chihuahua. <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> Look at ever, it. Don't you ever change. Now, Rick, is uh, this what dog is said world? to be 23 years old. But in, is that in this, stuffed? In this it particular looks, picture, it looks like it's I stuffed. I think it's dead. I think it I must think have died. Too. Have you got an update on this story? <laughs> That looks like a mount. Is that if it could talk and be like, somebody help me? <laughs> I think that dog's dead. I think they're counting months. It, it, it's it's already died. Well, Rick, I, I'm confused because they say it's 23 years old, 43 days. You know, they give all these details, and and they actually found him in the parking lot of a grocery store 13 years ago and believed that he was about 10 years old when they found him. Well, is this you can't is this Nopi? estimate. Yes, yeah, could be Nopi. Is this Nopi? I thought you were going to say found, found him in a Taco Bell. Has Nopi Bell. been found? <laughs> Wait a minute, guys. So uh, it's a stray? We don't know how old this we dog is. Know. What is it, like a tree? Did we cut it in half and count the rings? <laughs> I guess they looked at its teeth. What are you talking Listen, about? Them chihuahuas are hanging in there. Chloe was like 14, Ooh, going yeah. on 15, yeah. and didn't have great health now, up to that point. The mm-hmm. dog's name is Spike, Rick. Mm-hmm. And what, what kind of dog is it? Chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> he does look startled. <laughs> Chihuahua mix. Ch- ch- uh, ch- Chihuahua. <laughs> uh, 
I think the dog's dead. That dog is not live right there. Mm. I think it Nopi, really doesn't look like it. Nopi's got a message for him, mm. I think. Mm. <laughs> I mean, is there congratulatory a congratulatory message now, the, uh, <laughs> for making the glad, record book? Hey, and yeah. also glad he, he got there. Glad he was found. Yeah. <laughs> you were. Did you really? say 23? 23. That's, long That's a long time. That's yeah. a, uh, Are we going to do all that sevens? No, no, because animals just don't live as long as we do. Uh, see, we 23 is a big number for an animal. Can How? we not just leave it there? How did they verify The this? owner mm-hmm. says that she attributes the long life of the dog of having a solid routine, a healthy diet, room, room to roam, daily exercise, and unlimited love and attention. Oh, you're just a little dog, you little dog, a little teeny weeny dog, my chihuahua. Hey, a little nervous now, hey, a little nervous now, hey, a little nervous now, my chihuahua. Oh, you got those buggy eyes, those buggy eyes, those big old, big old buggy eyes, my chihuahua. Hey, a little mad now, temper now, hey, mad, hey, a little mad now, my chihuahua. You're looking like a drowned rat, a drowned rat, you little bitty drowned rat, my chihuahua. Hey, a little ankle biter, hey, ankle biter now, hey, little ankle biter, my Oh, you're just an ugly dog, an ugly dog, a little bitty ugly dog, my chihuahua. Let me tell you something. If you never saw Bill Bubba Bussy's live performance, when it was ankle butter, good yeah. night. Oh, you oh, missed. Oh, hey, oh, little. Oh. Hey, and you know what he was doing? Slapping those chef pants you saw him in the other day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. those are as oh, old as the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, that's that was a, that's about. a new pair, as a matter of yeah. fact. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, where do you get oh, those? Come on. That ain't right. I thought those things were terrible. Amazon. Not Amazon. Right. You can get all you want. Um, mm-hmm. she's, now, get this routine. Spike starts his day between 7 and 7.30. Uh-huh. He likes to eat breakfast immediately, sometimes, but sometimes he likes to wait. He spends some of the time visiting the cows, horses, and barn cats in the family's barn before going back to the porch to catch a nap and prepare for his long day ahead. I just, I mean, I'm <laughs> proud of Spike and all that, but that, that 10 year here or there thing kind of messes it up. How, because they, you know, they mean, normally verify stuff. How did they do this? That's got to be a mystery. <clears throat> and back to the dog ears thing. I know you don't like that, Rick, and that's fine. Why my question is, we don't do that with any other animals. Why did we decide we were going to do it with dogs? I don't know. Nobody it, looks at a, at a deer and says, I tell you, in deer years. Is there, yeah, in shark about 20 years. years and, and nobody does and that. And I'll tell you why. They what, wanted, is, is it, human eye? They yeah. wanted to, yeah, the dog to it, it, appear yeah. to live 80 years, yeah. you know, that kind of it's, thing. Well, in this case, 161. It, it, he's looking. Yeah, he's, if, you, if you domesticated deer, you do the same thing to them. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's right. five years old. 50, you mean? <laughs> You know, it, it's just our human thing. Yeah, we're trying. It's okay just to say that your dogs—they're wonderful. They just don't live as long as humans. Yeah. That's when all they right. get in the teens, they're pretty up. Yeah, right. you, mm-hmm. you get 12, 15 years, you've done mm-hmm. something. Um, I mean, we're t- like you said, we're celebrating me taking down Big Six, and we're celebrating he made it five whole years. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but for deer, that's old. Yeah. What do you think the record is for the oldest cat? Mm. Oh, well, I bet it's like thirty. Twenty-seven. Mm. Oh, this note to this Does it have its name? I'm interested. No, in the name. I didn't have. I, I hate to be be laboring this point. This certificate is suspect. Yeah, I agree. How, really do, how do we prove how, this dog is twenty years old? Hey, they Guinness got it down. Guinness. They had to check. We don't even know the day he was born. They got found. it down. Look, Rick. They got it down to the days. Twenty three years and seven days. If the dog was found yeah. in well, the parking lot, sense. well, then there, that's not that's not accurate. Now breeders can tell you when the dog was born. Rick Guinness ain't gonna put a word. Something's wrong. It ain't like it's a new one, like somebody made up a new record book thing. Well, hmm. you think you would have to have he, he proof might have had a collar or something on. You know? mm-hmm. That, that life of... on the street will age you fast. Yeah, yeah, that well, dog looks like will. he's seen some stuff. You See, know? Cause I got life on the street right. for a living. Every, every dog I've got has been left at the house. And Mr. Buddy, I don't know how old he is. No, how would you know, Greg? <laughs> he, he was in a kind of a puppy, I think. He wasn't little. Mm-hmm. But I bet I've had him over 10 years. That's how old he is. Mm. I, I don't know. But I don't want to put him up for a record if he lives a long time because I can't verify. Look, it. I've got a dog that I was there the day we picked him up from the person we bought it from. I don't know what that dog is. <laughs> <laughs> That's not surprising. <laughs> it's really not. All, all I know is, up oh, still there. The I ones think, we got, we know when they were born. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Buddy's about 12. Yeah. 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 I don't know. He gets around, though. I can't remember what year it was when we picked him up. I have no idea. I can't remember. Uh, so I've been lost for five. <laughs> oh, there he is. Phone calls, phone calls, phone calls. All ten lines available. We'll check anything we may have missed, and we'll take your phone calls when the Rick and Bubba show continues. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
looked at all beautiful because, and then my wife does her little part in between. But me participating in this just leads to the death of these things. Mm-hmm. So I thought you're that, not a green thumb. That's a good investment. Well, so Sherry says tomorrow's the tea, and I'm already telling the boys, you know, we're about to go on some sort of probation. She said, I need you to go get all this stuff out of the pool, you know, all the v- seed pods and all that. Now, keep in mind the weather that's coming in Saturday. The tea is going to be after church on Sunday, okay? Hmm. I said, honey, anything that I scoop and sweep, it, it just. It's going to be back. The wind, yeah. It, you know, so. What, and, and so. The wind is a coming. Right. So, as I'm scooping, these seed pods are blowing back into the yeah. pool. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I'm like, this. And now it's almost see, like the trees are going. Sorry, man. Well, and then that violates one of my things is I'm I'm devoting time to something that's accomplishing nothing. Right. Now you're getting on one of my quirks, which is which that I, you have to keep repeating. Yeah, so. that I, that I was like, okay, this is. So then I had to tell myself it's really really bad. I'll get all the what is it called the skimmers emptied because they're full of all kinds of stuff right. now. Right. And that way, whatever I scoop beats it down, and as they fall in, the skimmers should now take it out. So at least I'm accomplishing. I had to tell myself that. I had to tell myself that I was accomplishing something. Now, when I come back, I will tell you what, what happened. Some of, the, some of the things I was asked to be part of to get this thing ready, it, there's a whole culture that is going on in the shower tea world, men, that we're not in on. That some of the, and there's traditions and there's assignments that, that boggle the mind. And, and so when we, when we come back, oh boy. I'll tell you some of the things that I was asked to do before I fled, you know, to disappear into the day. And, you know, you think they're going to start arriving a certain time. They start arriving earlier. Back to Bubba's thing about parking. Oh and see what happens. you got to watch. Me and the boys are now. We can't get trapped. We can get trapped. Oh, no. We can get, get trapped. Yeah, get trapped. And I'm not sure why we couldn't just go to parts of the house where the shower or tea is not happening. Are y'all going to roam the whole house? I mean, we'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I'm sorry about this story here. Yeah, I we talked I know. about it for years about the yeah. ecosystem and people couldn't wait to to send me the story today, Rick. Yep. It's about Burmese pythons that have taken over the historic Everglades. What if we cut them up, took the meat, and put it on a charcuterie board? Uh, Rick, they they say that they have just destroyed the ecosystem in the Everglades. Oh yeah, no doubt. By people bringing in these snakes, stupid exotic pet people, and then letting them go in the Everglades or around South Florida, and it's all got in there and made a big mess. And they they say now they are the top of the food chain. They eat. There are no small mammals left in the Everglades. They've wiped them out. Well, it goes back to this again. There just about there's a lot of people you can find common ground with. I've never been able to wrap my mind around exotic pet people. I just can't. Yeah. I mean, I can't find anything there that I can go, well, I can relate to that. You know, having a pet that can destroy you or anybody else if it gets loose, I just don't, I can't follow that line. I've got so many things in life that you have no choice on mm-hmm. that, that can become hardships and difficulties. Why Why take that and, and, and on purpose put that into your life? And like you say here, and then it doesn't just affect you. I guess we could all kind of live with that. It affects so many people. And in this case, in the Everglades, it has destroyed an ecosystem. Yeah, which is a very precious ecosystem we were trying to protect just because of pet owners. Now, Rick, uh, the, the problem with the pythons is they're hard to exterminate because you can't find them. Right. They're, they're very difficult to get a shot at. Uh, we train dogs to hunt them. We do this. We do that. They're just very difficult to find. Well, they're trying a new a new idea, and it looks like it's paying big dividends. They surgically implant a tracking device into a male okay. and then let him go and then see where he takes them. The particular snake in this case was named Argo. He is a roaming sentinel. What, what does that mean? That is a male python. A male python is called a what? A sentinel. I did not sentinel? know that. Yes. I, I did know S-E-N-T-I-N-E-L. I, 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 I did not know what that. The? I thought it was just a B-A-S. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay, Greg. Now, don't, Argo don't, don't only laugh. needed Argo only needed three days to lead researchers to the largest Argo. trove of pythons found yet in Collier County. Oh. It was a landmark discovery of the recently completed breeding season just before Valentine's Day. Appropriate. Argo had just found a 100-pound female python getting ready to lay eggs in a culvert. Ooh, the female was captured, and Argo was let loose again to be tracked another day 
Uh, three days later, and a half a mile away, a team uh, found the evasive snake again. This time, he was surrounded. We located him, and then there was another male, another male, another. Nine minutes to the top of the hour. Uh, phone calls. We'll try to get some of those in. But first, uh, we got to say hello to Golden Ticket Six. Yeah, hey guys. Let's go with it. Welcome to the Rick and Bubba Studio, Zach and Abigail Hubbard. Where are they? Right there. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Lewis and Courtney Hatcher. Hey, I'm here. Uh, how about uh, the Foshies? Here they are Courtney, Golson, Lauren, Josephine, uh, I'm sorry, Courtney, I'll put you in there with the Foshies again. Uh, Golson, Lauren, Josephine, and McRae. Uh, Foshi, all here. And they brought us uh, some really nice gifts today that we're taking home to the wives. So thank them for that, too. Uh, everybody gets a pound of BuzzBox coffee uh, just for being here today. And somebody is about to take home a $50 gift card from American Express. And Dr. Thomas E. Dudney, the dentist here for the Rick and Bubba Show, and our families, Bubba, a number between one and eight. One and eight. After this weekend in the NFL, there'll be four teams left for us. Courtney Hatcher. Oh. Courtney gets 50 bucks from Thomas E. Dudney and American Express, and she can use that American Express gift card anywhere she wants to, wherever they take American Express. Lunch is on Courtney. Yep. So there we go. And thank you for being with us today, all of you. Thank you so much for being here. All right, so, Bubba, here's a video we never got to, but uh, Speedy was telling about us early. And this is a, they're talking about uh, the Second Amendment and gun rights on the streets. So they talked to the daughter, who is more on the woke side. Uh, Daddy, not so much. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so here we go. Daddy, daughter, two different ends of the spectrum concerning the Second Amendment. Here we go. Do you support the Second Amendment? Not really. I don't know. I do. You need it for a tyrannical government. So do you think overall gun-free zones are safer? Um, I think so. No. I don't think guns really solve anything. Well, I don't think the signs solve anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you say? I don't think the what? The signs, signs like, about uh, gun-free gun zone. Free zone. Oh, okay. Like that's going to stop somebody. Uh, yeah. It actually means just come in here and take take yeah. advantage of us. You know what the dad's yeah. saying? So I spent all this money for you to come to this college and then turn you into an idiot. Yeah. I know. Uh, you know uh, so, uh, <laughs> the, and then do you want to try nine? You want to try uh, nine? Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, see so, let's see it. So, Bobby, you invented pizza in a cup. And we and, and it was well. A, it, there was a, there was a lot of people yeah. playing with the idea at the time. I understood, you know? but the, but it's this, like Tesla and Edison. But this is more like you. Yeah. How about pizza in a cone? Ooh, pizza in a cone. So uh, so so this They're is gonna, so the whole process of making pizza in a cone in a cone. So so the, the oh I see that's how they make cones. I didn't know that. All right, so so this is going to make a cone so it's out a of bread. pizza dough. It's a bread cone. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, now oh. they put pizza in it. Oh, and they put all the oh. toppings. Oh, 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 yeah. And then they run it through an oven, and look at that. That looks good. Now, I got to tell you something. Now, now, that it looks good. Oh, See, right. the, the key there, you could eat that while you're driving. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. A, that's, that's the end goal to are you willing, in a cup or cone. Are you willing to say... They need like, a taco in a cone. Are you willing to say, like the Apostle Paul said, "Look, I planted Apollo's water." <laughs> I mean, do, do you do you think well, that that real, you did pizza real. in a cup and now somebody's taking that? You got to admit that's a whole new level right there. That is, pizza yes. in a cone. They've they've taken that, it to a new level. Yeah. I, I'm glad to see them taking it and run with it. That uh, is fantastic. It, it is, really is. It, it is. And looks yummy. It really does. They're doing it right too. They're like kind of. Stuffing it with pizza stuff, and then they kind of bake it a little bit, and then add more, and then bake it again. Yeah. Come on, Bubba! Yeah. If you hadn't eaten that birthday cake, you might could have a piece on the cone. <laughs> Look at that! Ooh, that's good. Uh, oh yeah. To Billy, I like, it. I like it. Billy's in Hot Springs. Hey, Billy, go ahead. Hey, Rick and Bubba, what's up, dude? Hey, man. Hey, hey, we uh, we talking about falafel, and if you are in the English speaking world, uh, especially where I come from in Munford, Alabama, it is falafel. If you uh, have the uh, Hebrew accent and can speak Hebrew, they, they call it over there falafel. Uh, I never was falafel. able to pronounce it when I was over there in, in November, but there you go. 
What am I saying on the commercial? I don't even remember. Do you remember what? How am I saying? You're, I you're, saying, you're saying falafel. You're saying like somebody from Alabama. It's all right. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're saying it re- pretty close. I mean, yeah. I, mean yeah, well, I went back and searched my history, and we actually played the video. Uh, that's what I was pulling up, and that's what they say in the in the in the the spot I was listening to as far as video. Are you saying falafel. that some of these people that keep hounding me about this may not even be right? I think it's about the stressing of what part oh. of the word. I think you're saying falafel. And most people say it falafel. So you're saying it right. Maybe you're just oh, falafel. Okay. falafel versus falafel. Do these falafel. people have maybe possibly too much time on their hands? I may. Yeah, should, I should, they, so. should, they, so. should they get a hobby, find something to do? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Woodworking. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so <Cooking>. let's, uh, <laughs> uh, Wood let, burning. Let's go to Ray. Ray's out of Kimberly. Ray, go ahead. Hey, monkey grass and green acres. Thank you very much. <laughs> go ahead. Hey, I want to talk about Martin Luther King's new statue in Boston. Okay. Hey, I didn't realize he was Jewish. All right. Uh, let's okay. go to Will. Okay. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> that uh, that Anobi, statue has Anobi generated Anobi. a lot of comedy. It has. Yeah. It has. Hey, you were quick on the button, Rick. Yeah. Was How about this? Eve? Well, I saw that one coming like a, a train bizarre, down the track. A the, uh, but but got, but even when the King family is saying, oh, we appreciate yeah, the attempt here. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Will and Lincoln. How about you paid ten million? That's what you got. Ten million. Wow. Mm. Uh, Will, go ahead. Hey, hey man. Hey guys, I just had a comment about the uh, guy that wanted us to stop eating meat. Just want to let him know that I had steak and chicken on my outdoor grill last night, and corn and baked potatoes on my gas grill inside. Wow, and I you really for me and him last night. What a rogue! I mean, you're out there on the I cutting know. edge. Uh, yeah, it's it's some of the stuff we're doing now, just bizarre. Uh, let's go to Bo, Louisville, Kentucky. Bo, Bo, go ahead. Welcome to Rick and Bubba. Hey, good morning, good morning. Hey, I just want to congratulate the uh, deer slayer there uh, for having a a good uh, hunt, getting the big six. Huh? Oh, thank you, thank you very much. That that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just wonder anybody else been doing any good? Anybody doing any good in here? Uh, no, I, I haven't really, <laughs> I haven't about really you, pushed it that hard. You doing any count? You know, I let some go this year. I hunt Fort Knox a lot. I know you guys have been heard about Fort Knox before from a Oh, Miller, yeah, yeah. They have some trophies there, and I, I let a couple go. Uh, mm. Let them grow up. Uh, maybe get them next year, but uh, yeah, where I hunt, no you, luck this year. Yeah, my, if I, where I hunt, if you let one walk, the guy next to you shoots it. You know, in the in the property. <laughs> oh, next yeah, to, yeah, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I, I hope they uh, can stay in another season. But uh, yeah, I have to say, I think the neighbors are doing much better because we're seeing much better bucks, and I think people are starting to let them walk. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, there's definitely an improvement to where it was. You know, when I first got there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, so we well, know, some of the rules we're have changed some, too. You're only yeah. allowed two a year, right? Yeah, we, Greg. I mean, we're we're letting some walk down there that yeah. you know three years ago we wouldn't let walk. No. So, so it's uh, it, we're seeing them, but we're I guess we're getting more picky. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, but uh, but Big Six was one that was on the board this year. He had to go. And, out of there. Out of there. Hey, thanks for being with us. Uh, if you're wrapping up time with us now, have a great weekend. Don't forget another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast out this weekend so catch that uh and also maybe catch up on rick and bubba content you missed by going to our rick and bubba youtube channel or podcast channel thanks for being with us rick and bubba rick and bubba Waking on that blubber